trying to remember the last conversation we talked about. I think it was about uh, like talking to Rob Nor about gun control stuff like that. I'm from Nebraska, um, so it's a heavily gun state along those lines, right? Um, so basically, the conversation I wanted to have is just to try and understand what a politician's responsibility is in between like getting elected and then. Um, <laughs> dealing and working with activists Re- realistically or idealistically <laughs> uh i i want to be as honest as i can and i say would i would want to say realistically none none, none. Okay. <laughs> i guess like that seems a little bit frustrating yes um, doesn't it <laughs> yeah so obviously i don't know if you've heard uh we have a great senator um filibustering oh yeah yeah yeah. she's based as fuck man i love yeah no she's really great i think i've been fortunate enough to meet her a couple times i think she's a great politician for the area that she's in but the rest of nebraska is undoubtedly red now i could go into speaking about how much um i'm disappointed in the state party as a whole and their lack of reaching the Democratic State Party as a whole and their lack of reaching out in rural areas and things like that. We had a Democratic senator, um, what most people would call a blue dog Democrat in 2012, 2014-ish, Ben Nelson. The biggest thing was, while we can probably agree that the uh, Affordable Care Act wasn't enough, he was a very decisive vote in gaining that bill being passed. Um I guess I'm just really frustrated with the party as a whole on how, where we can kind of go from here. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I look, I, at this point, it depends what day you catch me on. Right. Mm-hmm. But the fact, yeah, yeah. the fact of the matter is, is that like, I'm more likely more than, uh, more than likely than not, um, these days, just mm-hmm. to start quoting, uh, MLK's letter from a Birmingham, Birmingham jail. I'm, uh, I hope you're not talking about the riot. The language is uh, uh, the riot is the language of the unheard. Sorry. Uh, no, but yes, but no. Um, that the, the entire letter I have read, so I do understand uh, a bit, although it fails to come to memory right now. Um, uh, it's here. You go. It's the white moderate. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that would be a great reference. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like, you know, first I, uh, first I must confess that over the past, past few years that I've been gravely disappointed with the white moderate, mm-hmm. I have reached almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's greatest stumble blo- stumbling block in his stride towards freedom is not the white yes. citizens council or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate mm-hmm. who's more devoted to order than justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension to positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action. Mm-hmm. Right, like I, these days, yeah. I'm I'm more likely than not to just start quoting MLK on it. Yeah, sure. Like, I, I appreciate you using that one versus kind of like going to the BLM riots and anything like, like that. Like what? What you know? Like it, we were talking about um, just the other day. We were um, apropos of the uh, the Jane Fonda clip on the View. Um, mm. Are you familiar? But if you give me a summary, I'll do my best. It was real simple. They were talking about uh, uh, abortion and freedom of choice. And Mm -hmm. Jane Fonda just said, we're not going back. And Mm -hmm. Joy Bearheart said, well, besides, you know, protesting and, you know, petitioning, what can you do? And she Mm -hmm. says something and Lily Tomlin, who's like her working on a project with her, starts talking and she goes, Mm -hmm. oh, what did you say? And Jane just looks just dead face. She goes, murder. And Joy Bearheart immediately, like, she's joking, she's joking. And Jane just, like, side eyes yeah. her, dead face side eyes <laughs> her. Like, she ain't fucking joking. Yeah. And, right? and she's like, I was there. I remember, right? It was like, right? Back alley abortions, coat hangers, that yeah. sort of thing. She ain't fucking around. Yep. And so we did it. I read an entire section on the suffrage movement. Because sure. it's it, the suffrage movement has been so whitewashed, it's been so absolutely sanitized that uh, who's the um, the hatchet Mary Hatchet? No, there's dude, there's so many, there's so yeah. many, there's and like a multi-year campaign yeah. of 
fire bombings and arsons and the fact that mm-hmm. the the suffragettes felt that since voting well any uh any male who owns you know property who any mm-hmm. house owner has a vote um so mm-hmm. all were fair game like re- pr- re- private residential mm-hmm. housing uh public stands railway stations sports arenas r- theaters any of those were fair game and 52 in one month sort of thing for years on end and uh-huh. like this is the inspiration for the ira like the the actual yeah. ira's inspiration comes from the women's suffrage movement i i have a question on the regards of didn't it gain more popularity when there was uh riot crackdowns and they were seeing women being hosed down in the streets being abused oh yeah protesting? it's fucking dude okay. the, and now like there's revisionist historians who argue like sure. well it probably did more harm than good you can argue one way or the other yeah. but the, fa- the fact of the matter is is this is what like the civil rights movement looked like this is what the suffrage mm-hmm. movement looked like this is what the labor movement looked like from 1880s sure. to 1920s like, do you know how yeah. many fucking factories got burned to the ground do you know how many fuck it like it's mm-hmm. it's writ the history of like social movements is writ in like hardcore direct action and like we've we've sanitized for the purposes of a liberal agenda in america mm-hmm. and we argue that like the only way to make progress is to like vote harder sort of situation and sure. what happens when you vote harder is you just end up with some lib shit yeah. agenda that's servicing mm-hmm. the corporate uh, corporatocracy rather than the theocracy right mm-hmm. which has corporate overtones anyway these days you see joel osteen <laughs> and shit like that right okay yeah yeah right I can see that um so i guess the question would be uh the way that i look at it and it's going to differ from you in a manner of like i see plenty of connectors in between uh democratic socialists and a fair version maybe mostly um maga republicans is probably where i would say as far as like anti-corporation mm-hmm. um and except that, that would probably be the prime example. They're not anti-corporation. If you really get sure. into it, they're and okay. what you do is you ask them stuff like loaded questions, right? The sort of the globalist questions, right? Mm-hmm. They're they're against big tech. They're against the media. They're against right. like. But when you get into what inevitably becomes that sort of feudalistic modality of sure. like an, like ancap slash libertarian territory, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're but they're fine with it yeah but my question would be as we would see like um political movements sometimes make strange fellows yes so you had a lot of support of women's suffrage and uh the fuck 21st amendment which repealed alcohol was it the 21st uh, yeah, Sorry, that's uh, tw- 21st is um uh the rep- uh, repealing of prohibition Okay, so it'd be the 19th or the 20th? Uh, I do believe it's the 19th Amendment. Okay, yeah. So you see a lot of strange bedfellows in between women's suffrage gaining that popularity in between how they also partnered with uh, the anti-saloon league. No, sorry, 19th is nineteenth is suffrage. Sorry, that's ni- okay. 19th is women's right to vote. Yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah. And then the 20th was alcohol, 21st is repealing yeah. of alcohol, correct? Okay. Yeah. So we see those strange kind of bedfellows. And I guess the question I'm asking is, wouldn't you, um, if it's just for voting, right? If I can purely say just for like the liberal sake of I'm a liberal and I want to win political elections, would I not extend those, um, but I not extend those hands out handouts and be like, Hey, I think there's some legitimacy. There's blah, 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 it, that's, blah. that's, that's all, um like political uh, political calculus there's no yep. way for me to like say y- y- don't say you won't but sure. also don't say you will mm-hmm. right right uh, like i like i will as an anarchist right we hit more co- more communists uh, communists have killed more of my anarchist brothers and sisters and nb friends uh, historically mm-hmm. and contemporarily than capitalists ever have Right. Sure. And so, like, I'm well aware of that. But if you want to stand next to me as a fucking commie and serve soup in a food not bombs line, that's fine. Mm-hmm. The instant right. they, they try to do any organizing or structural stuff, I'm yeah. done. 
right? Like they can't be trusted with that. They've proven that so, time and again. So, so it's that yeah. sort of like political calculus that you have to do is like, okay, yeah, like if we're doing this for the purposes of X, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But this person is really problematic in these areas. And so if, right. if it strays even close to that area, then cut it. Yeah. So I looking at the number of the 2020 election, right? Uh, just for Nebraska, I think it was 303,000 or 303,000 Democrats, something like almost 6,000, 600,000 Republicans, and then like 271,000 registered non independents, right? So if you're trying to run, say, for a Senate campaign, mm -hmm. you have to. You have to capture some Republicans or a mixture of like all the independent, registered yeah. independent, stuff like the that. The easiest way for a Democrat to get those votes, I'm not even mm -hmm. kidding. Easiest way for a Democrat to get those votes, shut the fuck up about the gun issue. Oh, yeah. Well, that's fucking. Job done. Yeah. Job done. Yeah. You, can, you can do all the other stuff. And, and yeah. there's ways to swing the arguments. Mm -hmm. If you really want to swing the argument. Argue corporations, argue, uh, like, you know, involvement, um, like the decision should be between you and your doctor. That's a private arrangement. That's private right. business. Like uh, why is some multinational organization like uh, United Healthcare involved? You don't want the government involved in your healthcare. Why do you right. want this private entity involved as well? There's a way to swing those arguments. And yeah, so the I would actually way to look at those. it from a different way. Cause we also have a problem with rural hospitals and their funding. Okay. Um, I would look at it from this way, and typically the conversation that I have is more along the lines of, should the state be able to tell you what your family's going to look like? And then you kind of go down the lines of, well, I mean, can the state assign you the burden of taking care of uh, children with disability and you don't want to? Can the state say how many children you will have? so on and so forth. And those seem to be the effective conversations that I have, because again, mm -hmm. it's usually about state control, um, controlling about, uh, I would, what you, can I would then attempt to conflate the state with corporatocracy to oh, take okay. it, to take it one step further. And sure. you like have is, is money and corporations a problem in Washington? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah, they're, easy, yep, they're easy, done, easy. Yes. Right. That's an easy right. dub every time. Right. And you're like, OK, so right. If government right. equals corporations and government in family bad. Right. Mm -hmm. You can get some of that work done as well, probably. Yeah, I, I think I could agree with that. That would probably be a good tie in that I have to try and figure out. Yeah. Like um, that's that's usually, uh, you know. The problem is, is that you're like towing the line of the Jews, basically, because a yeah. lot, like a lot of <laughs> a lot of those fuckers believe yeah. that like you know globalist equals Jew and corporation mm -hmm. equals globalist sort of situation. Mm -hmm. So you're just like you're 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 playing the game at that point. So yeah, you know, f playing um, with fire. Yeah, the the question, the real strange part is, is like. The city parts of Nebraska, now granted this is only a state of 1.9 million people, so take of that what you will, but the city parts are very, very liberal. Yeah. Kind of As what you would tradition. expect. Yeah, yeah right. Um, so you've got to figure out, <clears throat> and especially primaries when you're dealing with the primary effective, obviously, you pivot to your most extreme because there's where most of your voter base is, and then you have to somehow pivot to a general part. Um it seems like the Democratic State Party hasn't figured this part out and is starting to lose even more. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. <sighs> um, so I was the senior policy advisor for the last um, Senate candidate, Democratic Senate candidate, Chris Janicek, uh, up until he sexually harassed a fellow staffer and then I quit for him. So now I'm trying to figure out like, where do we go from here? Because we've got a chance in Nebraska for two state, um, uh, two federal Senate positions. Um, but what I feel like they're going to be looking at is the former governor was appointed by the now new governor who was then 
the the former governor had contributed heavily to his campaign, supported him, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Again, this is more intertwining. But I look at the Democrats now, and their messaging is purely on, oh, this is corruption, which I can agree with. But you can't yeah. run a campaign no. on – can't run a campaign on my opponent's corrupt my opponent you know it's more about what are you what are you gonna do for me what are you gonna do to help with my problems and it's immensely frustrating i did Um, you maybe one group to pay attention to is uh michigan you've been watching the michigan democrats mm -mm. dude they've been putting in work oh yeah like legitimately one fucking day dude they basically dissolved right to work they passed lgbt protections they did dude they absolutely they used all of the republican um stuff though like they destroyed the filibuster and so like mm-hmm. all of the amendments that the the de- the republicans tried to attach to the democratic legislation sure. as fast as they could possibly read the amendment it, Voted down, especially if they yeah. voted down. Like they they destroyed the amendments in like less than five minutes of voting. Right. They fucking like yeah. They absolutely have been putting in the work. Like yeah, cupcake. Michigan steamrolled the Republicans. Um, yeah, but this is my this is my problem. We're not in that position, right? Like well, we had talked about you, Senator Kavanaugh. Oh, go ahead. Well, you need to like that's the thing is like start positioning. Start thinking like you're gonna get in that position. Right. Sure. Like and start like pivoting to those uh, those points, because that's what the Michi- Michigan Democrats did is they were like, OK, mm-hmm. one, if we get in, we're going to use all of those Republican nonsense things that they put into place against them Two, sure. d- don't take the, like two, don't take the fucking high road. Right. Like I'm yeah, no, there's I'm a lot of Democrats yeah. that are like, quite frankly, sick. They're sick of this shit. Mm-hmm. And we're sick of hearing fucking that sort of like Obama, like, you know, like, oh, when they go low, we go high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where'd that get us? That got us to like borderline Nazi genocide at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's speaking in reference to uh, the trans genocide. I mean, take your fucking pick at this point. Look at Tennessee and that, uh, that fucking uh, bill they passed allowing for marriage, uh, um, the marriage licensees, the marriage registrars to uh, uh, deny marriages on basis of conscious conscience. And so like they opened the door to inter uh, denying interfaith inter uh, uh, like um, interrace marriage. marriages like sure. we're so we're rolling it back so far so fast in like 20 states in this nation right mm-hmm. that it's you think they you think it's just trans dude that's the first one like anybody who knows your historical like uh, anybody who knows the history of the like of the nazis and authoritarianism do trans is sure. actually your first flag the the like the first they came for the social uh socialist sort of situation right they yeah, thought they right. were they thought well, they were free dude trans is actually the first one the first institute of sexual sciences in berlin was like one of their first stops they fucking destroyed all of the literature and studies on uh trans people first and then they moved on to uh and uh then they moved on to i believe neurodivergence the, uh, and disabilities then they moved on to homosexuality then they moved on so like this is a huge indicator for a lot of people who know their history and there's a base there in the democrats i think to be taken like to to be revitalized right Mm -hmm. to to be brought to the forefront of yeah i'm sick of this shit and another goddamn corporate democrat like biden or obama or any of them just any of them at this point this centrist nonsense bullshit of compromising with right-wing authoritarians like i want to do a genocide i don't want to do a genocide well guys we have to compromise a little genocide fuck you Right. right. Like, I think there might be like, like you said, out those out those extremes to recruit mm-hmm. from. Like, there's a lot of people who are really kind of freaked out right now about the like theocratic authoritarian corporate m- amalgamation that was made in that deal with the devil with Reagan and the Southern Baptists and shit like that back in the 80s yeah. that has come to the forefront. That has come to fruition. Well, I think the interesting part about this, as far as like, obviously, I can't say this is completely whole because we're dealing with new anti-trans legislation in the state. But I don't know if you remember the movie Boys Don't Cry with yeah. Hillary Swank. Yep. Okay. The man that was murdered was from Nebraska. Uh, Brandon Tina. Uh, Tia? I can't remember how to pronounce his last name. That's okay. Um, it was a really horrible situation. Ended up uh, murdered, raped. Uh, Tina. Because... 
they've yeah how they um ended up finding out that this was actually a woman they got convicted the uh sheriff i believe ended up saying some pretty uh shitty things about transgenders at the time and he was removed from office like quick fast and in a fucking hurry and this is i think late 80s um and i think this is this is very okay early 90s yeah um this is very very still i think pretty prevalent on people's minds because we've got a very large transgender community again within the city limits of lincoln and nebraska but yeah. still very large thriving drag scene i don't see a lot of problems with that i think nebraskans on a whole are a very uh live and let live kind of people but again i can't speak for everybody and i obviously can't speak wholly on the rural side there's always going to be some people but i think there's a collective memory of that time i think something that's something that you can end up using politically about we've known about the transgender issue since the 1990s we don't need this shit We've got a great transgender hospital in the um, UNMC here in Omaha. They do great gender affirming care. They've been doing it for a very long time. So I feel like just in this state, it, there's a conversation that is to be had about allowing, again, a live, let live kind of meta um, mentality that is very relevant to what I think Republicans want, but I don't see a party. Um, addressing those concerns again this is on a federal level um so you have to do it statewide and i don't see democrats doing that i don't see them stepping up to the plate in a lot of things like biden's mm -hmm. fucking like all oh, these tra anti-trans laws are bordering on sin F sure thanks Mm -hmm. Right, like that means nothing. Sin means functionally, sin means the same thing as natural on a product package. Right, it's it's literally a non-regulated term that means jack shit for all. It's marketing. It's right. marketing. How about you yeah. step up? You're the head of the executive branch of the United States uh, of America for fuck's sake, right? Like you're a co-equal portion of our governance that has control over shit. Right. Mm -hmm. You you matter, motherfucker. Do something. But the fact of the matter is he's a billion years old. He's a, a white dude and he's Catholic. So hasn't he been pretty at the forefront, at least from the political perspective of gay marriage? Wasn't that something that he was kind of he, he's again, he's OK with it. Right. You know, like but in the times of um in the times of this sort of like movement shall we say right from the sure. from the right you don't mm -hmm. need centrism you don't need moderation you need radicalism you need somebody who's going to counter it right you don't need neville chamberlain who's like maybe we can compromise and talk them out of it you need I somebody who's willing to handle this shit sure so yeah, like it was dragged into it while he didn't want it, says Walata. Um, yeah, you don't get credit for not being a bigot, says Spaghetti. Like, <laughs> like, well, there's a difference in between, like, I, the point I was trying to make, there was a difference in between, like, Obama saying, I don't support uh, gay man, support civil, a very civil union person. And at the time, my understanding was Biden was saying that he does support gay marriage. That would be I mean, the difference. And again, yay. Go ahead. I mean, okay. You know, yeah. yay. But, but like, but we're, I guess, mm, you like, sorry. I, I'm, yeah. I, it's not enough anymore. It's not like it, it's, it's not enough. Nobody's seeing enough from the Democrats. You know, who's fucking like actually putting in work is Newsom over in California, right? He's a mm. shit lib motherfucker. And mm -hmm. like, even he's putting in work. He's like, look, we're a sanctuary state. We're gonna, not going to work with these states at the, at the state mm -hmm. level. Walgreens isn't going to fucking dispense, uh, dispense plan B. Then fuck Walgreens. We're immediately canceling a $54 million contract. And we're going to revisit the Medi-Cal, um, which is one of the largest healthcare provider, like insurance providers in mm -hmm. the country. Yeah. We're going to revisit their, uh, their, uh, like them on Medi-Cal. Like we're going to create, like they're, they're doing California's doing the California thing as usual and dragging the rest of the nation towards like mm -hmm. some some level of sanity. And like that's what we need is immediate decisive action. 
from our representatives who are supposedly, and you know, I mean, we've spoken before. Red here knows, like he knows, mm -hmm. I'm a fucking anarchist, right? None of it's yeah, ever yeah. going to be enough <laughs> for me. But, sure, right. but as somebody who's actually on the left, as opposed to Democrats, right, who are mm -hmm. who are far more centrist than leftists, right? Well, especially liberals, I would say. Yeah, yeah would the fucking liberals are right leaning. Fucking, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, it, 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 that's what mm -hmm. you need. We have actual neo Nazis in our streets. Mm -hmm. Like that's a fuck of fuck of fuck. Like, you do, well, I mean, that's kind of always been around. Whether it was neo Nazis, we used to. The 40s, they used to. It the used Klan. to be okay to fucking handle them though for a while, right? Like it's, we, it's the ebb and the flow. The ebb and the flow, right? A total, okay, yeah, to, totally, totally accept. Sure. We it, it ebbed there, like you know, for a minute, like nineties, early two thousands. Like we had an ebb, and now yeah. they're back with a vengeance, and not just back with a vengeance, dude. They're projecting fucking swastikas on the sides of buildings. They're fucking doing, like they're actually doing shit. And I mean, for, I'm a fucking anarchist. I'm going to quote the <laughs> FBI uniform crime statistics on this. Like number one. One cause number one domestic violence and terrorism yeah. for how many decades now is yeah. right wing fucking terrorism. These mm -hmm. people are out of fucking control, and now they've at, they've captured the court system, right? Like they've absolutely that was a multi decade project that they engaged in, and the Democrats just sat by and basically did nothing. Well, yeah, that that was from the. That was from the forties, or sorry, not the forties, but the the Reagan handshake that you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, right I mean, it's it's been Roe you know, yeah, it's yeah. been decades coming. It took it was a right. very long term project, but it's successful, dude. They're they're rolling yeah. back crazy shit, and like I my my stepfather, who's a oh god, he's a horrible person, right? Baby boomer <laughs> territory, fucking mm -hmm. gun rights over everything. It doesn't matter if you're literally talking about lynching black people. As long as you're pro-gun, he's on your team, right? Yeah, right. Um, fuck, One issue voter, we call those. Yeah, they're horrible people. Um, yeah, they can't. And like we ended up, we have ended up to a, at a position where these courts are like he straight up said like, oh, they'll never uh, Roe v. You're you're worried over nothing, Roe v. Wade. They'll never undo that. Fucking just like that, right? Hi. And immediately, what do we what did see? What to say? What, what what did he have to say? I'm just kind of oh, just... after it got pulled. Oh, yeah, yeah. he fucking, oh, nothing will come of it. You're yeah. fucking, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then every iteration thereafter is basically, so mm -hmm. I, it, if you really pin him, if you really corner him, I don't have time to think about this. I have other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll yeah. completely yeah. shut down and like not want to think. Um, <sighs> but like that's that's where we are is there are like women dying and suffering already from preventable conditions that fucking baby with potter's syndrome i think florida um that is going to be born with non-functioning kidneys and uh like can't breathe right the out parents of the are going to have to watch him die yeah going to watch that baby die in the fucking hopefully the doctors shuffle that fucking thing off so they don't have to suffer through that but like mm -hmm. dude you're being forced to give birth to a child that is guaranteed to die and not just die suffocate mm -hmm. it's going to suffocate Right. Like this is where we are. And for a lot of people who would vote Democrat, like I'm what's my option? Vote for Trump or DeSantis. Right. Is yeah. it like I'm not one of the anarchists who because there is the Emma Goldman strain of anarchists. Any participation within the state is unethical, blah, 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 okay, yeah. blah, blah, you know. But what was your name again? Emma I'm Goldman. Sorry. Um, okay, yeah. there's no one there's, but there's no ethical uh, consumption under capitalism, right? There's no way for me to exist in an ethical position within this, this world now. Within your correct right like there's just good, good yeah. neoliberal capitalism took over the fucking globe man <laughs> like it, there's there's <laughs> there's no position like there's no ethical position to occupy so like at that point it's all varying degrees of compromises get the fuck over it is my message to most anarchists like the, yeah. the least okay. you can do is take w a couple of minutes out of your fucking day and vote especially mm -hmm. down ticket federal we can talk about how it's fucking captured and useless but you're like local fucking voting matter man yeah especially for policing yes yes um so, this is the great thing about nebraska we're one of the few states us in uh, maine i think it is we actually split our tickets 
we um or we split our, split our electoral college votes. So it fucking matters. You fucking yeah. need to start moving to Nebraska. Like I, oh. I'm going to Vermont. I'm going back to my home state, oh. which is yeah, I know. We yeah. talked about that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm going yeah. back to the base ass state. Like fuck fuck the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck this country. I'm going back to Vermont, man. <laughs> That's the frustrating for me and like being a Democrat, quote unquote, in Nebraska, right? Like I, I understand the value of the filibuster because it's, it's being yeah. exemplified, right? So I feel like as a politician, if you're going to be quote unquote, a Democrat from Nebraska, you have to understand the value of the filibuster. I don't think you can vote to repeal it. Um, uh, um, other things. Yeah, it, it just it fucking um is it the Quaker state? No, but we do have we had Shakers, which are the most based Christians ever, non binary. Mm-hmm. We do have Quakers in Vermont. Um but mm-hmm. the Shakers were the Shakers don't exist anymore because they be, they were anti natalists. They believed mm-hmm. any cat like any child captures the light and blah 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 sort of thing. And so they just didn't breed and they're all fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god most base christians ever they're just like we're out of here man ones that'll get rid of themselves yeah to get to the kingdom quicker yes i fucking i <laughs> did and they made great furniture um they were really good cra- uh, craftsmen, but uh, either way, like yeah, like we need we need people who are willing to literally like dude kavanaugh i think that's her name right kavanaugh um, uh, yeah, yeah. She, like, who? She's like, I got nothing but time here. Like, if right. fuck this place. Like, fuck your pressure. Fuck your opinions. Fuck your positions. My, yeah. you know, I, my my voters support me, and I, in what I'm doing, and yep. I'm gonna sit here and make sure you do nothing. Right. Uh, if if it's between nothing gets done and something harmful gets done, in the words sure. of George Carlin, sh- uh, show me a lazy co- uh, show me a lazy cocksucker who's just sitting on the couch all day playing with himself watching TV, and I'll show you somebody not causing any problems. Yeah, right. There you go. My, uh, well, I'll take it. I, the, the frustrating part is, and again, I'm just kind of explaining. I might be preaching to you when you already understand, but like trying to run as a Democrat statewide with something like that happening. Um, there's an air of betrayal. There's an air of like, I gotta say, you know, I may not agree with her, but I do agree. You've got to find how you state and work with your principles on the idea of like, but I do agree with the, the filibuster because she is in a minority state or she has a minority position that she truly believes in. And you play onto this modicum of respect of power of the system, throwing some founding father gobbledygook in there. <laughs> yep. And you really, really do appeal to them very, very strongly in understanding like what the power of the state is capable of doing or may happen. I, um, I, 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 it, yeah, we, it, we just, that's what, that's what I'll t- that's what most of the people, like the actual progressives do. The Democrats have left the progressives out to dry, just out to fucking dry. Well, I just for ages. don't know if they're popular. That's the frustrating part. I don't know if they're legitimately popular. Um, their policies and their ideas, if you look at national polling, it, it's it's immensely popular. But we don't vote nationally. Mm. We vote statewide. And when I can only speak to here in Nebraska. And getting polling in Nebraska is obviously fucking difficult. Um, but it's just not – and I think it's a marketing thing. I mm. think it's the fact that there's – and I hate to say it like this because I am one of the persons that fits this category, but I think it's a, they want a strong white male to come out there and preach to them about, so you know, them. things used to be better, blah, 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 blah. Cause they don't respect so, so anybody else give them, like that. Give them it and give them a version of it. That's like the FDR version. Yes. Yes. Yeah. FDR, Theodore Roosevelt, mm-hmm. those progressives obviously we're going to try and throw out some of the anti-semitism and all that and stuff. maybe the compromise problem. with the racist dixiecrats yeah yeah right yeah. but again the question becomes like you got to figure out how to get actual legislation passed and first off get elected and i think that was a big problem that i have that's why i wanted to talk to somebody who's got two cents and can actually rub them to fuck together to make something as far as like an activist view on a politician we um i can i can tell you um Vermont, um, this is this is okay. So Vermont's one of the most progressive states in the country, right? But mm-hmm. it has one hang up. It's racist. 
because it's an ethnic, mm-hmm. it's an ethno enclave, right? There's, yes. there's just no people of color there. Right. Mm-hmm. And so nobody has experience outside of like Burlington and Montpelier. Right. Um, yep. And so, but like, here's an example of how insanely progressive Vermont is. Right. So they elected a black uh, attorney general. Right. Mm. And a w- woman. And she's getting death threats, death threats, death threats, right? She's getting all sorts of racist comments and all these sorts of things, and she resigns. You know who Vermont mm-hmm. replaces her with? A black man. Trans woman. Oh, kid, fucked. Yeah. White. Just the power of the- White trans woman, right? Yeah, power of the penis. It, it, it was, it's, it's as simple as, it's like, oh, yeah, they have trans people, and they're fine with, like, you know, mm-hmm. like, in gay marriage, they're fine with that. It's just they have no exposure. So if you can get a bunch yeah. of, like, people of color to finally move to Vermont in, like, mm-hmm. one generation, problem solved. Yeah. Right? Well, this is what's annoying for me, too, and why I feel like such a politician all the times is I agree with the ideas, especially when you look at North Omaha and the history that's, you know, that would be our predominantly black area in within Nebraska. Not quite by statistics, but everybody thinks of North Omaha. Um, very poor area, has a lot of problems. And I feel like diversity is pushed too much for a state that is either 97% white or 93% white. And it's very frustrating. Again, this is the yeah. idea of like trying to get elected, not just. That's that's, why, don't, that's <sighs> why I think you just give them an FDR style fucking white dude. Give him the white dude. Give him it. Who gives a shit? Like it, it, at the end of the day, like this is, this is a conversation I have as a leftist all the time because leftists are so obsessed with aesthetics over actual, like there's a, there's a Pat the Bunny lyric about like, uh, is, uh, is this, uh, is this a, uh, a dress party or a revolution? It, either way, black with bandanas is a boring theme. Um, and so like give, like who cares, right? Mm-hmm. Who cares that what matters is the substance. And so if the aesthetic will get you in the door, right, if that'll clear it, who cares? Um, uh, Because all you, what you should do is find a white dude who fucking will tell them that things used to be better and that I want to go back to it and then sell them on a version of like a modern FDR that yeah. is not racist and not anti-Semitic. <laughs> um, right. Kind of just hope for the best there because that's kind of what you can get. Yeah, because I mean, if that's if that's what it takes, dude. Fucking. Sometimes you gotta get us. You gotta. Politicians are salesmen. They're salespeople, right? Yeah. Right. That's the first fucking order of business is being able to sell themselves. Sure. And so get the dude who can sell himself to Nebraskans who just believes all of the based shit. And, yeah. and understands that like, yeah, you know what? A fucking home ownership, inflation, corporate takeover, fucking money, right. interest, out, get these groups out of your business, this, that, and the other thing. And you know what? This country was best when we were spending on our people. This country was best when we were setting up the, the highway road system and building big fucking fuck off things like the Hoover Dam, right? This country yeah. was best when we invested in our country and our people. And that's what I want to do is as a your elected official, I want to invest in you, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, like uh, make, make them understand that government spending is this is this is one of these things that I I swear to God, I, whoever whoever finds the successful sales pitch for this, Americans understand bulk purchasing. They love Costco. They love Sam's Club. Right. They understand bulk purchasing, but for some reason we can't get them over the hump into government purchasing. Right. Like if Mm. we just all pooled our money together and Mm -hmm. bought the thing in bulk, then Mm -hmm. we get a cheaper rate and we get to negotiate that rate. Right. Right? Well, I think the easiest thing to do here, at least for Nebraska and, uh, the subject is Nebraska politics. I do view this as kind of like a nationwide issue because I think Nebraska is a huge opportunity state if you can find the right, again, as you've been saying, the right messenger. But I think this is a great idea of getting at least principled people such as yourself, who obviously you already had the answer to this, but preaching is always nice, um, to understand that this is messaging. This is like a politician that is going to be trying to just get elected and then 
go from there to get the actual policies that you would all want in an effective, um, if any of that made sense. Yeah. It's, it's foot in the door, right? Foot in the door. Both mm. both at the state level, right? You have to like sneak in to the politics, right? And yeah. you have to sneak in everybody's house, right? The interesting part that becomes, I think you may get a kick out of this, at least the anti-government or the old governor, Pete Ricketts, was uh, an anti-Trump fellow. Um, and so is the new one, uh, Jim Pillen. But Trump is fairly popular in this state. Uh, the, the state Republican Party has largely been taken over by Trump uh, Republicans. Um, kind of why Ben Sass ended up retiring because he was censured and blah, 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 blah. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Pete can toe that line. Because I think there are some policies that a Democrat could say, hey, Trump and I align on this issue. Um and kind of, I think that's the best way you can snatch votes from Republicans is you paint him as a, uh, a rich man that came down to Nebraska cause he wanted to be governor. Mm -hmm. Um, and he disagrees with Trump and he's okay with disagreeing with Trump because he's rich and he gets to put his money in stocks, bonds and whatever the fuck he likes. And meanwhile, you guys are busting your ass out here on the farm. And this country won't even invest in waterway infrastructure that makes travel costs for your product to get out of this country cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, and Trump wanted to fucking do that. Now, whether or not he actually wanted no, he to, never I would don't have. But yeah, it's, a, it's right. a great selling point. Yes. Um, so that that's the frustrating bit is like you literally have to find a very strange bedfellow in Trump understanding where the republican party is here I think if you eliminate the gun problem yeah shut uh, the fuck up about the guns that's just your, yeah. your best fucking bet when it comes to like the national fucking whenever somebody comes knocking you just mm -hmm. abdicate right you just shut yeah. the fuck up well this it. was the solution that i had tried to come up with is you end up buying a you end up subsidizing quality gun safe quality gun locks uh, no, and kind of going from there. I'll, I'll the tell you, reason I'll tell you as a gun well, guy, the the yeah. the gun locks and the gun safes thing sure. uh, annoys all of us because the whole point of having the gun is to have it loaded, locked, and ready in case someone yeah, comes in. Yeah, sure. Don't care about that. This is going to be yeah. in reference to some the the Von Mar shooting. I don't know if you remember hearing about this. this oh, there's so Omaha. many. No. <laughs> yeah, this was one that was in Omaha, Nebraska. Ended up the. 20 year old ended up getting a hold of his like dad's AK and went and shot up the Von Mar. I think Is that the West Roads mall ten? shooting? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then we had another one, another scare. This was far more about mental health. And I think he just wanted to commit suicide by cop. But uh, a couple months ago, maybe a month ago, there was another uh, guy that walked into the local target and started shooting up in the air and shooting outside of the target. And then the police show up, kind of draws his weapon. I, I'm it's the reporting that I've seen yeah. um, seems to imply that pretty heavily. And I can believe that, but going back to the Von Mar issue and how he got the gun, I feel that it's always better to do carrots over sticks. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I think it's a losing position, and I think mm -hmm. any time you talk about it in any sure. capacity, you're losing people on the right. And if you're attempting to do the strange bedfellows tactic, yeah, then essentially any talk on any infringement – what they they perceive to be an infringement, right? Sure, is, yeah, of Is it immediate, immediate now? Okay. And so, like, I, I, well, I don't feel like subsidizing gun safes it would end towards a infringement. But um, that's not, yeah, that's, that's you. That's not, it did, as somebody who's like, my stepfather is an FFL. My family owned, like, and ran multiple yeah, yeah, no, you told me. Like, yeah, yeah like, I'm me. telling you, like, yep. it, it, all they'll hear is a Democrat talking about guns. Sure. That isn't, I support the Second Amendment explicitly. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything outside that framework, immediate mm -hmm. suspect. Well, I always feel like uh, I go to um, fuck uh, Justice Scalia and his uh, the 2008 case. Was it fuck 
where he talks about, hey, this is a right, but it's not an unlimited right. We, we can talk about those very f few minute quotes. Um, but again, it's going to be my biggest problem is that I just don't feel like gun owners will ever admit that, like, safety depends on the right person deciding to either flip the switch and remain or go hot and fire bullets down range um, as opposed to like being sane and keeping the safety on. And there's no real way to parse those two out. I, um, I, I'm just going to read Spaghetti's comment here. Um, Second Amendment voters will not dis discuss nuance. Yeah, Straight up. <laughs> that seems fair. Yes, it was Heller, by the way. That yeah. was the... Yeah. I, I I just think like you could gain so many right like because there's so much common ground like like we've said there's so much common ground on like mm -hmm. why are these fuckers all on the take right like all of a sudden Bobert's worth like how many million right like everybody as soon as they get into that fucking job they're they're worth just jacks through the roof. Yeah. Right. Like everybody's on the fucking take. Everybody knows it. The little man's getting fucked. Every bank gets fucking bailed out on some level. Sure. The fucking it's socialist. It's socialized costs at the top. It's rugged individualism at the base. Right. Yep. It's fucking everybody knows this. And so like the instant you can get some of that across the aisle and be like, look, I'm not coming for your guns. What do you mean? I'm not coming for your guns. I own guns. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in the holding them to uh, to defend yourself against tyranny, both small yeah. and large, and self defense. I believe in all of that. I have no uh, no like part of me that wants to take your guns. So let's talk mm -hmm. about something else. Right. Yeah. And now we can start br building that bridge because there's a lot of fucking right wingers when they're not immediately screaming about the castration of children when they come yeah. into this fucking Love channel. Life. Right. When yeah. they, they're not immediately screaming about that. A lot of them come in here and ask, what's your what's your opinion on the Second Amendment? And like, cause as an anarchist, I'm like, you know, I believe in a uh, personal emotional support nuke. Right. Mm. I, I want I want an I want an emotional support nuke. I would feel right. a lot more safe in this world if mm -hmm. I had my own personal nuclear device. Right? <laughs> I feel I feel like people would think twice before fucking with me if that were the Thank case. You. Right. Sure. Um and so like yeah, like I'll hit them with some like like based ass take about like uh, yeah. I want you like I not only want guns I want like government subsidi subsidized guns I want <laughs> I want guns for a black male to female trans sex workers in the inner city exactly right yeah. I want like there's, I'm, there's little denying about the effectiveness of being armed right? as a trans person I think that this uh, is something that the Democratic Party's got to figure out like I and like remember yeah. how it protects minority rights build that, this got frustrating build that fucking bridge like the the it, it, all discussion this is what the left not well the left um mm -hmm. fucking but like the democrats need to get through their thick fucking skulls is that all conversation of gun control is racist mm -hmm. and especially taxing mm -hmm. just saying like yeah it's, uh, it's I, classic i don't know i well, never i never fucking understood yeah. why this was a thing i never understood why you wouldn't pull your head out of your ass and like think about why at the time called freedmen once they were um, released from bondage had to arm themselves and to this day still need to. Yeah. Um, I, I, obviously. they would, they'd make so many, so, so many inroads with mm -hmm. their potential right wing voters. If they just got the fuck off that one for a second, not only that, not only that, but the most frustrating part is, is fucking, you're now contending with two Supreme Court cases mm -hmm. against you. Like, you want to sit there it's and a, a, say that Roe v. Wade should be overturned, but you want to argue about this dumb fucking shit. Yeah, yeah. it's a loser. Yeah. It's a loser of an argument. And like, like we said earlier, political calculus. Yeah. Right? Political fucking calculus. You, mm -hmm. you, whatever candidates you choose need to be able to do political calculus and be mm -hmm. like, oh, that's a losing fucking argument, right? Yeah. Like, there's no, that's not happening. That's not right. happening. It's just not happening. I like, think, get the fuck I over think it. one of the biggest problems for Joe Biden is that he remembers, was it, he passed the assault weapons ban, but there was an event that happened where like bank robbers were more, this was in the early 90s. You're oh, yeah, you're talking about the LA bank robbery. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that was a huge influence on yeah. why that bill got fucking passed. Yeah, it's the it's a, it's were, it's the North Hollywood shootout in 1997. Yeah, in 90 the, fucking seven. In the yep. uh, the the cops had to go to the local gun store. To, yes. To get it was armed. fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. And and like I I I don't know why he doesn't make that connect. Obviously, I can't fucking speak for the president of the United yeah, States. Right. I don't in general. I don't know why fucking people can't get through this this through their thick skull. On top of just the historical example of like we had an we had an entire rebellion called the Civil War where people had arms to take the battle with them and we still didn't repeal the second amendment then after a fucking civil war it didn't happen why in the fucking world are you not trying to talk about things like responsible gun ownership or things that go along those lines I, instead of dumbass achievable things like removing the second amendment i can i can absolutely end run most of those conversations just as simple as um, do you believe in gun control? No, I believe that the majority of shootings in this country are not the uh, not the uh, not the the guns are not to blame. What mm -hmm. I believe is that individuals who were not well and didn't have access to certain opportunities or mental health care or avenues of care that they uh, that otherwise could have been provided were denied sure. them, and as a result of that, we have a sick society and a sick culture. I believe that if we had health care for all, which includes mental health care for all, and a destigmatized version of it that didn't necessarily require you to, to sur immediately surrender all of your weapons to the county sheriff because you're having a day where you're depressed and you need to talk sure. to a therapist, and that cost yeah. for that therapist was subsidized in some capacity, that ultimately right. we could eliminate a vast majority of the shootings that incur in this country and we wouldn't have to t have the talk about infringing upon gun rights and mm -hmm. job done. Yeah, I guess the question I I think I might know your answer, but I never try and just assume. But like, do you think there's some validity in the issue of public safety with um, red flag laws? Oh, okay, look. <laughs> yes, yes. There's a corollary. Yes. Okay. But mm -hmm. I'm an anarchist. We talk root causes. Sure. Right. I think that's fair. Yep. Um, we talk root causes. And the domestic violence is not – abusers aren't born, right? No baby comes out of the womb. Like, okay, 1% genetic randomization, right? You're yeah, going sure. to yeah. get nut jobs and weirdos. That happens. Yep. But there's no planning for proper crazy, right? Proper crazy oh. you can't write legislation for. That's don't yeah. don't attempt to do that. So right. ultimately, what created that abuser? What created that violent person, right? Yeah. We need to begin addressing that because that's the thing that needs remedying. Like, and that's that's all. I mean, that's all fucking interventionist healthcare. That's all uh, social services. That's all. Like, I think a portion of it is probably a controlling portion. I would agree with you on that. Yeah. I think there's. Um, I think there is a proper way to do it. Now, I don't know if we're talking about maintaining somebody's uh there's a specific word for it but like um gl you are correct gl said besides if you took guns away from domestic abusers you'd have to take the guns away from a disproportionate from number cops. of cops yes yep yep that's true like um it, it's well it, the, the interesting part about that is is that women that are typically this is typically a woman thing though domestic abuse happens regardless of gender um women that are married to police officers are more inclined to go to the law because they understand the protections that they do get so they more are more likely to report domestic violence um i don't know if i have a study on that that's just kind of like a correlative i feel common sense um motion uh, but you might we just watched a video of a, a young lady um in beverly hills the other day who's being uh violently abused by her um police um partner and mm -hmm. she took to tiktok about it and one of the statements that she made was i don't want to go to the cops because they're, uh, they're all his friends no no oh. because he is i don't want to go to the cops because he is a cop and i don't want to ruin his career his career oh that's fair 
Yeah. Right. That's probably something I ought to think of. More. There's 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 the, uh, all sorts of Stockholm yeah. sort of situations as well yeah. as you know. Yeah, but ultimately like like I said, it, it's it's a losing argument for Democrats, right? Like it's just a mm -hmm. losing proposition and so like if you really want to make inroads one you abdicate the conversation right you just fucking when the democrats come a knock in you just abdicate you're like nope not having that conversation right i'm not what do you think about a politician that actually goes out there and says like hey i'm doing this because it's a political decision like this I will get me elected I think if you did it behind closed doors, that'd be fine. I don't know. I don't know if you did it publicly, that would play. But I think yeah. if when like your colleagues came a knocking mm -hmm. and they're like, why won't you join us on this? And you fucking oh, straight yeah. up said, that is a loser of a goddamn position. And the fact that you people will still attempt to make it while we're it's trying exactly to get. why we're in this fucking position yeah. in the first place. Right. Yeah. Like, I think if you did it behind closed doors, you could probably make it play. And maybe some people may be mad with you. Some people may like get it. You're like, look, I'm trying to get some shit done here. And you guys are kicking water uphill. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm what, probably going to steal that. Like, <laughs> it's, I, dude, I've had that. I've had that. I, that's one of my favorites. I've had that for years and years and years and years. Use it. It's great. I use I my go to is actually the one from Blade. You look like a motherfucker that's trying to ice skate uphill. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw that movie. Yep. Yeah. That, um, that's kind of my go-to, but I like that Yeah, one. I, just, just I guess kicking water uphill is exactly what they're fucking trying to do. And mm -hmm. so, like, yeah, we've talked about that for years in this community now. The mm -hmm. the fact that, like, if Democrats would just shut the fuck up about guns for a second, they absolutely yeah. could get some work done that could prevent some gun violence. Yeah. Well, it, and then if you actively start winning fucking elections, then you can actually fucking do something. Until fucking then, I think this is the other frustrating part that was like okay, an Karina. awakening. Um, an awakening for Americans in general is the repealing of Roe v. Wade, where we have to say, okay, we actually have to have this debate now. We have to actually go out there and get legislation passed because – we didn't do it before, and as somebody that's in the Democratic Party and, like, actually active in it, we didn't – we fucked around, fucked around from the 90s on upward, and now we actually have to go out there and get something that's fucking achievable. Um, I feel like it's – it is a great awakening and a, a challenge that politicians ought to be rising to and admit, hey, in the past, we fucked around, but I'm not going to. Um, uh, Zim's got a good point. I think on the local level, you could frame it as listening to your constituents rather than a political decision, and that might get votes. Yeah, I, well, what I was saying with that is it wouldn't be just the politician coming out and saying, like, hey, this is a political decision. It would be like, hey, I respect the American U.S. court system. We have two Supreme Court rulings that are pretty solid in their writing, and I don't view this as something that is achievable. I think that we ought to look in different areas. I mean, with the poli with the politicians, like with your colleagues, you just it, it's political capital, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have a limited amount of political capital you can spend, and I am I refuse to spend mine on that. Yeah, right. Like that. I guess. I, I guess the issue I, I could understand having the conversation with the politicians. Yeah, of course, that's exactly what you do. But I don't like the idea of saying like being a politician and not going out there and. and kind of teaching people how to do politics and in just the slightest sense. Right. Um, and I, I guess I always looked at it from, from that angle, but again, the answer I just delivered in talking about the Supreme court decisions is probably not along the same line. So that's something I got to weigh out, but yeah, you're completely right in, in the, um, function of like political capital. Yeah. yeah I, I, it just, it, it's one of the biggest single gains that Democrats could make. Like it's one of those easiest, like, how do we get people on the right? How do we cross that aisle? How do we build that bridge? Shut the fuck up about guns. Yeah. It's that fucking simple. That is, it, I've seen it so many times on this channel, motherfuckers coming in here and like guns, 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 guns. And it's like, they encounter a room full of anarchists. They're like, yeah, we don't want to take your guns. I want to give you more guns. You're familiar with Beto O'Rourke, right? Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm at least 40, aware of him to a certain degree yeah. as any American would be. 
Yeah, he ran in Texas and says, hell yeah, we're coming for your AR-15s. Yeah, how'd that work out? Won, yeah, I think he lost 46 to 53. Like, I don't understand that dude, he, people he, don't get that, like, there are Democrats that... Are gun uh, owners? Yes. yes. That, that there are liberal gun owners? Yes. Yes, that there's, I, there's a socialist rifle association? Oh, I didn't know about yeah, that. Yeah, the SRA exists, and it's filled he, not just with socialists, but also anarchists, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, that there, there's, oh. there's liberal gun owners. There's a socialist rifle association that marks mm. himself. Any attempt to, uh, any attempt oh, to sur- surrender <laughs> firearms or ammunition should be frustrated by force if necessary. Mm. Right. The, okay, yeah. the left is, I, I the, did know about that. The right. left is doggedly pro gun. Mm-hmm. Like Democrats may not be, but the left is. Yeah. Like, I don't think liberals. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, M- M- Metallic Soul, proud member of it here. Fucking Cass is raising her hand as well. That's crazy chicken lady. Yeah. yeah. Like, d- 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 it's, it's a loser. I, it of a doesn't fucking surprise position. me. I just kind of yeah. like. And they do, and they do like, like oh, open yeah. training sessions, and they train trans people, and they mm-hmm. fucking yeah. Like, who do you think is like arming and like training the trans people? Is the SRA? Yeah. Is yeah. you know yeah like it's just it's the easiest single win I think any Democrat could make. Is yeah, just, I think it's a huge win for minorities too, especially yes. if you go out there and address that. Also, if you really want, if, also if you're a Democrat and you really want gun control in this country, it's real simple. Just arm black people. Um, yeah, well, I mean Reagan kind of proved that. Yeah, it's a Mulford Act in California. Yep. Um, like yeah, <laughs> it, it it just. Uh, like that's I think that's the solid strategy you find yourself a fucking uh, like upper middle aged white dude who Nebraskans trust who's going to pitch them on some like non-racist non-anti-semitic FDR style previous America that will shut the fuck up about the gun issue and not only shut the fuck up about it maybe come out and be like that's pro yeah Yeah. like get him get him some fucking ad time or like make make sure there's like photos on twitter of him (laughs) at the range right don't don't at like plausible deniability yes in the campaign yes plausible deniability he's been photographed at the range and glad handing with people who are like gun people sort of situation right and just like mm. make sure that that's disseminated and backdoor yeah. that st- backdoor that just you know so you have some plausible deniability at the campaign level for it um, yeah like <laughs> yeah i i i like why not like i think it might be a, a decent position and i'll tell you right now like as an actual leftist if i saw a democrat out there shut the fuck about the gun thing start talking about actual like infrastructure mm-hmm. investments and like doing shit and it's like you know what you'd have my vote yeah i got to i got to kind of this will probably be uh i don't know how relevant you are if like the red pill manosphere type bullshit what a um mess. Do you feel that re- Democrats in general don't seem to have those uh, strong male figures, at least out there, kind of oh, doing no. that? Oh, no. We, we talk about this all the time. Vosh, oh, really? Vosh got, oh, okay. Vosh got into big trouble as well, um, saying it like the fact, okay. the fact of the matter is, as a leftist, we, mm-hmm. we abdicated those spaces. Mm. Leftism, like proper leftism right okay. used to be fucking coal miners and factory workers right yeah like right. That's, that's who blue collar was leftism all right yeah the ones who were the fucking anarchists the socialists the communists those were the workers of the world mm-hmm. right we abdicated those spaces in order to capture academia and mm. that is our responsibility, and leftists bear that responsibility. The fact of the matter is that, like the ah. Andrew, the Andrew Tates of the world, frankly, mm-hmm. exist because of leftist leftist inaction in those spaces. Because yes, like here's the thing: are they talk? Can they be toxic? Can they be racist? Can they be misogynistic? Yes, 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 and yes. How do you think you uh, dismantle that stuff by lack of engagement? 
Mm-hmm. Right? You have to, and I always tell people, if you don't have the spoons for it, I don't know if you know that reference, but if you don't know have, if you don't have the energy to be in those spaces, if you have the trauma, right, and you don't feel sure. safe in those spaces, that's not a, sa- uh, a space for you. Just like maybe you should, uh, maybe you should be setting up the free library for anarchists, or maybe uh, helping with the soup kitchen, or you know, yeah, uh, yeah, setting yeah. up the free clinic, that those sort of thing. Don't yeah. be the frontliner. Right, we need somebody on the front line who's gonna fucking like go toe to toe with the cops, <laughs> but we also need somebody who's gonna run the soup kitchen, right? right? So there's there's that sort of thing, and so like if you can't handle somebody dropping a few slurs on you, maybe don't try and uh, act uh, be an activist at the docks, right? Sure. And like that's that sort of thing. So those manosphere space, uh, spaces, a hundred percent, I do believe that it is a responsibility of the leftists to engage in those spaces. And okay. like help dismantle them because the fact uh, the, the truth of the matter is, is that yeah. all that is, is the classic recruitment style. Those are marginalized uh, young males. Yep. That's it. Right. That's who you recruit from. Militaries right. do it. Nazis fucking do it. Fucking right. commies do it. Terrorist groups do it. You name it. That's who you go for. You go for a marginalized young male who has no friend group, who feels like an outsider in their society, who's not get who's not getting laid to at the rate they want to get laid, right? right. Like yeah. that sort of thing is easy recruitment ground for yep. violent extremism. Make your life mean some. Uh, are you kind of familiar with Scott Galloway? No. Uh, he's a. I would probably consider him. I would guess he would consider himself a, a democratic liberal. Maybe he writes a couple different books. Like uh, oh, is he Galloway. okay? Wait, wait, wait. He's is, he's a sports ball person, right? No, he's a uh, professor. No, no, no. He okay. Just looks like there is no. There's <laughs> there is a Scott Galloway that's also a sports ball person. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. he's a professor. He writes uh, like uh, adrift a hundred charts. Okay. Uh, American hundred charts. Yes, I, I see him here. He, he's Berkeley. Yeah, yeah. He he talk he talks about a lot of his writing is kind of about that abandonment. Um, yeah. Oh. Oh, he's Do we lose you? package and adopt him in that way God um damn it um yeah no i i absolutely yeah that's those spaces those traditionally masculine spaces are mm-hmm. like gyms man gyms like that's sure like that's that sort Physical of fitness yes yeah. like that used to be a leftist thing right like, and we absolutely, we abdicated our responsibility in those spaces. We receded from them. And mm-hmm. as, as a result, other people started recruiting from them. Sure. Yeah. Right. Like you see the libertarians move into those spaces. And once the yeah. libertarians are in, like, <laughs> like you're, dude, it's, you're fucking done, man. Fucking North American uh, libertarians are some of the most fucking, oh, they're rough. Um, mm. So, Yeah. Fabian Liberty. I think I know that guy around this Twitch name. <clears throat> yes, we might be familiar. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if there's something I can watch between you two fucking... Oh, he was a you member... You got like a he, summary. He was a member of the community for, for many, many months. Really? Yeah, we tolerated his ANCAPism for quite some time. Uh, if you really want to know, um, fucking... Yeah, he's... Oh, he's he's an interesting <laughs> dude. Um, uh, let's like see. It. hold on. Um, one second here. Um, fucking, if you really want to know about him, he just he is self described as a Hoppian, um, as a Hoppian an, uh, an cap or a Hoppian libertarian. So ha- you rich for my bro. Okay. So if you could summarize so it, I Han- it. <laughs> Hans Hermann Hoppe. Okay. Right. Cause that's not a terrifying name to start with. Right. <laughs> that's not putting you on edge. He's um, professor emeritus of economics at university of uh, Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, a uh, university of Nevada, okay. Las Vegas. Right. Um, yep. He's, he's an interesting dude. He's basically a forerunner of modern like so-called ancapism and so-called like neo-libertarian thought um he said some interesting things in his career so scott who is fabian liberty um scott uh scott is well it's his he's a partner too um but scott's the main guy um 
He describes himself as a Hoppian. Well, Hans Hermann Hoppe maintains that for there to be a libertarian, uh, a society governed by libertarian rules, that um, illogical a- uh, actors must mm-hmm. be purged. Quote purged, uh, and those include anybody in the LGBT community, women. Um, he's also gone on to state that Europeans should not allow Africans to uh, migrate to Europe and interbreed mm-hmm. because it will lower their collective IQ. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the brand of economics that Scott follows. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, he is an avowed when was, and, guy, when was the professor like active? Oh, he's still active. Oh, okay. Joy. Yeah, um UNLV has yet to kick him the fuck out. He's been he's been censured a couple of times for shit he said in oh. class, but they've yet to boot his ass to the curb. Wait, I thought liberals, you know, like just captured everything all the american institutions there's no dissent it's Uh, yeah it's it's exactly it's unlv uh, though man las vegas is basically and capistan oh okay vegas is the closest you could argue to uh uh, like a semi-functional libertarian city really this most of nevada is federally owned anyway so well the the portion of nevada that isn't owned by the fed is governed by the casinos (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Straight up. strong unions strong unions um, and casinos yeah so like yeah he's a he's an interesting uh dude shall we say um but yeah i i i truly do believe that um if we were to if you really wanted to like put in some work right like those i hate dude i hate the term manosphere i think it just mm-hmm. i think it it's it's one of those words that does more harm than good for trying to dismantle something sure. um, because it puts people on guard, right? Yeah. It, it's the sure. people you are attempting to talk to that you're trying to bridge when they yep. hear you refer to them as that, it immediately mm-hmm. shuts the conversation down. Um, sure. So, but like that, that sphere of influence um, definitely is because of those alienated, marginalized males who are yeah. only increasing in numbers um if you've seen some of the studies recently about how the majority of 20 uh, something males um are partnerless oh yeah this was the one uh because and a lot of females aren't because typically they're dating older men i think yeah like it was terrible yeah, yeah. like dude that's not good that's not good well, yeah, and Scott Galloway talks about this i think in his latest yeah, book drift um yeah so that's kind of been like a big worry for me is like you've got to figure out again how you win a primary uh, going out there and and saying some of this shit um and not to have the pivot too strong because while the progressive party in nebraska in the democratic party is probably the most active certainly jane club messages and kind of like i view her as a great activist i don't view her as a great party leader um although she's done some great things like it, registered independents are allowed to vote in primaries for the democratic party i think that'd be a good thing to like kind of hassle the republican state party on um just kind of like those sorts of things i think she's a great activist i don't think strategically she's has the most effective um uh she has not been the most effective. Um, oh, I, yeah. I. It, and again, these are those sorts of like mental health care, social problems, like um, mm-hmm. social uh, social services sort of situation, and a further fracturing, um, like of of our society. And I, you know, that's that's long term problem. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. That's. So, that's- that's kind of why I, I mean granted it's because i'm from nebraska but i feel like nebraska should be ground zero for democrats to start looking at and the ideas of like how do you bridge this urban rural divide and yeah because that's the possible? actual divide like good good yeah. good catch it's not fucking red blah 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 it's urbanity right. versus rurality it always yeah. has been and like the conversations that i have had with rural folks other than campaign campaign trails like understanding 
why we have these divides. And I think most of the time they really do get it and understand it because it's not that difficult. Crimes that you happen here and that happen in rural areas are not as in line with crimes that are going to happen in urban or city areas. You just can't really throw the, um, what is it? The dog whistle into that as hard. So it, yeah, it always is. Yeah. But that's urban. Like the, yeah. That's the, the upsetting part. But when you kind of, uh, break it down in between, like, you know, you guys aren't going to have these issues, but I'm running to solve your issues. Can you educate me on issues that, you know, I know you haven't seen a Democrat in 10 years. Like I'm fucking here. Uh, the other weird part is uh, the state is so captured that senators um, don't like have uh, town halls anymore. I mean, this is kind of like a common thing everywhere, but like mm -hmm. Republicans haven't gone out to do town halls in years. See, this is this is the hilarity of it, because the, the town hall that you're talking about mm -hmm. isn't even a town hall. Right. I come from the land of Vermont where town halls still exist. Ah, interesting. And Tell me more. So literally, if there is an issue or topic at hand, everybody goes to the town hall and has a hand count vote for it. Sure. These are still common in Vermont. They still happen all the time. And so, like, not only are candidates or people that uh, or, or people that are attempting to push an agenda, like, the, you go to town hall, you have a meeting about it, people talk about it, hand counts are still done there. Yeah. Right? Like, an actual town hall. Like, it actually still happens in the mind. <laughs> like, it's yeah. the real fucking thing. Not this weird, watered-down version where I'm just going to pitch you a fucking thing that's going to happen elsewhere sort of thing. Yeah, 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 and you right, can yeah. talk to me, maybe, sort of situation. Yeah, like... Make it tangible, active for yeah, them. Yeah, like, come yeah. down. We are talking about a topic. There's going to be relevant people there who are going to get grilled by the lo a locality, right? And then we can fucking, like, we can vote on it real quick mm -hmm. right like that actually yeah. still happens and so like yeah like there there should be a reclaiming of some of these things like this yeah. is this is how uh, um this is like as an anarchist right, right like we people like well what do you do but we use consensus decision making which mm -hmm. is like a whole other ball game like your, <laughs> your ranked your ranked choice voting is adorable to us it's like oh okay God. fine like ranked choice is this crazy progressive insanity in america now and it's like <laughs> you realize like what like anarchists use <laughs> like we use consensus and like people can't even wrap their heads around that and so it's like, look, you know, you should at least be able to like have a fucking say in this mm -hmm. and that that has been removed and that marginalization, that alienation has only furthered the goals of any controlling authoritarian powers in our society. And so yeah. revitalizing that local town space, I think through down ticket voting and maybe a, a changing of those policies that like if you can start positioning like local city councilors and those sorts of people who would change these sorts of things that like, yeah, local votes actually matter. We're going to hold them on issues all the time. City uh, like, you know, town uh, city councilors and those sorts of things don't yeah. actually control everything and then engage in a direct democracy style of like a fashion of sorts mm -hmm. you could probably because yeah you can't do that in fucking uh, like omaha right like that's not a yeah. possibility but in bum fuck nebraska you absolutely yeah. can do that and they'd be yeah, down for it like you're going out to like fucking uh arthur county there's like 328 people that voted last year right and 22 you can yeah. you can do you can do direct democracy with them yeah and they should um, have it and you should emphasize why it's a good thing for them and how yep. they've been alienated by the state and, the, and society and how yep. they like i recognize your plight and you don't get a voice and that you yep. don't like that sort of thing and like look it, yeah it seems like the simplest thing to it fucking have as an attack line like hey he's your governor he was your previous governor he wants to be your senator now but we haven't had fucking town halls where you actually get to go out there and call this bald fuck out for his actions yeah right it's it's very um 
But again, as I was telling you at the start, I feel like this isn't a line of attack that the Democratic Party is going to utilize in a proper manner. No. Because they're not going to go out there and say, like, what we want to accomplish, what we want to do. Um, have you considered running yourself? <laughs> I have, actually. I ran um, for CD District 2 once. Uh, um Dustin Sedoris, S-E-D-O-R-I-S. I ran a little bit, and then I uh, dropped out, and I was going to uh, support Kara Eastman and work on her campaign for a little bit, and then I kind of, um, kind of did all that stuff. So I've, I've considered doing this myself, but again, like there's a lot of logistical issues, right, in between funding. Oh yeah. I feel like what I'm probably going to do, and I don't know how well you get along with him, but Destiny uh, is from Nebraska. He actively does campaigns, mm -hmm. uh, has actively done, yep. actually gone out there and I, done I'm, the grind. I'm agnostic as far as yeah. that level of like, I, 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 have, an, I have an opinion on Voosh. Um, mm -hmm. but as I, like, and I'm pro Vooch. I, the, the fact that he irritates as many people as he irritates <laughs> amuses me greatly. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. And so like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm fine there. Dest once you hit that destiny level, like mm -hmm. I just don't care. Oh, okay. Like I, I, I I'm, anything specific or. Uh, no, I just don't give a okay. shit. Like, I gotcha. like he's. I don't know if he's a net positive or a net negative. Yeah, I don't sure. watch him. I don't have time for streamers sort of situation, right? Like, Obviously, when you're trying to do your own shit, I don't. I don't watch shit. these people. Like, yeah. I, you know, the only time I've watched Destiny is when he's on uh, Jesse Lee Peterson. That one, like the first oh, time. Oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think I've seen some. That's Obviously, amusing. I've seen some of the clips. Yeah, that's amusing. Um, but yeah. beyond that, like I don't care. But yeah, he's right. put people in the streets before. Like he's gotten he's gotten actual shit done. So at the end of the day, like you feel like all right, like yeah, it's just that weird part because you don't want to like <clears throat> you don't want to present yourself in the in a different kind of light. You want to be a, I. I should say m me. I don't say you. I don't know how anybody else would run for office, but like you want to actually have to sit down, have a conversation, what you want to achieve, how you're going to line it up, where you think there is space. So I do have to thank you for kind of reinforcing the ideas that we were both batting back and forth here. You worked uh, for Caesars. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I worked security there like 2016 ish. Um, that's kind of how I knew about the strong unions there too. I did. Yep. Um, fuck it. it just, I popped you. Um, yeah. what does it say? Um, his same icon. That's how I knew. I'm like, Oh yeah, there's that red hair. <laughs> Dude, you are, a, yeah. you are a very <laughs> redheaded man. Oh yeah. Uh, Hey, I've had this since Xbox 360. All my screen names have been this. So like, it's legit. Do you, do you mind if I show your photo on on? No, no, yeah, go ahead. Like, right. I mean, they're already seeing my photo there. So well, they can get in contact with me it's on Discord. It, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good one. I was actually laughing in this photo. So I'd never modeled before. So we were all dicking around or whatever. But everybody kind of sits there and thinks like. You have to like smile off in the way and distance and stuff like that. <laughs> Kavas just said iron brew. Um, <laughs> ch child of Satan right there. Soulless redhead. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> holy ginger Batman. Um, yeah. Oh, what a cutie. Um, <laughs> Lovely. But yes. Like, yeah, I saw that photo. I was like, that is some red hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a good time. Um, uh, the like weird part is, is just trying to do again, like the, the regular political connections about like yeah. how you make these movements. I haven't talked to Chris since I left the campaign, Chris Janicek being the last guy that actually won the democratic nomination. <laughs> yeah. And then went and touched his way out of it. Well, didn't touch anybody. He sexually harassed. He sent a very explicit text message talking about spending campaign funds to get the staff relayed. The interesting thing about Chris is, is that he's gay. He was a gay cupcake baker. And I, uh, I fucking told him this. I told him this at the start. I told him, look, it's not the fact that you're gay that you're going to lose this election. It's the fact that you can't control your fucking mouth when you talk to people. 
That's he see, would, that's, that would be that would be my problem. It just did not yeah. not the, <laughs> not the sexual. It's just like I saw somebody. I think it was Peaky or somebody in chat earlier saying like, "Kai, you're destined to run for like local politics in Vermont." Mm-hmm. And the astral said my health would take me out of it. It wouldn't be my health, man. <laughs> It'd be the fact that I fucking say some shit. Yeah, well, the the fresh, and I think this is the part where people got to understand like the things that I've kind of been talking about is like the actual politician part of this. He's sitting there and he's engaging with people on Facebook and private messaging. No. And like, and it's like, if you think about politics, you're like, Oh yeah, that immediate, or if you've ever worked in politics, you understand why that's an immediate, like, Oh fuck, what are you doing? But if you think about it and you're not actively in it, you're like, no, he's talking to his constituents. No, he's going out, he's going out there and he's telling them your views and blah, 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 blah. And that's, I like that idea before I ever got in politics. I always thought that was the greatest idea. Nope. The problem is, is that you have nothing to gain and everything to fucking lose. No DMs. When these motherf- no yeah. DMs. When these motherfuckers just piss you off one day and you say some dumb shit. And again, that's not really too relevant to what he actually did. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I do. Like, I, I'd say some Jane Fonda level shit. Like, I, I, I would. <laughs> yeah. I'd say some shit, and they'd be they'd be like, he is he is a extremist, radical anarchist, and I'd I wouldn't back away from the position. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. and uh, the the ah uh, yeah, and that's like the frustrating bit is like that's kind of why I wanted to start talking about at, at the start of this was like the activism versus the politician political part of like. Yeah trying to get the achievement where you can get the achievement. I feel like I see plenty of areas to gain some achievement in, and like Democrats winning, you have to do it in the right way. You kind of have to be the right person. Yeah. That's why you, you need to go get that white guy who can talk to them. Right. Right. Go get that fucking white dude who fucking is going to like get his foot <sighs> in the door that like, looks like, Oh, he's an upstanding fella. Yeah. Right. <laughs> fucking, you know, get that's that's absolutely what you need. I mean, I, look, I'm a I'm a I'm going to keep it real. Why do you think Obama made it, right? He he absolutely uh-huh. reads as one of the good ones. Yeah. Right? Clean cut, well spoken. Right? Fucking No problems in the marriage. Yeah, like that's absolutely that fucking racist yep. fucking pa- patriarchal yep. fucking bullshit that you all those hurdles you have to clear as a politician, dude, he just fucking slipped right by those, no problem. Mm-hmm. And they're not you put a dude up there in dreadlocks and see how that plays. Uh, right? Yeah, I just, ain't gonna fly. Right. So and like, it's very frustrating too, uh, because like you gotta play me, Obama. Yeah, you yeah. gotta play the game. Right? Yeah. And that's dude that and that's where like that's why most of us in here, that's why I I you know, I'm an anarchist. Your game fucking sucks and it's genocidal and racist and you know, fucking patriarchal and homophobic and transphobic and like just generally xenophobic. Like the game right. fucking sucks and should be burned to the goddamn ground. Um, and, but like, I'm also, you know, a pragmatist at heart as well. So I'm not as mm-hmm. like insufferable as a lot of anarchists can be. So I can yeah. have a conversation about like the machinations and manipulations of the system. And uh, I guess, so part of the problem that I was having, I think wording with you was talking about a politician saying like, Hey, I'm making this as a political decision, purely about like, um, whether or not this gets me elected. The, the, frustrating part as you were kind of just saying is like understanding how activists want to support you if you meet their demands but if their demands aren't achievable um yep. whether you believe it or like wholeheartedly i believe in like abortion rights as as long as you know medically intervention pretty much up until whenever i think there are plenty of instances in the third trimester where there are going to be medical complications where most people are going to be even like well yeah the wife shouldn't die or the woman shouldn't die the- i <clears throat> i until i look i'm gonna here's what here's my take on it right sure. i take a biblical stance Ooh crazy right what's the biblical what's the biblical stance well as an ordained minister i can tell you the biblical stance with authority right the breath of life yes 
Okay. I, until yeah. that thing comes out of you and breathes. Yeah. Fair game. And the okay. only instructions the Bible has on abortion is a tale of bitter water, which it gives you instructions on how to perform an abortion. Well, but which Bible? That's Old Testament, correct? Yeah, well, I mean, fucking... That, that's kind of, yeah. Nobody, they don't fight. They get to pick and choose. I'm going to pick and choose. Yeah, I think that's fair. Right? Um, like, at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned... That is a decision for a woman and her mm -hmm. doctor or a, a child, a person who is giving birth will, to a child. Let's we'll, we'll degender yeah. this. And the person yeah. who is giving birth to the, to the fetus, the fucking child and their the birther and the medical profession. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Did you fuck it? I avoid birther because that has Obama connotations. Oh, oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Right, fucking. I'm <laughs> still. I'm, I'm still traumatized. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Comical. Oh my god. Especially um, the line that ends up going down too. Fuck um, it. But like, yeah, that's between them. I don't like. I, why should there ever be any government intervention in that? Like, mm -hmm. that's. I'm sorry. Are you advocating for big government? Yeah. Like that. That's so, the biggest frustrating part too. Is like I, I don't understand why people don't make the arguments for what large government actually means. What is going to happen it, if well, abortion gets outlawed? It's because they're all hypocrites. They're hypocrites. Yeah. They're all hypocrites. I don't know. Like I talk to a ton of voters. And these are just kind of regular folk, and everybody lives hypocritical. But I feel like this is information that doesn't get presented to them. Whoa. I feel like the idea of like saying, hey, your daughter gets pregnant and she doesn't want to have the child. So she has an abortion and her abusive ex-boyfriend, husband, whatever, now has the ability to call upon the state to actually investigate your child because of a, like these political discussions are not had or I don't well, hear Democrats having them in that way. I'm going to I'm going to self promote a little here for a second. Okay. Um, yeah. I. All about it. Okay, so like I wrote a piece a bunch of years ago okay. um, that's used like in organizing like the tied to gar tie garment workers like they're like they're they're uh, one of the organizing activist groups over there contacted me and they're like can we use it it's been used yeah. in Australian schools. Um, oh, that's fucking awesome! So, you should send me this if you can send this. To it, me. It's I, 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 it. I will link it in chat if you want. Um, yeah. It's called the tent poles essay. Basically, it's the three tent poles okay. of American oppression, and the first one you're talking about is the poverty of philosophy. Okay. Basically, um, <clears throat> I'll just quote it. Um, <sighs> I'm, I'm using it to describe a method and condition that a social system enacts and utilizes in order to prevent an individual and by extension a group from gaining the information and experience necessary to understand their state or condition as a people and to prevent them from gaining the ability to change it through denial of that critical information. Poverty of philosophy. Mm -hmm. That's what you're dealing with. They've been purposefully miseducated. They've been denied information. And then it goes on to explain how the financial hamster wheel keeps you away from that information. And then how uh, the police state uh, ensures that e even if you were to gain the prior to, the status quo shall be maintained. Um, but that's what you're dealing with in that instance is a poverty of philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, it, ultimately, these people... Are you talking about the Mulford Act in here? Jesus Christ, man. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's, you know, I'm halfway decent. Um, I might know a thing. All right. Too. I'm just going over. The, I'm yeah. doing my best. I was just yeah. Kidding. No, it's, it's Citizens United. Taft Hartley gets name checked <laughs> in it as well. I mean, fucking like, yeah, like that's dude, the fear of the police state, but like the poverty of philosophy, philosophy, the financial hamster wheel and the fear of the police state are basically mm -hmm. the three tent poles of American, especially, but elsewhere, uh, oppression. Right. And that's what you're dealing with in your voter base is, they don't know shit. They don't have time to learn shit. And even if they don't know the thing they don't know, if you just uh, present them with the thing they don't know, they've been actively miseducated sure. in order to fear the thing they don't know. And First then why I was going to yeah. disagree with you slightly when you talked about leftists decided to capture academia, academia and such. I kind of feel like that was a natural understanding process of like, 
since we've learned more, we typically lean this way. Since we've learned about eugenics and the false things that are placed in it, we've learned and come across the idea that, you know, there's a small difference between black and whites, mostly with melanin melanin right like was there some need for eugenics beforehand but during the course of learning the enlightenment gained through education has leaned except left except rather than take that mm-hmm. we occupied the ivory towers hmm Oh, yeah. So my understanding is, uh, let me see if like this might be the same summary. So like journalism in the in the early to like early late 70s, early 80s typically was like a blue collar kind of job. Now journalism is more of like an entertainment job with vastly larger kind of like uh, scales of pay. Is that kind of along the same lines? I would almost liken it towards you could be a professor or you could mm-hmm. be Saul Alinsky. Not sure who Solo went. <gasps> Sorry. Um, name yeah. checked by both Hillary and Obama. Um, one, arguably one of the greatest community organizers and activists of all time. Really? Um, rules for radicals. It's it's sort of okay. Look, like if you're a reader, read it. If you're an audiobook guy, go to my YouTube channel. I read the entire thing. Really? Yes. Um. It is it. I don't care who you are. I don't care your political position. And frankly, neither does Saul Alinsky. He had yet yeah, name checked by right wingers, too, on occasion. He he <laughs> he had a position. He definitely occupied a space. But sure. the thing he did was teach people how to be activists. Mm-hmm. And it, so, yeah, like right wingers fear rules for radicals. Interesting. Yeah, okay, because I'm looking at the table contents. It's yeah. Like the purpose chapter. This is like the chapter. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, yeah, Rev. Alinsky okay. is canon, period. Um, communication. Okay. Yeah. This is a dude who taught people. He Dude, he took on big names, and they feared him. They feared him. When, when, when groups called Alinsky into town, dude, he was made illegal by, t- by, by uh, towns before. They straight up declared him persona non grata. So, so not to denounce Noam Chomsky because him and I share a birthday, but this is the person that if right-leaning folks really wanted to hate, they should have been targeting this guy. They but- do. They do. They fear him. Oh. Do they absolutely? Yeah, Obama and Hillary both accredited Alinsky with um, teaching them how to community organize. Interesting. Yeah, no, he's. Oh, yeah, he was a Obama was a community. Well, he was a lawyer, he was but, a constitutional professor. Yeah, but he was a. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Chomsky's Chomsky, Chomsky is what this is what we're talking about. Chomsky is the ivory towered academic, whereas God. Alinsky was in the trenches. Yeah. I can appreciate that a far uh, much, much more. Yeah. And so like, yeah, no, you, you it, read it, listen to it, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, either way you need it. Um, and yeah, he, he got the work done, man. Fucking corporations feared him. Like <laughs> towns feared him. If fucking like a bunch of black people called Alinsky into town, shit was about mm-hmm. to go down. Yeah. Um, he absolutely could get the work done. Um, time and again, he had the record for it. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, put that in your, put that in your arsenal for sure. Um, but that's, that's sort of what I'm talking about is the difference is like Alinsky had the knowledge. Oh, here's, here's, you want to, you want to, um, uh, you, you want a, uh, like a, a attribution or a vote of confidence. The Chicago diocese used to send their priests to Alinsky to teach them how to community organize. Huh. Yeah. When the Catholic church recognizes you as an authority <laughs> on getting so like social work done and shit, yeah. trust there me, you, go. you got, you, you got it. You got, you got some chops. Yeah, yeah. He's fucking, yeah. yeah. Read some Alinsky, but like, that's what I'm talking about is, is Alinsky was a leftist too. Um, and so like you, you have the one who is like, I'm going to do a bunch of theory and I'm going to live in this academic space, which is fine, but mm-hmm. people are dying. Sure. 
And so there's only so much you can do from that space. And there's a disproportionate weighting there, right? Like we don't need as many academics as we need activists. We need more activists than we need academics. Mm. And we have like, it seems that we have more academia than we have activists. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of, yeah, like I, I will take, uh, yeah, bubble gum or beans. Another uh, one is an, an excellent anecdote. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, basically, he taught a bunch of people that like, okay, so like the town's uh, stupid fucking orchestra was their beloved thing, right? Fucking mm -hmm. city orchestras, right? It's always rich people shit, right? You know, you know what you can do? They can't stop us from going and they can't stop us from farting. We're going to eat a bunch of beans and fart. Oh my god. Just to disrupt it. Just to disrupt the space. The threat of this alone. He um he also did um the, the threat of this alone scared the scared them senseless and brought them to the table for negotiation. He would do things yeah. like bus people. Everybody um like all the uh, all the black people get dressed up in your Sunday best, right? Um, this this uh, department store that's being discriminatory, what we're going to do is we're going to do, go down on Saturday, their busiest day, and we're going to go down there and not buy anything. We're just going to bus people in and we're just going to shop but never buy anything. And yeah. so like they can start removing us in mass. They can sort of like – he absolutely knew how to like – Alinsky's number one like sort of thing, right? The thing that like carries through the generations, make the system hold to its own rules. Absolutely. If you hold them to their own rules, you can grind it to a halt. And if this, this was the, yeah. yeah, if the system's <laughs> a fucking baby eating, black person killing, trans person genociding machine, right? Sure. Grinding it to a halt is better. Right, yeah. you may not be able to reform it yet, but stopping it is your first step. Right. And so, yeah, he had all sorts of things uh, like that. Um, prison strikes, prison writing, uh, writing campaigns. If you have five people in a prison, if the, if the prison is required by administrative rule set to respond to every formal letter that is given to uh, that is sent their way, right? Five mm -hmm. people who have the proper writing ability to write le write a proper letter, right, can write right. five letters each. Those five letters each are then disseminated out to the rest of uh, the people who are literate in the prison to copy them basically and then yeah. do minor changes and then now all of a sudden you have this force multiplier submit all of these letters mail them all mm -hmm. right and now you can grind the administrative portion of a prison to a halt right all of these sorts of methods of manipulating the system of engaging in activism that is by some definitions terroristic yeah. Right. That are a threat to those systems that force people to the negotiating table. Well, Americans are no, they're not really squeamish about terroristic actions. No. We're, we're kind of born from it, as a matter of fact. If you want to talk about like, oh, I do it all. Propaganda I, from I like all the, the Boston time. Massacre, right? I do it all the uh, time. I do it with this right prison, all the time. This prison <laughs> reference is probably pretty in, pertinent to Nebraska. We've got like the most overpopulated prisons per capita in the entire United States. It's a huge fucking issue. It's another thing when we're talking about um, uh, in reference to my state alone, but um, it doesn't look like they're getting the support for this new prison that they wanted mm. um, from their voter base because um, it looks like people in charge, I haven't read the paper on this, um, people in charge of the prison are refusing to do regular maintenance or maintenance that is upkeep so they can kind of force the state to build them a new prison. Um, this wasn't, uh, this isn't in reference to the one in downtown Omaha, which is the juvenile facility. That's got its own little can of worms. But this is for the, the actual state um, prison. I think it's in Tecumseh. Uh, currently but it looks like the people that were in charge of the prison aren't doing regular maintenance so prisoners are having to deal with issues oh, like yeah. black mold yep not just not just prisoners but then also prison guards right um and again 
prison guards have a union. They've got representation that can be utilized and mobilized to sit, to sit there and say, like, fucking, hey, fix this fucking shit. Otherwise, we're not working. And we're running low on workers to work in fucking prisons. Surprise, surprise. Here are, um, <clears throat> I'll, uh, if you'll indulge me. Here are the 12 rules. Gotcha. The, the, the book is, but here are the actual rules, right? Rule one, power is not only what you have, but what the enemy thinks you have. Right. Um, so power is derived from two main sources, money and people have nots because he divides it into the haves and the have nots. Right. Have nots must build power from blood and flesh. Those are the two things they have in plentiful supply. Government and corporations have a difficult time appealing to people and do so usually on economic arguments. Right. So rule two, never go outside the expertise of your people. It results in confusion, fear, and retreat. Feeling secure adds to the backbone of anyone. Organizations under attack wonder why radicals don't address the real issues. This is why. They avoid things with which they have no knowledge. Mm -hmm. Rule three, whenever possible, go outside the expertise of the enemy. Look for ways to increase insecurity, anxiety, and uncertainty. Happens all the time. Watch how many organizations under attack are blindsided by seemingly irrelevant arguments when they're forced to address it. Yeah. Four, make the enemy live up to its own book of rules. Yeah. Five, ridicule is man's most potent weapon. There is no defense. It's irrational. It's infuriating. <laughs> and, it, and it works as a key pressure point to force the enemy into concessions. Pretty yeah. crude, rude, and mean, huh? They want to create, uh, create anger and fear. Right? Rule six, a good tactic is one your people enjoy. They'll keep doing it without urging. They'll come back to do it more. They're doing their thing and will even suggest better ones. Radical activists in this sense are no different than any other human being. We all avoid unfun activities, but we revel in the ones that work and bring results. Rule seven, a tactic that drags on too long will become a drag. Don't become old news. Even radical activists get bored. Keep them excited and involved. Organizers come up with new tactics. Rule eight, keep the pressure on and never let it up. Keep trying new things to keep the opposition off balance. As the opposition masters one approach, hit them from the flank with another. Yeah. Rule nine, the threat is usually more terrifying than the thing itself. Imagination and ego can dream, dream up many more consequences than any, ever, uh, any <laughs> activist. Perception is reality. Large organizations always prepare worst case scenarios, something they may be furthest, uh, something that may be furthest from the activist's mind. The upshot is that the organization will expend enormous time and energy creating its own collective mind that, uh, the, uh, of the direst conclusions. The possibilities can easily po uh, poison the mind and results in demoralization. Rule 10, if you push a negative hard enough, it will push through and become a positive. Violence from the other side can win the public to your side because the public sympathizes with the underdog. Unions use this tactic. Uh, uh, demonstrations during the heyday of unions in the early to mid 20th century incurred management's wrath, often in the form of a re a retributive violence that brought the public to their side. Right. Rule 11, price of successful attack is, a, uh, attack is a constructive alternative. Never let the enemy score points because you're caught without a solution to a problem. Rule 12, pick the target, freeze it, personalize it, and polarize it. Cut off its support network. Isolate the target from sympathy. Go after people, not institutions. People hurt faster than institutions. This is cruel, but very effective. Direct, personalized criticism and ridicule works. Seems like that's something that the left isn't doing. Well, maybe Democrats in general, but... <clears throat> mm -hmm. But the right has like right mastered it, didn't they? Yeah, we're a little bit more focused on institutions, maybe because the conversation is institutionalized racism and stuff. But um, people will show you, like, this is the bad trans person, like uh, Leah Thompson or those kind of, like, individual issues. And they'll say, do you want this happening to your daughter? Like, mm -hmm. is this fair? Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, I mean, that's just that's just one section of the book, the actual rules. Mm -hmm. Give it a whole read. It is it is seriously enlightening as, as for any community organizer, activist, that sort of thing. It goes into detail, and it's not a big book. So, yeah, um, 
Yeah, because that's, I mean, arguably, that's most of the progressives, most of the leftists' issue with the Democrats is mm-hmm. like holy, holy inaction, mm-hmm. Batman. <clears throat> Let me translate kind of transfer this conversation into like some of the things that the Biden administration has done that I believe are good, but it does seem like activists are pushing for more. While I can't agree with the activists always pushing for more. When is, when do you kind of like believe the good thing would be like to celebrate in order to kind of revive faith and trust in the democratic party as a whole Uh, examples would probably be like the child tax credit. Right. Um, I, uh, this is, this is uh, okay. I think any, I think minor celebrations, Mm -hmm. I think the celebration never belongs to the party. I think the individuals should celebrate as they feel they need to celebrate. But Mm -hmm. I think all celebrations are premature because the fact of the matter is, is that the Supreme Court is a, a you know, is, has invalidated itself, is absolutely a captured entity. The mm-hmm. Congress is full of fucking corruption. The Just to pr- pause right there. Just to pause right mm-hmm. there, because I may have a disagreement with you on the Supreme Court. <clears throat> not that it's not a captured entity, but I would say that the captured entity of that Congress or that Supreme Court of that court is captured it is able to be worked around if Democrats choose to actually write legislation. And that's what I think hasn't been happened. We've been relying on a lot of interpretations to the constitution that may not be founded within the actual literal text for text or uh, what do they call them? Um, Conserve. I, I mean, like I, the Supreme Court struck down a portion of the Voting Rights Act for fuck's sake. Sure, like yeah, I. I, I eh. But again, it's because I would say, and and it would probably go to your second point of like corruption and uh, inaction of the Congress, that being the other branch, right? Um, but if you get an opportunity, where if Take you it. write row into legislation, yeah. Take it. would undermine what they're saying. Take right? it, but like again, take it. Yes, I, I'm a pragmatic anarchist. Take take your shot. True, but functionally speaking, mm-hmm. the problem is the system itself. Mm-hmm. I could I could understand and and kind of like get behind that uh, supporting issue. I guess I. I feel like when it's brought up, and this is probably my opinion, um, oh, uh, this is my opinion, I feel like when it's brought up, it puts into people into a dangerous and defeatist mindset that this isn't enough, and I worry about that. I Look, um, take every dub you can, mm-hmm. but it's like when people ask me like what my actual position is as an anarchist, you can't mm-hmm. get there from here. You have to yeah, change I, trains at multiple train stations to right. get to the position that I actually want to occupy. Now, can we argue for some harm mitigation? Sure. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but ultimately, any system that derives its authority uh, from uh, from the barrel of a gun mm-hmm. is an invalid authority as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. And functionally speaking there's a lot of problems here and it's not just the latest theocratic sort of takeover of roe v wade and anti-trans legislation sure if i want to point at like what happened to the black panthers and the fbi and co intel pro and -hmm. how there absolutely were democrats on team for that and how there absolutely were, you know, uh, supposedly liberal organizations that jumped right on the ball with that. Mm-hmm. That functionally speaking, there is a whole host of problems baked into this nation from its inception. Sure. Um, I don't see any Democrats addressing police. Mm-hmm. Not in well, any respective will, form. Yeah, this will be where I think you and I are going to differ, but I would say ought to be achievable in my state. Um, 
a state senator here is trying to pass a constitutional carry law. Okay. The two cool. largest police forces. Yeah, they're opposed. Uh, are very opposed to mm-hmm. this. Yep. I feel like there's some rural opportunity in the idea of back the blue where Democrats can make some gains. Again, this is kind of going back to where you and I are in agreement. Don't talk about the second amendment. Um, But you can make policing gains in this opportunity, which would be very helpful to the general public. Again, I, I think obviously I can't fully understand your, your uh, position on policing, but it is broadly prob- uh, broadly supported by that white moderate class, right? Uh, <clears throat> I guess the issue becomes, uh, well, one, probably what I want to ask you is probably, what do you think of that opportunity just fully as an anarchist activist? And what do you kind of think about the idea from a practical political decision? I think the second one will be the shorter one. Answer. Um, yeah. Um, look, do what you need to do. Right? Mm-hmm. That's that's functionally, as a pragmatist, I'll tell you, right. do what you need to do to get the job done. As an anarchist, I will tell you there is no support for the police period. None. Sure. They, they are a criminal organization that dates back to I, I, this whole lecture. It could take two and a half, an hour, two and a half hours, basically. But yeah. there is an unbroken, uncut thread from the original the corruption of, of metropolitan policing in mm-hmm. the form of the big stick in the north and the slave patrols in the south in this nation. Sure. They were used yeah. to union break and criminalize immigrants. And they were used to terrorize and enslave black people. That ha- that system has never been changed. It is it, the exact same system. It's never been reformed. And the slavery was not eliminated. It was codified and upheld twice at the Supreme Court level. The 13th Amendment doesn't eliminate slavery. It makes it legal. Yes. Right? To um, prisons. Yes. And yep. that has been upheld twice at the Supreme Court level for the time he is but a slave of the state was, the, I believe, sure. the wording of the decision on the first or second one. I don't remember. But either way, there is no participation with policing that an anarchist is okay with. They are a criminal, genocidal, terroristic organization that has been armed via the 1033 program with military-grade armaments. Yes. And as a result of this, we advocate for things like cahoots in Oregon or the Denver Star program. Denver Star the, uh, no, the Denver Star program um, had a 100% success rate in never having to call the police. Mm-hmm. They took the calls they took. And they got like 3% of the calls, the, 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 but they got the violent people, people with knives, people with guns, people with mental illness, people having breakdowns, people with uh, d- drug induced, um, and they never had to call the cops Yeah, and they never shot anybody. Mm-hmm. They never had to like kill anybody. They never had to beat anybody. You absolutely right. can replace the police as an entity yeah. in our society. They are unnecessary and they have ties to unbroken to slavery and union busting and immigrant oppression in this nation. So yeah. as an anarchist, there's no cooperation with the police that is acceptable. Uh, there's a lot there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is. Um, There's fucking hundreds of years of a lot there. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, I, and I understand how, like, that's this is unfortunately one of those positions that as anarchists, mm-hmm. we mostly occupy as a hard line in the sand that sure. we will not cross. That these people are not good people. All cops are bastards. And it is a participation in a system of oppression that is willful. Mm hmm. And so, like, yeah, we very much are hard line as generally, like, as the left in general, not just anarchists, as to the, the corrupt nature of policing, especially in America, and the prison industrial complex therein. Yeah. And so, like, yeah. It's, I would say that's my first reach out to say to rural 
con um, rural constitutionalists to sit there and say, is, yes, I agree that the Constitution does need to be changed. And I would reference the 13th Amendment, and I would reference talking about slavery being codified. And I do feel like you could get a vast majority of rural folks to agree with that very small, simple change with I, the Constitution. I I would, I like <laughs> the, 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 the stick that we reach across with on this mm -hmm. one usually, when people come in, well, don't, don't call the cops. And we tell them we don't like, here's the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. What do cops do? They respond and document at most because what, as any good gun owner knows, and here's your stick that you can reach across with. Here's your olive branch. As any good gun owner knows when seconds matter, cops are minutes and hours away. Right. They don't actually protect you. And again, that's been upheld at the Supreme Court no, numerous yeah. times. That's an advertising campaign from a, uh, from a California Sheriff's Department, protect and serve. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, yeah, when cops, at, when seconds matter, when somebody breaks into your fucking property, when somebody's mm -hmm. threatening your life, when somebody's trying to rape your daughter, cops aren't the ones who are going to protect you. And so functionally, what do they do? They cost your community money. And so here's your neoliberal compromise that leftists can get behind. Okay. You need to do away, just like Nevada just did, with the protections of qualified immunity. We can, Ooh, okay. okay, yeah, we'll have Okay, so Nevada didn't do away with like the criminal, the Nevada Supreme Court couldn't do away with the criminal protections of qualified immunity, but sure. they ruled that in lieu of any other, per, uh, any other method of pursuing <clears throat> justice is a nullification of individual rights. Therefore, police are, are civilly liable and qualified immunity does not apply. And so here's your solution. Individual liability insurance. So, well, if you want to explain. Well, that, if, if, if police like contractors, like mm -hmm. lawyers, like doctors, like nurses, like mm -hmm. every other one of your voting, con your constituents is required. Mm -hmm. All of these fucking farmers, they all have insurance, right? They're all required to have all of these things. If yep. you made individual liability insurance a thing for police as a requirement for certification, mm -hmm. As they transgressed, the insurance companies would very quickly jack up their rates and make them un, uh, uninsurable. And if they can't carry insurance, they can't maintain a certification. Of course. If you hinge it upon that, then you can let your whole marketplace of ideas <laughs> bullshit kick in. <laughs> and now you can actually start getting rid of some of They're these supposed the, 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 bad the, apples. Yeah. Yeah. So – <clears throat> the immediate problem that I see with this is I think this works counterintuitively, not <clears> – <throat> so the liability insurance. I think somebody – I'm glad that we got this because somebody was talking about um, – had, had brought this up. <clears throat> the insurance idea, or I've seen some of them talk about taking the money out of the police pension fund, right? I feel as though what ends up happening with this is I'm that zippy. less things become reported. Um, they're because are, they're they already know. not reported. Their mm -hmm. accountability is already in the fucking trash. Right. Right. Like that's I, oh, like, yeah, like I, I again, this is the argument from an anarchist possess, position that like all of these are compromises that are nowhere near a solution. Because functionally speaking, no amount of training is good. No amount of funding is mm -hmm. going to fix this problem because it's not a problem. It's a feature. It's like trying to like get rid of the four wheels of a car. Mm -hmm. They're there for a reason. They maintain the status quo of a classist racist system. Mm -hmm. That's their job. The Supreme Court has upheld in the TRO case where a woman was like, I don't beaten or murdered. I forget what happened That's to her. It, I thought it was her kids it's, were taken by the ex-husband. Yeah, like they, they have had, no duty to protect sued. you. 
Yeah, she had sued the actual thing for negligence. Yeah, she had a restraining order. It's not their job. Their job in that ruling was iterated as a uh, as a duty to the state, not the individual. Right. All right. They don't. That's their whole function. So any any of these is going to be a half assed compromise at best. Mm -hmm. And so, like, it, it's it's very much. A, a sort of distinction without a difference territory. Okay. Right? Like, it, do you want to, do you want a bandaid or do you want to fix? Because what we're talking about is band-aids. And yeah, I think what's politically achievable is band-aid. And I'm trying my best not to hide behind the idea of what is politically achievable. Well, I, I, that's uh, why I, I think, up. I think turning it over to that weird mentality of privatization, <clears throat> don't, don't try and take it out of the pensions. Don't try and take it out of the city fund. Don't try and take it out of the, just make them have individual responsibility, make them have private liability insurance on an individual basis. You can argue personal responsibility and you can argue a uh, private, a uh, privatized industry to the rescue. Hmm. Uh, I think I could probably back this up with the idea of uh, a federal certification program for uh, police in order to uh, actually just be police. I if you if you did that in combination with the private liability insurance, mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you really wanted to fucking like have a solution here, uh, like a four year degree would probably yeah. filter out most of this jackassery relevant to the field sort of situation. Yeah, um, I think Sweden does the same thing with yeah. their police officers. I don't know if it's four years. I think theirs is two years. But like, in, you know, in the words of George Carlin, who's got time for solutions? Yeah. Um, like, but like, yeah, it just, if you wanted to argue with the constituent, present a decent argument for the constituency, it's, Okay, private industry may be the solution to this, and individual responsibility is the backbone of American society. So I uh, I maintain that our police to uh, to have cert uh, to maintain certifications in our state should be required to have individual liability insurance, and lack of that insurance denies them certification, and will allow the private industry to come in and handle whether they are worth being cops. And we'll let the marketplace decide yeah. that. I wonder, and maybe we're just gauging our feelings here, but I feel like you'd probably have a harder time passing this as a Democrat or getting elected talking about this with, as a Democrat because you're talking about privatizing a police force, a public institution. No, I'm not talking about privatizing them. What I'm talking about is al allowing in, in, uh, interaction with the privatized insurance industry, which is something that all sorts of sectors do. Mm -hmm. Like I said, nurses, doctors, construction workers, IT people, fucking all sorts of people are required to have mm -hmm. personal liability insurance in our society. And I'm just talking about extending that to the police. That's it. Yeah. It's it's already a common practice in society. And a large number of your constituents are going to be like, I'm required to have insurance. Why aren't they? Hmm. I have it. I'm required to have it on my car. I'm required to have it for the workers on my farm. I'm required to have it for my job. I'm required to have it like, yeah, like it's, it's, it's it fucking, yeah. Um, I, I think it's an easier sell than you might think. And also Rev desperately wants to know. You're a you're a city boy, aren't you? Uh yeah. Yeah. I'm um born and raised in Omaha. Okay. So what's the smallest town that you've uh like oh Gothenburg, Nebraska. Okay. That you've like lived in? Yeah. Okay. How uh, that's about eight hundred people in the early nineties. Okay. I think people talking about rural policing, I think that commonality that they're com getting confused is is again this rural urban divide yeah. most police most rural folk like their police quote unquote because their police are elective sheriffs mm -hmm. so that would be the distinction with i think a, a uh, fair they, difference they us, in between they usually them. grow up with them yeah so that would be why when people say most rural people hate cops, no, that's not necessarily true. They may hate cops in reference to the city, but they don't hate what the form their form of law enforcement is, which is their sheriff. I, uh, you don't elect. Oh, we, nobody elects the deputies. They elect the sheriff. Rev. No, yeah. one, no one elects deputies. 
Deputies are yeah. deputies are deputized by the sheriff. That's literally how the system works. Uh, everywhere. Right. Yeah. Like there's there's not a single person who is under that misconception. Right. Which is also why you typically and again, I don't know if there's a staff for this, but typically you see people more active or uh, happy with their sheriffs in the city than they are their police members because the mayor, you're disconnected. Because yeah, police, your mayor, police, yeah, police chief is police uh, chief. appointed, right. sheriff is elected sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, so like, that would be, I saw a couple different people bring that up. Yeah, but again, this is an elected position, so you have greater say this is a rural versus urban divide obviously law enforcement uh, rural people are going to pick and choose just like their hate for the atf um mm -hmm. is, is very very large yeah so i can see that point i view it as mute because of those differences maybe i might be wrong but i feel pretty solid in that i you idea. know functionally speaking i mm -hmm. no progress in this country can be truly made until the police are dealt with um, I, hmm. yeah, it's definitely a different idea than what I was thinking was being brought up is between like the money taken out of their, of their pensions. Yeah. I feel like that's a great talking point. I feel like it falls flat because it's brought up in the idea of like, well, then they're just not going to report. And obviously we want cameras are going to help us a lot. And I think federally subsidizing cameras is going to be a, a big, play. they just don't turn them on. Well, it happens all the time. I think that there's. Yeah, again, there's going to be ways to get around that, but and and again, even even if mm -hmm. even if they turn them on, and even if they get caught lynching a black dude, right? True. What happens in the justice system? They get. Oh uh, yeah, you you have to deal with the favorability issue, and then you have to deal with the idea of like where are we going to house them since they were former police? And I do not like the idea of making separate housing for police. See officers, again, too. this is all and. Is is any is outside of the police? Are mm -hmm. any of the topics, the issues at hand that we need to change in society? Right? Are any of them going to require protesting? Probably, right? Oh, well, I mean, I would say, and again, this is just because I'm more active in the political system, but I would say they're going to get achieved with voting. Um. So I try and encourage people. How, to vote. Uh, How'd that work out for, say, civil rights or how'd that work out for women's suffrage or how'd that work out for the labor movement? But those are all things – well, obviously the labor movement's a little bit different. But those are all things that were achieved with, again, voting. Uh -huh. What came prior to the voting? Well, if you want to do a chicken and the egg scenario, I'm not prepared to have that conversation nor b debate. But I would say that culture, that politics – Ought is best when it's downstream from culture as opposed to politics being upstream from culture. So I would undoubtedly say that that sort of activism is important. But again, if you want to bring up civil rights, I would also argue the issue of civil rights isn't being fixed in this country because people aren't voting, because they are protesting. I don't care about the small riots that existed, but they are protesting, but they're not voting. Because, again, they're not voting in their local elections. Because they've been disenfranchised. Um, I don't... I, I don't know. I can say for Nebraska, I can only speak for where I am, it is incredibly easy to vote. Um, it's in, like you can look up my voter registration right now on Nebraska. You can look up... You can still vote by mail. That hasn't been eliminated. Um, and, again, I can only speak about what I know, I can't speak to the disenfranchisement, disenfranchisement of like people that live in the city of Baltimore, right? Which has a huge police corruption issue. Absolutely huge. Um, but as far as Nebraska goes, we're not voting in local elections. and You're having a hard time with that. I can't imagine why. <laughs> well, well, it's almost like I mean, every politician like, that gets elected is in there inevitably a kitty diddler or on the take. I don't know how fair that is. I mean, I would how say many, that's probably how many more poor, like, how many poor people are in Congress again? Well, again, this would be something where I would disagree with you on like what a politician ought to do. What's uh, what what's what's the do. what's the health care um, for politicians look like even at the state level? 
Yeah, well, you can look at this and you can use situations like the VA and use those as political stepping stones for people to understand how good of a system it is to get people health care in general by using what we do for the veterans. Um, I can speak firsthand to that, but there's always room for improvement. Like, it, it, this, we are a nation founded on corruption. Like we we're a nation. But in your regard, in your regard. No, there's, no. There's in some... in anybody who's not straight white landowning males' regard, literally the majority of people here are <sighs> are are aware of how fucked up this country is, and so like even when. Even when things are seemingly, oh, hey, we, uh, you know, I, look, I hung out with a lot of black people. Even fucking Obama got elected and they're like, oh, first black president. And they're like, yeah, what's he done for me? Mm -hmm. Right? He's his fucking Obama's a white man, man. He went to Harvard. <laughs> fucking like that dude. That, uh, that dude was with this fucking statement. That dude was on team, man. He was on yeah. team. Mm -hmm. fucking he he absolutely handed the insurance companies a win he fucking sure. bombed brown people on the other side of the globe right like this is like what wh what has this system done right it, it repeatedly oppresses people it repeatedly genocides people it locks up black um, black men to the tune of the highest fucking incarceration rate in the world per capita or raw number it genocides indigenous people it constantly tells women that they're property and they should be in the kitchen and anytime anybody comes along with a progressive idea, they get fucking assassinated by police. The first thing that a protester encounters is a riot cop who's going to fucking shotgun blast them in the face. Like this, this is a fucked up country full of fucked up people and fucked up ideas. And when you, you absolutely are like, Hey, why aren't people engaging? Oh, I don't know why. I can't imagine why fucking protesters in Atlanta are trying to prevent one of the largest cop training facilities in the fucking country. And a dude who's sitting there cross-legged with his hands up got shot how many times? Right? I'm not oh yeah. Cop city fucking the, the, the fucking, um, the, the autopsy finally came out for that fucking kid. They thought, oh, he had a gun. He fucking, all this and that and the other thing. Dude, they're cutting down like, in, like uh, forestry, like actual green area to pr build this giant training facility for fucking cops because they need more training, right? That's the solution. They need more training. And so protesters, environmentalists are like, dude, fuck this fu uh, cop city. Let's keep the trees here instead. And the pro one of the protesters who's a stupid hippie kid right he's just a fucking dumb kid trying to like save the trees and not have a cop food they shot him in the fucking face with his hands up sitting there cross-legged in a tent like like mm -hmm. at the end of the day like yeah there's there's a reason there's a lack of engagement in this uh, in this country Right? Like there's a reason that people aren't voting. There's a reason young people feel disenfranchised. Dude, the environment is burning to the ground around them. And old people are sitting there going, doesn't affect me. Yeah. Right? Like the world is literally on fire. There's forever poisons in all of the rain. Just, just the rain is poison now. The rain. <laughs> On a global scale, there's poison in just the rain. Right? Like, how, how do you think you're going to get those voters? You need a candidate to actually... Young people aren't voting. I don't know why. I can't imagine why. Like, nobody is speaking to their issues. Nobody is saying... that is. Nobody... Yeah, Bernie is. No, well, no. I mean, from the aspect of young people not voting, I think twenty twenty. Oh, no, they're the still, largest... still, yeah, their largest turnout was still a okay. fucking modicum of them. Okay, well, but that's been a constant problem through generations. This isn't just a new thing. That's but because I would say it's that's worth... because intentionally old people disenfranchise young people. Well, I think it's probably because, I mean, young people just don't give a shit about voting. They oh no 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 no! They care. They care. 
But the fact of the matter is, is that one, they're busy. Oh, they're kept nice and busy from day one. We keep them nice and busy. We keep them on that fucking hamster wheel. And two, we intentionally disenfranchise them. That's absolutely a thing anybody over a certain age does, right? Like that's, they're, they're seen, oh, you don't know anything. Well, Are you very politically active in your teens and early 20s? I, I see exceedingly. I was an Occupy organizer. Okay. Right. Like I'm, I, I've always been because again, right. I was a Vermonter by birth. I'm an <laughs> anarchist. I was, I had the right. confluence of events. I was in right. a system that showed me you can interact with it. That, uh, that I was surrounded by people that community organized. I was exposed right. to culture such as punk rock and raving that taught me peace, love, unity, respect. My home state is next to live free or die. Is Everybody knows New Hampshire, live free or die. Nobody knows Vermont. Freedom and unity is Vermont's slogan. Right. Together we do this. Together we're free. Then I'm exposed to punk rock. I'm exposed to the Internet. I am not an exemplar. I'm not the one you point to for youth. Right. I'm I had I had the just the lightning strike of events that happened in my life. But I mean, that's good to hear. But obviously, I feel like, like. like, I feel like I do feel maybe I'm just more optimistic, but I do feel hopeful in a more politically active generation that does seem to be coming up. Oh, and the fact that millennials are coming into being in charge. I'm uh, counting on Gen Alpha to burn it to the ground. Which one is that? Is that they're the fucking Gen kids 8? now? Oh, OK. Yeah. Fucking Zoomers are going all. You don't want to count on the Zoomers. Don't count on the Zoomers. Don't count on the Zoomers. You don't want to know how they actually feel. Is that Gen Z? Yes. Or is it, okay. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to know how they actually feel. They're, uh, yeah, they're very much Doomer slash uh, very angry. And they're not so much into to voting as right. into uh, probably like you were, um, I can't, <laughs> I can't talk about it on air. Okay, seems um, fair. Yeah. But this this is what I would say for the political opportunity that does lay before Democrats is millennials are coming into their stride. Uh, we still we're still behind Gen X, which is typically don't they have more money than millennials. Yeah, Gen but X doesn't also, count. They're fucking yeah. they're a drop in the bucket. Yeah. But we are the larger generation between us and Gen X. However, the the great part that Democrats could seize opportunities is boomers are retiring. They're going to want to see things like Social Security stick around. They're going to want to see things that are achievable. Yeah, except for boomers are brainwashed. They are. Well, they're brainwashed. They're, you're, not, they're, you're not going to teach that old dog that many new tricks. I think you will be able to teach that old dog to vote against Republican interest of, oh, yeah, we're going to take away your Medicare. We're going to take away your Social Security. I feel like that's probably the greatest part that you could probably have for boomers right now. I that's think, why I say I, I see an opportunity. In I that. think they're so capitalism poisoned that a, 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 your average stock Republican could probably argue for privatization of Social Security. Well, they they always have. Well, uh, but whether or not the, they've privatized the everything else under their uh, under their uh, purview. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what haven't the fucking Republicans managed to convince boomers to privatize? I do, and again, this is probably just based off of things that we see generationally since. Um, Medicare or Medicaid, not since the 70s, so it's hard for generationally for that one. But Social Security has been something that you actively see the older generation kind of flip into, oh, no, I'm getting my fucking Social Security. And that's no then way. then what you've given, what you've created is a single issue voter and Republicans right. know how to work with them. Democrats don't. Republicans will just back off the issue. They'll be like, we'll leave them their fucking Social Security and we'll take literally everything else. Or they'll just offer to say, like, no, you're going to keep it and we're going to phase it out yeah. generationally. Do yeah. Boomers get to keep your Social Security. Millennials get fucked. Yeah. Baby. Big deal. Like, this is, again, see, this is, again, why Democrats are failing over and over. This is why Bernie was so successful with millennials. 
was because somebody finally came along and said the shit that we all know. You're getting fucked left, right, and center. <laughs> right? Like, you're absolutely getting raw-dogged here with not even a modicum of fucking lube. And fuck these rich bastards. Fuck these powerful politicians in, uh, in Washington. Fuck the corporations. And fuck anybody who says otherwise, right? Bernie comes along and actually fucking drops some knowledge on people and says, like, hey, the truth of the matter is, is it's class warfare and always has been. And he's got the street cred to say it. There's pictures of him getting fucking dragged off by cops protesting. There's pictures of him weeding the first LGBT pride, uh, the first pride parade in Burlington, right? There's mm-hmm. pictures of him fucking like he's got the street cred to say this shit. And he comes along and finally says it. And guess who sees some support? And guess what party fucks him out of his fucking <laughs> his position? Democrats. Like, the Democrats are, like, they don't have a good reputation with the millennials. We vote for Democrats because the alternative is fucking Donald Trump. Sure. That's not the voting record you want. It's, it's it, like, like we said, somebody cue the Biden shit. Somebody cue the Biden meme. It'll be on stream in a second, right? Okay. Um, it'll pop up on the screen. Um, like the truth of the matter is, is the only reason we voted for Biden. There it is. You hate Biden because he's a Democrat. I hate Biden because he's a capitalist. We are not the same, <laughs> right? Like, the isn't old- his latest book? It's okay to say capitalism is broken. I don't know, but okay. like he's still fucking like absolutely a crony for all that bullshit, right? He's not gonna come out and be like dismantle it. Right. No, I'm talking about Bernie. Oh yeah, like, probably. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. It, it's like that's we don't we don't vote Democrat because we like Democrats. We vote sure. Democrat because we're terrified of the opposition. Yeah. And that's not a good position to hold. Like that's that's you're voting out of you're voting for me because the other guy might stab you in the face. Yeah, you'd rather vote for somebody. You'd rather have your constituents obviously vote for somebody than against somebody. Yeah. Right? Course. Like we yeah, yeah. and it, it okay, it's apparently it's okay to be mad about capitalism. Is the, oh, okay. is the Thank you. Um yeah, yeah. like that's and so like you want to get a fucking democrat to get support. Get a democrat who actually says some shit. Right. Like that's who you like all of the compromises we talked about is like trying to convince like boomer age fucking rural and like boomer age stockholders and urbanites and sort of that that sort of thing. Like you want to talk about millennials and zoomers, get somebody who actually is real. Right. Like fucking Cortez is out there. She's like they try and hit her left right of like all the time with like all this crazy shit. And she's like, dude, I was a bartender. Yeah. Like she's seen some shit. Like she's done some shit and she's like, Yeah, this stuff is fucked up. Like one of my biggest gripes with my current congressman in C D District Two, he's uh Don Bacon, he's like uh he was a Air Force general for thirty years. Obviously he wasn't a general for thirty years, but he was in the Air Force, retired for thirty years of service. And I don't see him leading within his own party, but I do see Alexandria Ocasio Cortez leading in the Democratic Party. Like I don't know what the fuck has happened. How are you going to sit there and campaign off of your generalship, but you can't get your fucking own party to pull their heads out of their assets? I'll I'll tell you right now, millennials and especially Zoomers, we don't trust military people. Well, I think there's some there's some fair foundation. If you for that. if if you served and you're like fucking a grunt, look we'll absolutely be like we'll just litmus test you at that point we'll just be like are you sane right but beyond that anybody who like served who's like an officer or proud of their service and shit like that who's like i rose through the ranks we're like yeah fucking done man done like you fucking you like how many kids did you drone right like it's it's absolutely seen as like we most of us most of us under a certain age and of a certain bent especially you know yeah cupcake <laughs> bootlicker like it's we we I may disagree with you on this fact of like cuz I know I, like oh, well it's just um are you kidding me um like 
military industrial complex, prison industrial complex, right? Systems of racism and oppression. That's participation in. Now, we understand there's a poverty draft and we understand that there's like all sorts of reasons that somebody ends up in the military, right? Right. But rising through those ranks, taking pride of in uh, in it, profiting off of it, and then attempting to spin a political career off the back of it, right? Like that shows an acceptance and allowance. Like that's basically you supported war crimes. Yeah. I would say – where I'm going to disagree with you is probably based off of the millennial generation was also the generation that fought our longest war. Mm -hmm. Uh, So kind of had our largest service members there. And, Uh, and I, 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 I I point you to the most infamous uh, tweet ever sent out by the U S army. What did your service get, uh, give, uh, get you? And then everybody's talking about their disabilities or PTSD. Yeah. I'm, my wife My wife slept with 10 of my friends and now I'm afraid of fireworks. Yeah. Right? Like, yep. absolutely. Like, fuck them. It's a system of oppression. It's like the joke, you know, you're going to fuck around and find out why we don't have health care. Right? Like, we, we have funded a, an entity mm-hmm. that is – insane world conquering empire building entity and yeah. so like yeah you show me a fucking general who wants my vote i'll show you somebody who's not getting my vote simple yeah. as that it's as simple as that yeah like um, this is to, if you want to actually appeal to millennials and zoomers and that sort of thing you have to uh, outside of the like alienated dumb young male who can't get his dick wet um fuck it which they never put together it's because they're a toxic horrible human being all like they never put that together it's like oh yeah i can't get laid. jobs now man yeah i can't get laid it's all this feminism no dude you're a fucking raving lunatic yeah. <laughs> like nobody wants to fuck you um but like if you really want like the base of the millennials and the base of the zoomers dude you got a embrace environmentalism you have to embrace an element of anti-capitalism you have to embrace an element of anti-government anti-corporatocracy to understand that like look most of us understand we got fucked we got fucked and somebody who comes out flag waving that's like dude it's fucking the system votes that sort of thing we're like yeah i need to hear a lot more from you than that like, I need to hear a lot more from well, you. I could see that platitudes are starting to fall out of favor, obviously, for the Democratic side. That's kind of in part of, like, why I, like, am a Democrat. But um, I guess if we're going to talk about what I feel like Democrats don't do is cheerlead enough for the things that we are leading in. For example, leading in green energy, leading in dropping admissions and it feels like again this is probably the activist versus politician part where it's like it's not enough but we are leading the world but it's still not enough um we've got some of the most um, efficient power grids we've got some of the cheapest energy and it's still ran by natural gas well, but and and most of the green energy has been invaded by libertarian and energy companies like, yeah. dude, fucking Koch brothers are one of the largest, like, involved and en- like entities um, in solar panel uh, manufacturing in this country. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, it, it's and we're children. Millennials are children of the internet, right? Yeah. Like, we absolutely know how to fucking search engine some shit. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, it, at the end of the day, like, it's not enough. It's not enough. You're not going to get those engagements. You're voting. All we're doing is voting against the other guy. That's it. We're just voting against a fascist. And the truth of the matter is, is it's all degrees of separation at this point. Because any tacit, any support tacit even of this entity that is, such as Biden does, we, we easily trace back. We easily look at it and go, yeah, well, still. Right. He still supports a a, a fucked up healthcare system that is genocidal by definition. He still supports like, you know, he's not going to disagree. Doesn't this go back to what we're kind of talking about? Activists versus politically achievable. Um, 
Curio. Eh, uh, don't know. I'd have to take a look. Send me the link, Curio. I might be able to grab it for you. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, but like that, that line is shift, mm-hmm. like is moving between like millennials, what we as millennials would find acceptable and what the Zoomers find acceptable. That line has moved, my friend. Well, yeah, I would, I would, uh, I can't disagree with any of that. I don't think anybody would, but question is whether or not they come out to vote enough. You may, look, actually get them out to vote. Dude, Bernie got more people. Yeah. Like, dude, actually say some real shit for once. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and you can't just say it. You got to fucking have lived it because millennials and Zoomers know what lived experience looks like. There's dude, well, dude, at a class level too. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's, there's no fucking trust funding your way past this. Mm-hmm. Like people are going to be able to spot that shit. And well, I mean, and that kind of comes down to millennials entering the workforce at kind of like the 08 crash, right? That's a fair amount of millennials. Um, fucking dude. It's, it's just we have to see it. You have to have the receipts. You have to be able to like put it up and you have to be able to like because what's going to get your foot in the door with boomers isn't what's going to get your foot in the door with millennials and zoomers. Yeah, yeah. but I guess the question, the political question, again, I don't know, I can't speak the principal uh, question being, but the political question is um, – just try not to alienate as many millennials and gain more boomers for the time being, right? Again, youth typically doesn't vote as often as old people do. Because they got shit to do. Yeah. yeah. Fucking, uh, you're I, working at UPS on Super Tuesday. Fucking old yeah. Gertrude, she got nothing but time. Yep. Well, and that, I think that kind of goes to why Democrats lose in typically in state elections. At the very least, like in obviously purplish states. Um, that sorry that sounds a little too solid than it actually does in red states they they heavily lose in purple states it can't be a 50 50 looking at again urban rural divide yeah it's it's i mean at the end of the day like like i said like there you want to you want to hit that demo you got to actually say some real shit but you got to have lived it too and like that's why bernie hit that's why it worked is because yeah, having the certainly having the receipts, Bernie versus Biden. Um, like, there's no real. And we all there. like, dude, we're not. Nobody's forgotten. Nobody's forgotten how the Democrats fucked Bernie. There's there's a real feel in in society. Like every time someone real comes along and says some real shit, mm-hmm. the system shuts them down. Are you talking in reference to like the questions being linked uh, leaked to Hillary Clinton at the DNC debates or general lack of support across the board? Okay. The fact of the matter is anybody who was paying attention saw who the Democratic Party's favorite was in that. They were not agnostic. Sure. In action and in thought. And so, like, there's, there's no. Well, I don't. Th- this speaks to again. Uh, this is frustrating. This speaks again to the the idea of like party politics, right? I hated. I found it hilarious that the Republican Party, when they were trying to find somebody to run against Obama, had like 19 people up on stage. It looked like a complete clown show, and it allowed Trump to go in there and win. There has to be some party standards that need to be set because it was so ridiculous having, again, 24 people that were running in the primary uh, for uh, to go to go against Trump. That was just a, a very disunifying party issue that I think ends up really not allowing you to chew on the meat of the issues. Uh, I view that as a, a party foul. Um, how refer- how how relevant that's going to be to Biden or uh, excuse me, Joe, uh, fuck Bernie getting fucked over by the DNC? I don't know, but I do see that obviously as an issue. Yeah, I like that's there's 
again, past traumas that we're mm-hmm. not going to forget. Yeah. And so to overcome those, like, we need some real shit. We need somebody who's going to be like, look, mm-hmm. climate change is not only real, it's mm-hmm. a looming catastrophe that is already here and destroying lives. Somebody who's going to name check maybe the global south and how badly the Eurocentric world has fucked them over for centuries. Somebody who's going to talk about the fact that we have a just butt fuck ass backwards third world healthcare system that's genocide yeah. incarnate. That's going to say, not only should we not have insurance companies involved in healthcare, that it should com- be completely not for profit, and that there should be no private option. That that is fundamentally a class divide that allows for classism to give rise to betterment. So right? this is my my sorry to interrupt you, mm. but I think this might kind of spark a little bit more of something. I feel like this is my compromise that I have. Uh, Bernie had talked about systematically his achievable goal was to roll everybody into Medicare, Medicaid, into mm-hmm. the system by dropping the age periodically. And again, this goes to obviously Medicare for all nationally is popular depending on how it's worded, of course. But when we talk about what he kind of talked about at the start, local polling um, isn't really the same thing, right? There are going to be large differences. We can talk about the propaganda in between like, hey, these things aren't worded right. They're not messaged right. This, that, or the other thing. The compromise that I believe it would be achievable, which would speak to some right-wing nationalism, by the way, not that I'm aiming for that, but it will, is that you do it both ways that you raise the ladder so you can sit there and say, Hey, we're the party of family. If you want to have kids, we're going to cover those bills, Medicare, Medicaid. We're going to enroll your child from zero on up. Prenatal care is going to get covered. And then you go from the top or you go from the bottom up and then the top down. And eventually you're probably going to end. If this was how it would work, you're probably going to end up with the like, 26 to, I don't know, 35 age range. That's going to be your biggest push, your hardest kind of like to get that Medicare for all thing. But I think that allows the system to adjust to the idea of getting phased out. I think that really helps with the idea of rural America and the healthcare that isn't achievable there in, 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 in part in between, like you can gain their votes. Um, from a family aspect. I feel like that's probably the way that I would want to market it. I'm curious as to what you think, how legitimate that. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) I have no confidence in Americans whatsoever at this point. That's fair. Um, I, and I mean, you can see tech support in chat asking, why are we compromising with fundamentalist terrorists inside our political system? Mm-hmm. Right, like uh, that's what we've always done in the history of this country. Yeah, and well, the, you could argue that like that's probably why we should shouldn't yeah. exist. Well, I would, <laughs> I would argue that. Um, like, I definitely wouldn't say we shouldn't exist, but it does seem to work out for us as far as like, we us on the we deserve stage. to not exist. We do. We deserve. But isn't that humanity as a whole? Can you say that? Uh, no, we we are we are particular kind of? particularly fucked up. Mm. Like, there's a reason we have what we have, and we are who we are on a national, uh, like on a global scale. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, we are fucked in the head. Like the th- shit we allow as a populace to occur, and without a second thought, without rising up and burning shit is is absurd you see how france handles shit you see on oh, a regular basis movement how french f- f- way beyond that way beyond right. the, when the yellow vests even existed the first time they rolled out speed cameras back in the early 90s in france a hundred percent of the speed cameras were destroyed almost overnight huh. 
Interesting. I've never heard They of instinctually, that. before the internet, even knew how to organize and just they're like, oh, shit, time to grab a Molotov. Right? Like their firefighters lit themselves on fire and charged and punched cops in protests. Right? Like they absolutely understand where the line is. And when it gets crossed, fuck mm. you. I'll see you in the streets. Right? Mm. They, they had rolling barbecues using the rail system in the city, just grilling sausages and hot dogs while they destroyed shit. Right? Like, fuck your system. Fuck your country. We will make it uncomfortable for you everywhere. The, the, the unions in France started shutting down power to the politicians, the, like the parliament and the politicians' houses while stopping the billing cycles for communities, gardens, farms, residential centers, schools, that sort of thing. They just unte untethered them. Right. Right. The fucking docks start like the dock workers work in coordination with the fucking shipping union, with the builders union. Right. They have their shit together on a level that Americans just do not. But I think that's probably for a good reason. And I can't argue. I, I don't want to have the. What's the good reason? Of, so I would say that anytime you have incidents like those, Usually that it kind of becomes a issue of, uh, how do I want to put this? Trying to, trying to figure out maybe like a historical context example. So transferring from the sixties into the seventies in the United States, going into the eighties in the Reagan revolution, the idea of law and order being brought into this country and how Democrats and the left in general kind of died out in this era. It doesn't seem like the American populace on the whole is for a version of left wing extremism. Now I, I can see the institutional reasons for that it, between the FBI, the murder of Fred Hampton, those examples make sense to me. Do you know about the is, Do you know about the Taft Hartley Act? Uh, the Taft Hartley Act is that uh, the anti communist act? No, Taft Hartley is how we dismantled unions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was that eighty three? Oh 81? no, we're talking 43, 47, forty three, forty seven. I think. Well, we had pretty strong unions early sixties. I guess it depends. No, on not even, sure. not even close. It was 47 and, um, Taft Hartley basically uh, uh, like absolutely shut down everything. Um, okay. it wildcat strikes made illegal <laughs> solidarity okay. strikes made illegal uh, closed shops made illegal anti-communist elements union clause uh union security clauses added jurisdictional strikes made illegal fucking campaign expenditures made illegal adding federal uh, uh federal jurisdiction for collective bargaining agreements made possible mm -hmm. right taft hartley defanged collective bargaining in this country back in 47 Okay. But we did have a strong, at least, uh, truckers union. Now we can argue about No, no, they didn't. Ha they didn't. They didn't. Okay. Be because I if they had a strong union, mm -hmm. they'd be able to do something like what the um, airline, uh, contr uh, the, uh, air, uh, the air, air traffic, traffic controllers, controllers attempted. Right? Reagan. How'd that turn out? Well, I mean, you went against an immensely popular president, so yeah, it was kind of bound to happen. What like did the that. federal government do in reaction to them? Uh, well, they definitely eliminated their bargaining power. Okay, so welcome to what an actual union looks like in this country. And it was done, the Taft-Hartley Act was done, it was pushed through, it was even attempted to be vetoed, it was pushed through by financially controlled senators and congresspeople even in the 40s. 
lost. The business owners of this country decided after the actual uh, uh, National Labor uh, Relations Act in 35 codified what we had been doing from the 1880s to the 1920s as a labor movement. When it was codified in 35, they took uh, they took 12 years of that bullshit before the owners of this country stepped in and said, no more of this bullshit. It's all illegal. And ever since then, it has been a downward spiral for collective bargaining because the federal government absolutely is controlled by business interests and is owned just straight up. Okay, but the question then becomes, if there was such a want, drive, and need for this, why weren't they voted out once this law was passed, right? It seems like Americans, the white model Because it's we not – it doesn't matter what politician you put in that seat. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. You, you, are a, you are an upstanding uh, human being. I think you would probably do the right thing. How much could, uh, how much I, could I buy your vote for? What's your price? Billion dollars? What's as far it, as like, what, what's it take? Are you talking about campaign funding or me as an Any, individual? You as an individual. Uh, I'm probably more principled than I am funding. I don't really. Hundred million dollars? Driven. What's it take? I can't. I. I'm from the Marine Corps, man. I don't have a price for that. I you, truly believe. You'd in be this surprised. Country. Okay, so then uh, all I need to do is pr apply some negative pressure instead. Uh, I. It'd be pretty hard to negatively pressure me, at least as, on an individual level. Oh, that's interesting. So what about your uh, campaign opponent? Is he as principled as you? Absolutely not. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fund his campaign. Of course. To the tune of $100 million. Do you think right. you're going to be able to overcome that advertising? Absolutely not. Get fucked. It's controlled. Well, yeah. It's, it's, but bought, again, it's bought and paid for at every level. Uh, even if we agree on that, I don't know what in reference where we ought to go. And again, this is pro I don't know if this is activist versus politician again. But I have the game that I have to play to in this area. Um, this, this, is, this is my point is it's not going to get better. It's not. It's not. You're, you're facing a balkanization and a potential empirical collapse. That's what you're looking at. You were staring down the barrel of. The reality uh, of the situation is that we're at that or we're looking at a theocratic authoritarian takeover. Well, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I mean. I mean, we can look at this. I guess it would kind of depend on whether or not you would consider Donald Trump a theocratic person. I probably would consider Ron DeSantis, who would be the second one. Yeah, I think I could agree with that in the right wing of the United States. It's not a, It's not about the person. That. It's not sure. about the person. It's about the, the base of the support. It's about the policies that, that they enact or allow mm -hmm. to be enacted. Donald Trump is, of course, not a theocrat. He's a fuck. Uh, he's a grifter. Yeah. But that's who you put into that position. And that's exactly who they put in in the Reagan era. When the uh, Southern strategy and uh, the deal with the devil was enacted and made, right? right. Ronald Reagan was but, a fucking grifter. Yeah, but as – well, he certainly wasn't a very religious person. I mean you can look at his wife for that as well. She was very uh, – Oh, the throat spirit. goat? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, anyway, but the point that I'm trying – or the message that I'm trying to get at is more along the lines of like, th I agree with you, the problem of the right wing party. I disagree with you on the idea of like, um, the end all be all of like, uh, kind of what were you saying? The burning down of the nation along those sorts. But I think the problem is, is like, again, messaging from the left wing and how we reach that white moderate. Um, you don't MLK showed you this. He proved it. Like the civil, like the only way, the reason MLK was even a modicum of, had a modicum of success is because of Malcolm. Uh, Without Malcolm, Martin doesn't get the job done. Yeah, I think that's fair, especially, but it's from, again, the idea of peaceful protest versus radical activism, right? You, you, you know, kind of like, you know, like Martin didn't like what, what the peaceful protests looked like, right? Well, yeah, but this is what we're talking about, civil disobedience, um, and then 
the beating to gain that sympathy of the problem. Now, I think, again, we had another issue that we wouldn't, I don't think we would have got the Civil Rights Act passed in, um, I don't think Johnson could have got them passed could have got them passed without the death of jfk um i think that and then the death of the assassination of martin luther king jr i think those instances those what i would say political martyrs ended up getting us those civil rights acts which i would agree were not enough but they were achievable what was achievable at the time would you disagree with that idea i think without those riots none of uh none of the nation would have paid attention Mm-hmm. And I think that like it, you need only look at the most recent iteration of this, the Stonewall riots. The only reason gay people got any recognition and anything done in this country is because of a riot. I don't think that's true because oh, the things yes. that they were after that were achievable. I mean, certainly they didn't get any aid from Reagan during the AIDS crisis, but the things that were achievable ended up happening in the early two, uh, the mid two thousands. Like they it, didn't achieve. It's gay not, it's not the riot isn't mm-hmm. about the opposition. It's about the in group. All right. Help me parse through that a little bit. Revolutionary catharsis is a very okay. real psychology. Okay. For the group to organize and feel like they have shared um, capital, a shared investment. Sure. They have to engage in something. Okay. Voting isn't it. It never has been. You know better than anybody. Which which war did you fight in? I didn't fight in any war. I was stationed out. I was stationed okay. out in California. All right. I, then I was you at a least, diesel mechanic. You at least know people. You know, yeah. you know secondhand, right? Sure. Yeah. Forged in fire, a brotherhood, mm-hmm. right? You'd, di- you'd fight and die for them. Doesn't matter the cause, right? Right. It matters that you put skin in the game together. Oh, yeah, of course. This, I think this goes back to the idea that we agree upon that politics ought to be downstream from culture, correct? And, and how is culture formed? Shared experience. Yeah, of course. And what is a riot? The language of the unheard. So a shared experience of being unheard and oppressed by society creates a series of circumstances in which you rise up in a cathartic revolutionary exercise which fundamentally transforms culture and then has an impact upon politics. But you've got to deal with the main issue that it seems like capitalism seems to be so good at is kind of lulling people into being or worrying people into being like, hey, Ah. what if they come from me? Right. But that's the beauty of it. Marx Marx predicted this. And as an anarchist, not a fan of his solutions, but his analyses were not incorrect. We have entered late stage capitalism. Okay. And late stage capitalism is very different than early or mid-stage capitalism. I think that that would be fair. You can certainly look at the consolidation of farmland. Obviously, the big one around here in Nebraska is Bill Gates. Let's late try and late like stay stage away from, turns um, inwardly. Yeah. Well, the uh, talking about the idea, uh, I don't know if this is where you're going. This was where I was going. The idea of no longer being able to be a property owner and being a uh, almost like a serf in a lot of different ways where you work on the land. Um, is this kind of, this may be a small modicum of the direction that you're talking about. Well, I mean, I functionally would, as an anarchist would, you know, all property is theft sort of situation, but sure. um, yes, it is a form of neo feudalistic endeavor. Okay. And so the uprising against that is the causal. It is the catalyst for the change that you seek? Um, well, I can't say that I seek personally. Um, could say, and the ideal uh, certainly is something that I can agree with. Um, like, but I, I mean, I don't w- feel w- that w- it's Lada, achievable. Willada put it this way. The USA was founded by voting the English king away in a very orderly way, lined up and voted. Well... No. 
Ex- the revolution wasn't their first aim at the part. Obviously. No, when their, their revolution when, was to gain when, rep, was to gain representation for the taxing. When they were given no other order of redress, mm-hmm. when they could no longer petition the king, mm-hmm. when their petitions were uh, went unheard, mm-hmm. what were they left with? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the point of a revolutionary leftist is that functionally speaking, I hate to do this to you. Yeah, sure. But like, I'll live. Yeah, I'm sure you will. You're a tough guy. Right. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, and, not like and, that. I, no, 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 no. I, I don't I, have I, a problem with like yeah, disagreements. Yeah, like I, 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 trust me. I've, I've enjoyed. For trust me, I enjoyed this. Thank you. Um, how dare you, as a white man, tell a, a, tell a black person that like who who have been killed in untold amounts by the police system that mm-hmm. they need only vote harder that. You know, how dare you tell women who have been oppressed since the word go that they need Mm -hmm. only vote harder when the entirety of the system is orchestrated against them and designed to undermine their vote, designed to disenfranchise them, designed to alienate them? How dare? Right? Um, And if if what it takes is burning shit to the ground for a few years before people sit up and pay the fuck attention to what's going on, then that's the nature of it. And while some people can't see the connection between that event and the freedom that follows, it's pretty clear for any student of American history as to how it works. Mm -hmm. Well, a couple different things in reference to how dare I say, you know, in reference to how blacks ought to fix their situation, how white women ought to fix or women in general ought to fix their situation. One, I don't think that being a member of that group inherently means that you should, your word is all the end all be all point. I would probably point to is Tim Scott. I think he's a black uh, Republican out of fuck. Is it Louisiana? No, it's not Tim Scott. I'm sorry. There's a black Republican senator who is a South Carolina, South Carolina. Um, Obviously, I would say on the board, on the whole, by to by, there's no question about who suffers institutional racism more at that level. But my solutions, the solutions being offered are obviously going to be different in how we see those aims and which one addresses the actual issue more legitimately. So I, I caution that idea. I don't know if that's necessarily. None of them actually address it. Sure. I don't think that they would address it in a manner in which it would be befitting for you. However, not to sound like the liberal that I guess that I am, I'm doing the best within the system that I have before me right now or attempting to do the best in the system I have before me right now to address those issues right now. Um, but that's, it's, it's, it, this is, this is again, the letter from a Birmingham jail. The, sure. Uh, it's um, let me uh, uh, f- get to the line right after where we left off. <clears throat> who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom. Yeah. Who lives by a a, a mythical concept of time and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Yeah. I, I think that that's fair. I think that that's an assessment that, has to be drawn i just don't know if the idea of this revolution gets you the actions uh no matter how long you do it that you end up seeing in this nation at this current time um again i would probably use examples along the lines of the lack of legal process or change when donald trump was president during the blm riots right 
how the riots were painted, how Democrats on the whole, which again, to address your whole point, aren't going to offer real solutions to you anyways, how Democrats on the whole get swept in every state election because of these actions, because of the Fox News propaganda machine, and how things inevitably get worse. Oh, so you'd like to talk about manufactured consent, would you? Uh, I mean, you could obviously. because that's what you, that's what you're invoking is manufactured consent. Mm-hmm. And again, this is a part of the systemic racist paternalistic system. Yeah, of course. Right. I, and I don't disagree with those so, ideas. But at all. those yeah. that was a flash in the pan compared to what is actually necessary. Mm-hmm. Like the truth of the matter is that's why I say the 1880s to 1920s labor movements, which mm-hmm. That's 40 years worth of fire bombings and mine bombings and factory burnings and whippings of owners in the streets that took then 15 more years to get the, uh, the Labor Relations Act passed. Mm-hmm. And then it only held for 12 before it was dismantled by the owners of this country, right? The Civil Rights Act, while certain concessions were made, didn't do shit about systemic injustices and, in fact, codified many of them. Yeah. Right? The 13th Amendment abolishing slavery didn't abolish slavery. It codified slavery and helped create the world's largest prison industrial complex built upon the backs of black men. Mm-hmm. Right. So the voting isn't actually doing as much good as you may think. And the timeline for these actions that we're talking about involving direct action are designed to grind this machine to a halt because no action of this machine is better than po- even positive action of this machine. I don't know about that because it does seem like the positive action that you have gained has materially increased the lives of the people that do suffer under this very kind of system. Yeah, red, redlining was great. I think that we would wholly agree that women are certainly in a better position now than they were in the 1910s. I think we would wholly agree that black people en masse probably in a better position than they were in the 1980s uh, after redlining becomes illegal in the early 90s, right? I think that there are some ways in which material conditions can rise throughout of democratic process. It just depends on which party that you enable. The democratic process that you engage in, or at least, shall we say, the political base that you're going to take advantage of Mm-hmm. was created by radical action. So uh, just to – you agree with me on those previous statements. Women are by the by in a better position than they were – they are in a better position now than they were in the early 1900s, correct? In some ways. Okay. So they are be- in better positions. In some ways, I would argue worse. I don't know if it's a net positive, frankly. Right. Well, I don't know if we would either have the answer to that. I would probably say in a colloquial conversation you and I are having right now, they are in a better position. Otherwise, I think that you're not not you as an individual. But if you disagree with that statement, you probably just don't understand the actual horrors that people that women of that time were facing. Right. On mass, we can agree that. Blacks in America right now are in a better position, have more control over their destiny than they were when they were brought here as slaves. We agree with that statement. Correct? Yes, I will. Okay. I will concede that statement. Yes. Now we can't. I cannot disagree with the process and progress and the sacrifice that had to be done to get here. Nor can I disagree with the idea that. I, as somebody that doesn't suffer under those exact conditions in this modern day and age, should be able to sit there and say, you know what, you got what you got, be fucking happy with it. Again, this is I what I would say is the difference between an activist and a politician. I'm trying to get what I fucking can, and it's not going to be good enough. But I get what I can in an achievable manner, not to compare myself to Lincoln, but Lincoln 
was a white supremacist. Mm-hmm. No question about it. Historically, yeah, he didn't give a shit about black people. Well, I would disagree on that he, idea. He, as far as he like, absolutely was on the record that if he could uh, maintain the union. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, no, he, he, he didn't give two shits. And if he could save the union by freeing every slave, I would do that also. Yeah. I don't disagree like, with whatever. those quotes. I do disagree with the context, but I don't disagree with the overall summary of like he was a white supremacist. That's how Liberia got set up as a little colonial state. His solution was, I don't think blacks can't live here in the United States with us. We're going to send them here. That didn't happen, obviously. But by the by, on the whole, in mass, we have to agree on those statements. And I, as somebody that would want to help somebody become elected, have to work within this realm. And I think talking to activists, this is why I really appreciate this conversation with you, I don't know whether you consider yourself politically active or just an activist on mass. I appreciate and I must wholly, wholly try and feel as best I can um, to comprehend. I'll never truly understand the differences of people that have it, but I do my best to comprehend it and then move on from the part and do my best to politically activate but I'm never going to be able to do achievement what those activists want. And I'm never going to be able to comprehend what people suffer. So again, let me invoke, invoke MLK, right? The goal of direct action is to create a crisis to foster attention that demands a response. That's it. Can you repeat that one more time? The goal of direct action is to create such a crisis that fosters mm-hmm. such attention that as to demand a response. Absolutely. Okay. So that's yeah. what we do. The political changes that you're able to make mm-hmm. are results of the tensions that we as activists create. Yes, absolutely. However... What worries me, and I don't know if I've been doing a good job at representing this, what worries me is kind of twofold. When I make achievements, or when we make achievements politically, since we have a two-party system, whether or not we should have a two-party system, we can talk about, yeah. Um, I have a two-party system. Not only when I gain this ground in the small separation in between Democrats and Republicans that there is, when I gain this ground, not only do those laws end up being there, they become undermined. So the example I would use is the uh, Affordable Care Act, right? Republicans, when they took power, they couldn't repeal the law in mass, but they could take out certain sections of the law. They could get certain sections, uh, how... Uh, the Affordable Care Act got its funding, right? And in that eliminating, kind of like taking out the legs underneath a house or taking out the foundation, you tend to get worse and worse services than what would be intended if you had like a uh, a system where that law couldn't be fucked with, right? So what becomes upsetting for me, or what I have to balance, I shouldn't say upsetting, what I have to balance is um, satisfying those activists to the point where they're going to be as happy as they can. I don't know if I should talk about the activists first, but I should probably satisfy my opponents to the point where the bill will be brought forth and not be fucked with, removed or anything like that. But that's, so, that's, 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 see, this is, this is okay. So this is honestly, this is our critique of lib brain. Okay. Yeah. They're going to fuck with you no matter what. Um, they're fucking authoritarian fascists, man. That's what they're going to do. They're going to fuck with you. These people are we talking bo- about the voter base or are we talking about the individual politicians? All of them. Yes, the voter base. Like for okay. real. There is a serious contingent in this country that believes black people are legitimately less than. They believe that women belong in the kitchen as brood mares. They believe homosexuals should be executed for their sins. They believe well, these are rather this. extremist. No, positions. they aren't. How many Christians exist in this nation? Mm. A lot, huh? I don't know the accurate polling. It's less than what it was. Is however. it? Is it in the tens of millions? Ooh, the tens of millions of active Christians. I don't think so. Tens of millions. 
Like, there's a reason that 20 states worth of people are cheering on these fucking right, like, handmade tail fucking crazy right. ass legislation. We, yeah, sure. But when we look at that number of of those states, those are vastly smallly populated states, right? There's still millions of people. Yeah, I was I, I don't know if I'm trying there's, to get away. There's millions of people in this nation who legitimately view others as lesser than them, not yeah, equals. These are the people who you're not gonna you're not gonna appease them. There's no sure. appeasing them. This is this is no this is, no no no. I, so so trying to protect your bill so hold on. against so hold on, them I trying think, to dismantle it is sure. is foolhardy. They're going okay. to do that. Okay, so I see where I might have messed up. When I say appease them, you remember how we had started talking about how we agree that Republicans can be reached if the correct measures were met. Right. If the correct messaging was sent, that there is some line of agreements in between um, the hate for corporations where you could probably get some achievement um, legislatively against corporations. However, you find your strange bedfellows. Correct. OK. Yes. OK. So we did agree upon that. I guess the issue that I didn't point with, because I do agree wholeheartedly that one the Republican Party, as it stands today, is headed down, if not already in the grasp of theocracy. I do agree with that. However, the issue at hand is if I can reach them to a point where I can get this achieved, no matter how I do this, it does advance forward. Right? Maybe. You see, again, okay. this is political calculus territory. Yeah, this, right. Remember what exactly. I said about I will stand next to a communist in a uh, in a food serving line, but exactly. the instant this fucker tries to organize, I'm fucking right. kneecapping him. Yeah. Right. No, I and I and again I agree with that. I don't know if I want to try and I don't want to achieve certainly a compromise position. Although I think it would be fair to say what I just said was a compromise position. Um, they're, they're, but it's, they're Christo it's fascists. Yeah, they are. Well, oh, hold on. They're what fascists? Christo fascists. Oh, Chris. Okay. Yeah. As in Christian. Fascists, yes. Correct. Yeah, and okay, and so. somebody gave me, the I wanted num- to make sure somebody gave me numbers. Um, 63% of Americans identify as Christian and to- totaling 210 million people. Um, mm-hmm. And um, f- uh, f- what was it? Forty percent of Americans polled believe that the Earth may be five thousand years old or less. Forty-seven. Well, what? Forty percent. Forty percent. Yeah, of Americans polled. It, again, it, it, again, you can t- tap dance it as much as you want. You know sure. those Christians, all hundreds of millions of them. Of that percentage, most of them aren't on on board with car, uh, like radio carbon, uh, like radiological dating of uh, of yeah, elements, sure. right? Like the truth of the matter that, is, the majority well, of Americans. I feel Americans, like what we're dealing with again would be the large matter of fundamentalist. That would be the issue at hand, right? Because we oh, have a large. Oh, fundamentalists have absolutely captured governance. At the federal level on down. I have an entire essay and podcast I did on dominionistic uh, capture of governance in the military as well. Oh, the Pentagon has been absolutely captured by fundamentalist Christians. Oh, it's terrifying. Um, Let's see. Hang on. Swipe up. Swipe up. Yeah. Um, Notability. Let me grab. uh, I got nothing but time. Okay. So. Let's fucking let's do this, kids. Um, <clears throat> uh, did a boom, boom, boom. Do you know? Do you know about dominionism? Dominionism? No, I'm not. Oh familiar. yes. So the Christians really, really try and distance themselves from this, um, okay. because it's it's dude. This is this is a problem for them. Um, is this the con? Well, 
I don't think this is the same thing. Is this the concept of Armageddon and why they support the Jewish? Oh well, the, that's that's definitely a belief within it for sure. Oh, okay. but dominion, okay, yeah. dominionism but this is, is something a larger, more broad. Okay, yes, yeah, it's go a, ahead. It's a larger thing. So dominionism okay. is a large, a strange, and nebulous con, uh, topic, especially if you engage in conversation with somebody who counts themselves amongst the ranks of Christians. For some, it's a boogeyman, a conspiracy theory perpetrated upon their community, which of course furthers the uh, uh, serves the purpose of further adding to their false victimhood status. Um, okay. For those of us outside the cult, yes, I just call it Christianity a cult, it is in essence the distillation of a pre-existing set of beliefs and uh, philosophies already contained within the Bible itself. Dominion's name is derived from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31, in which God supposedly gives dominion over all creation to humans. It's a small, ah. yet, small yet incredibly influential movement which springs forth from the theology of uh, known as Christian Reconstructionism in which religious leaders actively seek to politicize faith itself. Sorry, your nose. It's a part of a series I did on uh, uh, called uh, uh, um, uh, a way, uh, way to Piss Off Jesus, and it's about capitalism, and then oh, okay. uh, dominionism, and then the, um, uh, the uh, Southern strategy or the deal with the devil, right? It's a three-part sure, series yeah. I did. Um, finding its roots in the ever-so-problematic dogma of Calvinism, dominionism teaches the American Christians that they have a sacred mandate to create a Christian state in America for the kingdom of God is to build, be built in the here and now. Mm -hmm. Under the system, the sin of America, which of course as they see it stems from secular society, would be absolved and we could be redeemed. This means a legal system governed by the Ten Commandments, creationism, and other nonsense Christian values would form the basis of our educational system. The media would become a direct propaganda arm of the church in order to further spread the indoctrinating messages. Labor, uni uh, labor union, civil rights laws, and public schools would be abolished. Women would be removed from the workplace. And all those not Christian enough would be denied citizenship at the very least and quite possibly executed. This The only mm -hmm. village minute voices are, are true Christians. So there, there are multiple texts in which both mirror this rhetoric and further the cause. The most valuable book in which one can begin to understand the odious sets of philosophies is the Institutes of Biblical Law written by a man by the name of Rusius John Rushduni or RJ for short. Uh, uh, Rushduni was a Calvinist philosopher historian and author who even according to his wikipedia kit page is the credited father of christian reconstructionism and had an incredible influence on the american homeschool movement you know there's uh at least one million students uh that are being uh homeschooled by evangelicals and it may be as high as number uh, as two million in this country yeah we've had a huge rise with this as far as homeschooling goes covid did not help us at all yeah and there's a literal neo-nazi homeschooling group to the tune of thousands um uh, based out of i believe michigan and they're not going to shut it down he was a truly terrible person a man who believed that the old testament law should be applied to modern society in which the death penalty should be used for homosexuality adultery lying about one's virginity witchcraft adultery apostasy mm -hmm. bearing false witness the list goes on and on by the way he was a racist right. he didn't believe in racial intermarriage, opposed integration, referred to the U.S. slavery as benevolent, saying that some people are by nature slaves. He also denied there were six million Jews exterminated in the Holocaust, because of course he did. Um, it, it, it was this man who informed and transformed the modern American evangelical and fundamentalist movements with his writings. Though admittedly, not directly. His words were, as one might expect, not exactly palatable for most people. So, through his disciples, such as Francis Schaeffer, and you've probably heard this name before, Pat Robertson. That was the one that I remember as far as the deal with the devil with Reagan. Yeah. His, his ideology. So, remember... He, his ideology was given a more publicly relatable veneer, allowing for it to readily invade and infect, infect evangelical and fundamentalist churches. Okay, so this guy, mm -hmm. Robertson, is literally a, an avowed student of Rush Dooney and prop, uh, propagandizes American fundamentalists and is a fundamental yeah. component of the Southern strategy with Reagan, right? So we can draw yeah. an un uh, unfettered line from a guy who wants to set up a Christian dominion here in this country to modern Republican media and propaganda elements. I'll keep going. Um, so now with his set of truly horrific ideas firmly implanted amongst the minds of evangelicals in America, you can begin to realize the effects of its encroachment upon America with its many tenants enacted directly through the Office of Faith-Based and Community Initiatives, which funnels billions of taxpayers' money directly to groups such as National Right to Life and Pat Robertson's Operation Blessing, as well as near countless Christian organizations and so-called charities. Mm -hmm. So let's just skip ahead because I at this point I discuss Umberto Eco's uh, 14, uh, 14 characteristics of uh, eternal fascism. Yep. 
Um, so we just, you know, pull that out. Um, dominionistic ideology has steadily been spread throughout much of the American religious right and the evangelical movement, and as a result, there are some rather wealthy right-wing sponsors of the cause. Though these people do not speak in public about the, in, in the inflammatory manner of rush duty, but choose in rather terms and phrases that are comforting to most Americans, but in a process that's described as logicide, the killing of words. With these words and phrases no longer meaning what they meant in the past, the old definition supplanted by a new, more insidious one, easily ex accessed examples of such as life rather than having its traditional meaning, takes on the religious context of life in Christ, signaling belief. Wisdom takes on the character of commitment and obedience to the system. Liberty, mm -hmm. no longer having to do with true freedom, but the liberty found when one accepts Jesus and one is liberated from the sinful, sinful world. As this movement has gained traction and spread over the years, there have been increasingly alarming examples of followers having access to incredible seats of power. Antonin Scalia! The former Supreme Court justice was well-schooled hey. in this particular ideology. The mercenary overlord that is Eric Prince and his Secretary of Education sister, both Dominionists. That's, uh, he was the merce, uh, fuck, what was it? Blackwater. Blackwater, yeah. Uh, the authors of one of the most commonly used American history textbooks in Christian schools and homeschools, Mark Belize and Ste uh, Stephen McDowell, clearly espoused the rhetoric of the movement. In their book, America's Provincial, uh, Providential History, they state unequivocally that liberty is, quote, fealty to the spirit of the Lord, and that the work of liberty is an ongoing process to free society from secular humanism, eradicate a different moral codes, and believes to introduce a single unquestioned Christian orientation to the land. In other words, the most common Christian American history textbook teaches liberty means tyranny. Then there's the Global Recordings Network, a so-called missionary group who strives to bring the name of Jesus to every tribe and tongue and nation, teaches the liberty is where the spirit of the Lord is, and if there's not enough liberty in the land, then there's not enough spirit of the Lord. Christian Embassy is a group that has managed to, to a significant degree, infiltrate the armed services by aligning themselves with dozens of generals. In fact, 2004, they filmed a propaganda video, including several high-ranking individuals from the U.S. Armed Services, including Major General Jack Cotton Jr., who was featured in the video stating that, quote, his being an advisor to the Joint Chiefs is a wonderful opportunity to evangelize to men and women setting defense policy, and that, quote, his first priority is his faith. This particular group is known to host weekly Bible sessions with senior officers and at one time counted some 40 generals amongst their ranks. They even hold weekly prayer breakfasts in the Pentagon Executive Dining Room. Christian Embassy is affiliated with CRU, C-R-U, which prior to the early 2010s was actually named Campus Crusade for Christ a fellow fundamentalist organization which focused on recruiting young people into their cause. But due to the optics of growing awareness uh, uh, surrounding Islam and uh, interactions therein, they decided to rebrand in 2011. Along the same lines as Crew, Battle Cry Ministries is a self-described evangelical movement that uses elaborate concerts and military imagery, including actual ranks of serving Navy SEALs, commonly being in attendance at their events to emphasize the message. These are not small events either, as they've been known to draw up to 25,000 attendees at a time, mostly impressionable young people. During these propaganda events, they use decidedly apocalyptic imagery and lyrics in multimedia displays in order to further their goals. Run by a man by the name of Ron, uh, Ron Luce, who's gone on record stating he believes that, quote, this is war and Jesus invites us to get into the action, telling us that the violent, the forceful ones, will lay hold to the kingdom. Their events feature bands with obviously violent, uh, violence-inspiring inspir lyrical content, such as Delirious, who has a song that they played for one gathered crowd that went as so, quote, We're an army of God, and we're ready to die. Let's paint this big old town red. We see nothing but the blood of Jesus. We are warriors. This, these lyrics were projected onto an enormous screen so that the 17,000 people present could sing along, and sing along they did in unison. The now retired General, American General William Boykin, who counts himself amongst the ranks of these dominionist aligned evangelicals, stated after heading up missions that sent troops to fight a Somali warlord, quote, I knew my God was bigger than his. I knew my God was a real God and his God was an idol. 
-hmm. It's these sorts of apocalyptic envisions, uh, visions and sanctified acts of violence that fuel the action of uh, religious genocide throughout the ages. It enabled the Puritans to slaughter Native Americans. It underpinned the European Crusades. It aided the Nazis, killed tens of thousands of Ukrainians, and helped clandestine Argentine prisons. There are so many examples of the viral spread of this new Christian restruction, uh, re- reconstructionism and dominionism infecting every, nearly every aspect of our American society at this point, from the pushback on LGBT rights to the nonstop fight over Roe v. Wade. I wrote this be- while Roe v. Wade was still a thing, by the way, um, yeah. to the constant argument that America is a Christian nation when, in fact, it was purposefully and plainly founded as a secular nation. There are, sure. depending on whose count you go by, roughly 65 million evangelicals in this nation and this is according to the religious landscape study they are on average less educated primarily white over half residing in southern states alone and overwhelmingly vote republican all right so amidst all of this Mm -hmm. in the people and groups that belong to this umbrella classification have also in direct contradiction to jesus's teachings i might point out sanctified the remorseless hyper-capitalism that is ever pervasive now. Prosperity gospel, new Calvinism has been embraced and is embraced by corporate giants. For example, take Tyson Foods, whose uh, record on human rights, animal rights, and general behavior as an organization are, shall we say, despicable. Uh, Tyson Foods... In- their union. Tyson, Tyson Foods employs nearly 130 chaplains Nearly all fundamentalist evangelical spread throughout their plants all over the country. The same goes for Purdue, Walmart, Sam's Club, and a whole bunch of other corporate giants we don't have time to get into. The ideology managed to seize control of the Republican Party. They embraced the rank capitalism, and now they seek to dominate the rest that remains. A group of followers that are shut away from any information that may challenge their indoctrination, entombed within systems of prejudice, hatred, and fear— And due to difficulty obtaining truly accurate numbers, the best we can estimate is there's somewhere between one and two million homeschooled children being spoon-fed these ideas that will never challenge their world, never conflict with any of the biblical nonsense that they're being brainwashed uh, brainwashed with, no evolution, no science really at all, creationism and fear of anyone who doesn't think and act exactly the same as them, schooled in the ways of seeing us Uh, the rest of us as agents of Satan who are their sworn enemies. Look no further than Washington State Representative Matt Shea, who authored a manifesto entitled Biblical Basis for War, in which he set forth four pages of the how and why modern Christian Americans should wage a holy war against their fellow citizens who rule without God. For all those who do not agree to the terms of surrender, which were stop all abortions, same-sex marriage, occultism, communism, and swear obedience to biblical law, the punishment would be summary execution. It outlines the organizational structure of the war and units should take and the biblical basis for some of the ideas, including assassinations, looting of goods, and looting of goods from the non-believers. This is where we are. We're fighting a war we didn't even know we uh, we were participating in because the majority of us were deemed an enemy of God's supposedly newly chosen people. The sad truth of the matter is a large percentage of those who are influenced by these philosophies don't even realize to what degree they've been affected, and in the cases of truly mainstream, non-dominionist influence faiths and even more progressive denominations, their silence and lack of action upon their religious brethren, who have lost the plot entirely, does uh, does far more harm than anything else. That's where we are. We're looking at about 65 million people that we're, we're trying to contend with here that literally believe and have been influenced and positioned as Republican capitalist voters that mm-hmm. the, the best course of action is to probably put women in the kitchen as broodmares and to summarily execute anybody who doesn't believe what they believe. So you can see why we on the left are a little hesitant little hesitant of i'm sorry dealing with these people in general sure they terrify us oh okay yeah i'm sorry i was talking about the idea of like legislative compromise and you're talking about the idea of like well why the fuck would i compromise with these people when they have fundamental ideology that is not going to change nor draw to compromise yeah i 
do appreciate the history lesson and the writing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've studied these people. I've put the numbers together. There's a lot more of them than the, 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 like the political sphere of like yeah, sure. that the, the they think. They, like they're they're actually numbering in the tens of millions, and they 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 want us dead, man. Not just me, you. You're you're oh, you're also on the execution list. Like, well, it. I mean, I. It wouldn't matter to me if I was on the list or not. The fact that you are on the the list is something that's concerning to me, and I like, can't say. Whether this, that means anything to you or not, well, yeah. So, but like, but, but again, like you know enough about the Southern strategy to know that okay, so sixty-five million people, right? Yeah, are already problematic. Let's just let's just call it that problematic. Right. Well, it's not just the fact that sixty-five million people are problematic. It's the fact that they are actively engaged and deep have deep roots within institutions as well as an active voter base. And would that and, be a better summation? Well, yes, but okay. also, but also like the point is it's, it's like, it's, this is 65 core, right? That we're yeah, dealing no, with here, yeah, but like they have captured the Republican yeah. party, Undefined. like entirely through the Southern strategy. They have right. absolutely captured, which, by the way, is nothing more than an IRS tax dodge because Carter was going to use the IRS. He was weaponizing the IRS against the Southern, uh, the Southern Christian private schools that were remaining segregated. That's, yeah. That was the instigating event. That's why they went to Reagan. They said, back the IRS off the private Christian schools and we're yours. Mm -hmm. Like, right. So it was ultimately just a tax dodge. But – the the 65 million core here who has been absolutely like fucking they are they are the problem sort of situation they have captured the right wing they they yeah well i mean you could almost go as far as say like they probably are the right wing right especially if you're talking about activism and the idea of like your primary voting base, voting bases well, of the I mean, primary. Well, but right? like that that Grover Norquist wing of the Republicans, right, to fucking d date both of us, um, that Grover Norquist wing of fucking Republicans is absolutely mm -hmm. captured by these fuckers, right? So toss on another 25, mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. will absolutely sit by and do nothing while these theocratic nut jobs run just roughshod over the, uh, over the landscape, right? So we're looking at fucking 80, 90 million people mm -hmm. that will either actively participate in genocide or are willing to sit by while genocide happens. And that's not even counting the white moderate lib brain territory. Right, that that are like, well, maybe we can compromise. These people will tell you anything. They will agree to anything, right? Because they do not feel a lie to you is a sin if yeah, it sure. is in well, service of God. But that would probably be different in between, like the sep that would probably restrict to the base sixty-five million, not the extra twenty-five for the Grover Norquist types. Correct? I mean, they'll do it in. They'll do it if it means they get elected. Uh, yeah. They'll do it. They'll do it if it means furthering their career or selling a few extra stock, or if it. Yeah. Reverse taxes. Yeah. Yeah. I think they'll absolutely but, go along with it. Mm, I don't know. Uh, um, for fuck's sake. Come on. IBM sold computers to the Nazis. Union Banking Corporation helped fund them. IG Farben set up the fucking. created the gas for the chambers. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I mean. I guess the part that I'm having a tough time kind of eating is like the. Hmm. It's probably an agreement on the millennial generation in the historical context. The situation is vastly different than those things foundationally are nowadays. Just the material, um, the material differences are, are very different. Now, if we were to fall into like a Great Depression, um, we could definitely do that. I think you probably have a better. This has been my opinion or my feeling about it, and I think. Uh, Trump's activities at the border um, kind of prove this. I feel like you've got a better chance of genociding an entire group of like rounding up 
all the Mexicans within this country, right? I feel like you've got a better chance of activating it off of those than the even smaller minority of L- LGBTQ Americans or anything along those lines. Um, not that that doesn't make it any better. Again, you were, we were talking about the active Holocaust in the beginning roots of that out of like Hitler. It that wasn't starts, just Jews. It starts right? with the trans people. It starts with the rating of the, uh, the Institute of uh, sexual studies in Berlin. That's literally yep. like the first marker, the signpost on the road. But the I fact that actually, it- heard about that paper being destroyed too. I don't know if that was a recent thing I heard of, but yeah. I'm yeah. Sorry. That that's, was that's, but that's, that's, we're already past that. Like we're mm-hmm. already past that. They're like, the, the markers are further along than that already. And <sighs> like, dude, this is happening actively in, in states that like, luckily you don't live in, I don't live in. Mm-hmm. Right. But like this, there are 20 states in this union right now that are seriously asterisked. Yeah. Tennessee being among them. But the, the disappointing part is not that I'm trying to pimp Nebraska out or anything like that. It's like we're actively having this fight right now. Correct. Like we're actively doing this politically right now. It, it, um, yes. But it started 40 years ago. Um, yeah, but we've made a lot of strides and I don't feel like a lot of people are going to wanting those protections to be rolled back. Now, whether or not it's their choice that that happens, right? If, uh, fuck, what was the 2016 ruling for, uh, gay marriage? Fuck. What was if, that? if, if the AIDS crisis happened again today, they'd sit by and let it happen. I know. COVID. I don't COVID. Like... COVID. But COVID was vastly different covid was a, they a, let covid a, happen and it happened to all of us you think they wouldn't fucking just let sit by while the queers no, no, died? i don't feel no i don't feel like that's fair because it was actually uh oddly enough the trump was the biggest purveyor of that so you you've got a right wing split in between there right the biggest purveyor of like him trying to tout out like uh what was operation warp speed, right? Like, I don't feel like that's necessarily a one-to-one comparison because he did understand those consequences. He did understand the importance of vaccines. No, 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 because they delayed, they delayed closing the airport. They delayed, they allowed a national media campaign to occur. They allowed the States to pull their States rights bullshit. They allowed it. This is exactly the sound. sort of foundational stuff that allowed the Southern States to do fucking criminalize back black people allowed Reagan to get away with his fucking manifestations, the fucking media campaigns that occurred during the HIV crisis of fucking Christian families wearing masks to protect themselves against the gay disease. Like, no, they absolutely would sit by a, it, well, it I don't know if I can agree with that as far as like they allowed it to happen. There's not a lot of federal protections or federal activation that the federal government could do at that time. Would you disagree with that? They could have absolutely I mean, shut down the airports. I mean, oh, well, yeah, of course. But that lies in the competent, the incompetency of the Trump administration I and his whole laissez-faire action about that. But I do think that the like political capital... Pre- the premature opening of everything in order to get the economy going, capitalism go again, burr, line go we, up. Well, yeah, but again, but that was at the state level, right? Like, uh, oh, that's one of the biggest failures for Ron DeSantis is talking about how, it, you know, he got rid of the information on COVID, just completely got rid of... We're not going to fucking count the numbers, right? Like, but on a federal level, we did what we could. It's one of the greatest achievements probably of the modern age, or at least this 21st century as of right now, the, the rollouts of the vaccine. Again, I don't disagree with the facts that like, we now got to have the discussion of our vaccines magnetic Right. And this probably does stem from those exact dominionists, we, that exact portion of go ahead. We allowed a million people to die. I don't know how much allowed a, a comes forth. Um, in a system, in a system yeah. rife with manufactured consent, there is but little ugh, choice mm-hmm. to recognize the accepted responsibility. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, but that accepted responsibility has to come with some trace of realism, correct? I mean, the realistic position was already like put forth by Noam Chomsky years ago. 
Like this is this is when you talk about manufactured consent, what you're talking about is fundamentally a patriarchal white supremacist capitalist uh, modality of operation. Mm hmm. Like this is absolutely how this system operates and who operates it. Like if you talk about systemic racism and these sorts of systemic issues, this is why these topics are such so important is that sort of intersectional analysis. It's like who is being yeah. oppressed and who is oppressing. Sure. Right. And very much it is white Christians doing this and they have a track record and as you pointed out, you could probably get away with like genociding some Mexicans on the border, right? Why? Yeah. They're brown. Yeah. Well, they're, I mean, they're brown. the medical treatment, the uh, the hysterectomies that were done unnecessarily by that one doctor. Yeah. Like this is, again, another reason why you would probably use this as a talking point to Republicans that are worried about state control. Like, hey, this isn't fucking right. Oh, they don't um, care about that. Like that's, that won't work as a talking point because they don't care about those people. See, it only works if you personalize right, but, it for them. Well, yes, but the talking point is not about like, hey, this happened to Mexicans. The talking point is, hey, would you allow the state to do thus? And they would not. Right? They, but that's that's respect. the problem is they will not allow the state to do it to them. They will allow mm -hmm. it to do it to someone else. Yes. The other rising position is undoubtedly, unquestionably, like foundational to the Republican, the modern Republican Party at one point in time was the Democratic Party. But I think you and I are both. Yeah, party swap. In agreement. Yes. OK. Um, um, like, but like, I mean, this is this is why we there's so much reticence to work with the Democrats within leftist mm -hmm. and political spaces is because this is who they're on team with. Because as you like, as you we were sort of covered earlier, but just sort of skated past is like there is an argument to be made that there's a single party in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you could agree with the, the corporate party. Like, I think I, and I so like and, and we know the corporations are fine. They are fine with genocide. They don't give a shit. They don't give a well, shit. They've yeah. actively I mean, Apple and China. They've yeah. actively participated as long as they can profit from it in some way. They're good. <laughs> Right. So like that's sort of like and there's like millennials and Zoomers especially yeah. are well educated on this. Right. For, yeah. for experientially. That's the terrifying part is that it's experiential learning. Yeah. And that's I guess I don't know if I made this clear. If I've given you this impression, I would appreciate an answer. That's why I, I do feel so optimistic about the the future, although I don't know if you and I are seeing the optimism in the same level, as far as you would probably look at it as an optimism of revolution. I'm looking at an optimism of a chance of better governance. Um, My optimism at this point is building a wall around the southern states. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure, like, I'm legitimately concerned about balkanization. I am. <sighs> I, 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 the federal government will try and hold this shit together as best they can. Mm -hmm. And a good portion of the economic system will try and hold this shit together as best they can. Mm -hmm. But balkanization has already started. It's already begun. The process so, the process started a while ago. Are we talking about World War II balkanization or are we talking about kind of like the early 90s the Kosovo? We're incident? talking about early 90s. Okay. Uh, we we are facing cultural divides the likes of which can't readily be bridged. Do well, yeah, it's kind of hard to sit there and say like, "Hey, will you work with me on this when that person fundamentally disagrees with your ability to exist?" And so how am I to like bridge that gap that like, look, I'm not, dude, I'm not going to a bunch of these places ever again. Like I'm not setting foot in these fucking states. And I got family in like one of these states, South Carolina, to be, 
to be specific. Mm. And my, I think she's like my second cousin or whatever. Fucking either way, she's she's never felt it one with my entire family. And when she finally mm. got to talk to me, like if, if, for the first time, we had a long conversation. She's like, "Oh my god, you know, fucking." She's like, "Now I understand." I thought I was the only one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. My 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 mom and I fucked off from that from the family. <laughs> like we're like peace out, yeah. divorce. Okay. We're gone. Um. So. But like she's in South Carolina and she's she's a lesbian. Her mm-hmm. her mom is a lesbian now. My cousin, um, she is dis- she fucking she's she's bad. Like look, I don't bad men, bad men, like a lot mm-hmm. of bad men. Um, and like her sister is non-binary and pansexual, and like you know she she's got a, a like a girlfriend, and they're terrified, man. They're mm-hmm. terrified of where they live they are afraid to be out in public sort of situation and they're not in a small town they're not in Mm -hmm. the sticks they're they're you know they're in a decent sized fucking metropolitan area and they're legitimately and like i said legitimately afraid Mm -hmm. of being in public as who they are also they're both people of color like they're both mixed race and like the, the the second cousin who I talked to, she she's um, she's also a part, a part Jewish, and people mm-hmm. walk up to her. She's she reads Jewish, and they're like, "Are you a Jew?" She's had that happen multiple times. This is South Carolina. You're talking. About, yes. Correct? Okay. Right. I just didn't know if that person. Yeah. Right. Like um, that's. Like, well, I mean, we would I'm also not, look at the instances of uh, trans hate crimes rising as of like lately, right? Uh, these places are how do we how do i work with and see this is this is why like anti-fascists because again welcome to a fucking room that's got a bunch of antifa people right Mm -hmm. like legitimate anti-fascists i don't know if kaiser's here kaiser's got a fucking federal (laughs) a federal jacket on him like he's got paperwork all right fucking all right so like all for the cause yes like we Mm -hmm. You don't you don't pull a Neville Chamberlain. You don't. It doesn't work out in the end. It, it, I don't. I it, mean, I kind of saw that in the chat a couple times. I don't feel like I'm trying to pull a Neville Chamberlain, especially although a, World War II is kind of like my a large area of study for me. But like, I don't feel like I'm doing the best to appease certainly somebody of that level nor caliber. I um, I, I don't think that chat especially. Um, well, they can have their own fucking well, opinions. But it's like, fine, it's, but it's, 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 it's whether you see it as appeasement or not, mm-hmm. ultimately, it's not doing what you need to do with a Nazi. Yeah, sure. But again, I guess this kind of goes back to the foundational conversation that we originally started Activism with. Activism like, versus po- I- politics, right? Well, yeah. And, um, well, but like that's there comes a time for action, mm-hmm. right? And like there's a time for you, and there's a time for us. Yeah, sure. Right, and like, well, let me be clear, as clear as I can possibly be. Now, this is a double-edged sword because I would, I would deem myself responsible to meet with all parties, whether it's clan members, fascist, anti-fascist. I think that that's the responsibility a politician has, whether or not I believe in consorting those ideologies irrelevant towards my responsibility of what I believe a politician has. Um, And we believe our responsibility is that akin to a 14 year old Dutch girl. And oh, yeah. everybody in chat knows my reference. Are we talking about sleeping with the Nazis and then having them killed? Is that? I mean, per- I would never advocate for violence on the channel. Well, yeah, obviously not. Um, that's not yes. acceptable. That and of the least bit. But that's a historical example, is it not? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just making sure yes. we are talking about World War Two, yep. Chamberlain appeasement. Okay, good. So we're on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and they didn't sleep with them. They just, lure, okay. they just lured them. Yeah. Um, and like, I mean, at the end of the day, these people mm-hmm. are actively killing people already. Hmm. Oh yes. That has happened my entire life. And the fact of the matter is, is that you can place that firmly at the feet of like even Timothy McVeigh. Right. Like that is, he is absolutely 
uh, a, a proponent of those uh, racist white supremacist ide- uh, ideologues. Oh yeah, of course. Right? Well, I like, mean, like, this Yoko, is... but again, we had a large federal backlash on militias after the Oklahoma City bombing, right? Like, you wouldn't disagree with that. Those exact actions and, leading and, to and a what huge ha- and out. what happened? Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you know what the neo Nazis and the uh, the white supremacist movement as a result of that of that backlash? Well, they ended up going online. What uh, they did kind of is tacitizing. They stopped shaving their heads and stopped getting tattoos and put on mm-hmm. three piece suits. Well, yeah, but now we have to have that battle, right? Like as activists but, and politicians, but that, that is battle against the, yeah. that battle got lost years ago. Right now, we're waging a war because they captured some of the one. The police were already on their side. They are. Mm-hmm. This is rage against the machine lyrics time, right? Some of those who work forces are the same that bur- burn crosses, right? They've yeah. al- al- always yeah. been on their side. You can look at the fucking cops that moved the gate for the January six people, right? Fucking. Well, I would disagree with that statement as far as like from a on the ground level just like they understood like we're not going to be able to take on this entire mob mm. our strategy is going to change i don't disagree with the outlook of it i but when i'm trying to look at it from an analytical tactical level what ended up happening is you withdraw go to you know mm-hmm. um yeah I, well you're oh, go I, well i, I mean I look the fucking white supremacists exist within the policing system both federal Abs- and fucking federal state yeah, and local. of course there's no question right. about that yeah like it's within the united states military um those yeah. aspects and, that, and that, that is about. true alvin's yeah. alvin's true like they could have fled they opened the gate like there there is they set it aside for them like there's there's a difference like in the there's a sort of perceived action but either way yeah, sure. What happened as a result of that sort of federal backlash is they infiltrated. Mm-hmm. And now we have numerous studies and investigations into – There was a study on this in like two, during the Obama administration, correct? Oh, there's, uh, been, there's been a few about how many white supremacist organizations exist within the military and how it's yeah. not being properly addressed at the Pentagon level and how many yeah. white supremacist organizations have been receiving training at the yep. yeah oh yeah it's a problem and they like and again they have pipe bomb doctors they have shot mm. doctors in the rectories of their own churches they yep. have beaten gay and trans kids and left them to rot in fields they right. have absolutely ter- continue to terrorize LGBT clubs and locales. Mm-hmm. They criminalize us. They execute us summarily. And the police and the system sit by. Mm-hmm. Right? There isn't action being taken upon these. So, again, like this is, this is sort of where the activists sit is like, mm-hmm. look, the system has not responded. And I point to the suffragettes. They used to um, – one of their tactics was to um, – they – during their firebombing campaign between 1912 and 1914 in Britain, the, uh, the suffragettes um, had a variety of targets that they would select. There were theaters, sports stadiums, um, politicians, and the like. But yeah. one of the sets of targets was private citizens' houses, and in their opinion – Basically, the justification for that was you already possess the right to vote and you allow and abide by uh, a system that di- uh, that disenfranchises us. Therefore, you are complicit in this crime. And so the activist position at this time is that, frankly, most of these systems and people who perpetrate these t- and propagate these systems are mm-hmm. complicit in. In these crimes against black people, against women, against trans kids, against gay kids, against foreigners, against fucking the list goes on and on. Because frankly, what has been the response? Well, 20 states have doubled down on it. Mm-hmm. And the, 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 the head of the executive branch said, well, it borders on sin. Yeah. Thanks, guy. How about you call them out in no uncertain terms, right? How about you stand up and say, not only is this a sin, it's frankly a crime against humanity. Mm -hmm. 
like, it, it, this is what we get. We get a Supreme Court that allows it, that facilitates it. We get an executive that does, fucking does jack shit. And we get a legislature that, again, allows it. Right? Well, too paralyzed in their fucking actual ability to pass bills excluding naming post offices and fucking bridges yeah yeah and so like you know and and when somebody tries to prevent like i mean let's face it policing is a problem especially in inner cities and for black communities and a further a larger training facility which is only going to further militarize the police in atlanta is attempting mm -hmm. to be set up and environmental activists are trying to stop at a fucking basically an endangered strip of greenery to be from being chopped down to build this stupid cop shop when one of the non-violent protesters sits there in a fucking tent trying to prevent them from chopping down trees the cops came in and shot him mm -hmm. and so now what happens now anytime they bring in construction equipment protesters go in and burn it all that's the response now and we have video of that that's what happens now they firebomb the place they attack any cop who tries to come near and secure the location, and they firebomb any equipment that happens there. Why? Because they were given no level of fucking a a action, like no chance, no chance. Nonviolent protesting didn't work. It literally got a kid dead. So, and again, I think this is kind of a weird part. I don't know where we're kind of at right now. I guess earlier we had talked about the largest domestic terrorist group in the United States right wing. is linked. Right wing um, and white supremacist tied everything along those lines. And that is a fair amount of social and I would probably say political push against those type of ideals. Again, you'll find milk toast Republicans that will denounce it, whether or not that's believable or not, I'm not too sure. I guess the question becomes like, if it becomes, if rhetoric spirals up more on the left side, don't you feel like you end up, oh, fuck, I feel like I asked this question earlier, uh, where you enable more parties to come to power, like more Reagans along those lines. They already came to power. That's, 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 that's our entire fucking point. It's already here. It's, it's not some hypothetical theoretical out there in the distance. It's already happening. It already <sighs> happened. That's why so many fucking gay people, so many fucking people are freaked the fuck out mm -hmm. is because it's already here. Here, I'll think for everybody here, uh, top screen. There we go. This is what happens to construction equipment that's brought into Cop City now, trying to build this place. Simple as that. Um, so like, yeah, like it, it, that's, that's our, that's like, that's our concern. Like that's dude, fuck it. These nut jobs are shooting up like gay clubs. Yeah. They're like, they're, they're, they're not going for like single targets anymore anymore. This ain't the Matthew Shepard era. They're not yeah. content beating one queer kid up and leaving him tied out in the field to fucking slowly die in the weather. They want yeah. numbers now. Like that's, that's what they're after. They got fucking pastors in Texas openly talking to large groups of people about how the, the, the cure to homosexuality is execution. Yeah. Right. Like these aren't small locales. These aren't small amounts of people. And this is not fucking like, dude, the stochastic terrorism has already taken root. Mm -hmm. Like, and so this is, unless we see like this is goes back to what I said, like what millennials want, what zoomers want is somebody who's got the receipts and says some shit because what we're facing down is global climatological collapse and the rise of theocratic fascism. And like it, it it's not some theoretical future point. It's right now. It started decades ago. And it's happening this fucking moment. And when we hear wishy-washy liberal positions about like working with within the system, 
Mm -hmm. we just sit back and go, well, working within the system arrived us at climatological collapse and the rise of theocratic fascism. And so like how many of my brothers and sisters, how, how many, how many of my NB friends, like how many of our, our black brothers and sisters, how many of uh, human beings, how many, how many Hispanic immigrants, how many fucking people within the prison industrial complex, right? How many people have been beaten, maimed, tortured, and murdered in the name of, well, we just need to, yeah, we need to just get the right people in. And it's like, look, it's not, in the words of Immortal Technique, it's not you who will change the system. It's a system that will change you. Hmm. And, like, it's a beast, man. It's a beast. It's a fucking hydra. You chop off one head and three more fucking appear. And that's why my three, like, that three tent poles of oppression, right? Mm-hmm. Dude, that's... I, I allow for a hypothetical at the beginning of the police state that if, imagine somebody, a magical fairy with like a magic wand comes along and can provide everybody with the education and the knowledge and get them off the financial hamster wheel. Imagine we can start making progress, right? No, there's still this authoritarian police state who has maintains their authority at, a, a, at the base of monopolization of force. Yeah. And so like that's what we're up against. And that system is wielded in class warfare. That system is absolutely, look at the big stick, right? Unions, right? Union busting. And if if they can't work within that system, what will they do? Pinkertons. They will work outside it. They will absolutely use a private entity like Blackwater to do their dirty, dirty work abroad that they can't get the military to do. Mm-hmm. Right, like that's that's our issue, and it's like, look, if you can provide me with a candidate that could make some ga- gra- gain some ground, do most of us are going to do it. Most of us are pragmatic about it. Look, we don't want Trump, we don't want Biden, but we definitely don't want fucking Trump, right? Sure. Like, so we'll vote for Biden, but don't think for a second that there is not a very, very, very real undercurrent happening in this country. Let's go, Brandon. That is like very sick of shit and terrified and knowledgeable about these systems to a degree, at least enough, that we're like, yeah, dude, I don't trust cops. I don't trust politicians. I don't trust corporations. Mm -hmm. I don't like this. All of this shit is done in service of nothing's broken, man. It's working as intended. It's a feature. Yeah. And so like that's that's sort of our position. And like this is why like more people should be anarchists rather than politicians because a function of anarchism is building what we call dual power structures. Secondary structures that pull power away from the system rather than give it to it. Rather than mm-hmm. attempting to get your city to do something for you, how about you get the people who are the city, by the way, right? Not, not the, the superstructure of the bureaucracy, but the actual thing itself, the community, right? How about you get them to do it? How about you get them to organize community farms, community gardens, community clinics, community libraries that are separate from. That way, when the fucking white fascist Christian nut job wants to remove books from your library that disagrees with their ideology, you can tell them to fucking pound sand. Yeah. That's, I mean, you would look at like the original foundation of the Black Panther Party was a community organization unit that handed out free lunches, uh-huh. meals, uh, the, and they uh, are the origin black to school to and from yeah. yeah and they're the origin of the breakfast pr- program in this country that's where it yep. comes from it's the black panthers and we saw what happened to them right <clears throat> well yeah the system turned against them mm-hmm. do you think we we have the same F- fbi that we do now that we did oh, yeah. back then yes think yeah. so yeah i i absolutely do because it's not about the people it's about the the machine itself hmm yeah, it's 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 so much bigger than like a group of people. So you think 
well, do you I'm think to, do you think the CIA uh, is still fucking around in other people's democracies? Well, I'm not concerned about the well, CIA but that's, right now. But, I want to focus domestically. Well, right? but that, that's that's so, kind of my point say, is they're they're still fucking around. Well, yeah, I think that they are, but we would. I'm trying to get at the idea of institutional change, institutional memory. Uh, not that everybody likes him. Uh, who is the FBI director? Uh, Jim Comey. Yes. Jim Comey specifically taught classes um, and through interviews with agents taught classes about how the FBI not only like fucked over Martin Luther King Jr., but actively went against um, the uh, Black Panther Party. I think he took, I forget where he was teaching college at. I feel like now, again, he's no longer active, but I feel like there are probably more people that are aware of the horrible things that that institution does and are making gains and steps forward in that now, I would suspect. You, I'm not trying to you, read your are mind. You, are you aware that the FBI deliberately infiltrated and targeted BLM protesters in order to disrupt the movement? I'm not, I never heard of that. Yo, yes. Um, look up the Alpha Boys, Alphabet Boys podcast uh, for a specific okay. episode on this. Uh, tech support, you have the uh, episode link, but also you can um, you can just do a basic search engine, sort of like, and yes, the FBI deliberately targeted BLM protesters to disrupt the movement. And there's like, rep there's at least one report on this now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Boys, uh, BLM, uh, protesters because well, i mean for city cops it's a hell of a lot easier to do i mean we've kind of always known about them just throwing in plain clothes officers in there to goad people into like breaking windows and then you just oh that's right train. yeah I, I, they yeah. we know they absolutely infiltrated mosques yeah right? fbi paid violent felon to undermine racial justice movement this is not this is C Alphabet boys. Um, tech so ten. I was going to say tech support is going to grab the um, uh, link um, right I now. I think I ha I might have it. Okay. Alphabet boys, Western sound. Uh, they call me juice, dumpster fire, give them hell. Are these all in? Uh, reveals the secret investigations of the FBI, CIA, DEA, ATF, and other alphabet agencies. Agencies. Yeah. No, they're yeah. still up to their old shenanigans. There. Yeah, it doesn't seem like, and this wouldn't be too surprising, but it does not seem like agencies um, dead set on like organization and uh, stuff like that would not be favorable towards left leaning movements. We've kind of known about this again for a while. I and why wouldn't they be? Well, it undermines institutional power, of course. The other thing, mm -hmm. and also is it tends to and i guess this is probably going back to the idea of why hitler rose to power and the idea of people are far more likely to go and lean towards people in general are far more likely to lean towards something of an order and it looks like authoritarians offer that order where somehow it's perceived on the left that there's nothing but disorder and chaos now whether or not that's from like the infighting in the soviet revolution with like the white the whites versus the reds is that kind of how that goes uh yes and yeah, yeah. i think you found the link um but the the okay. iheart.com link in chat is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um so okay. there there you go like there, yeah. there's there's podcasts on this even but like yeah no they're still up to their old shenanigans like the the no no i don't i don't think that the system has magically reformed itself well, I don't believe in magical reform. At first off, it's an institution, so it's going to require institutional reform that's going to have to come from Congress uh, with more oversight, which I'm wholly and completely up all of fucking about. But yeah, um, I, th I wouldn't disagree with that, and I certainly wouldn't disagree with some of the CI operations um, needing to be fucking scaled back. Uh, the question is how it becomes achievable, how you do it. Uh, I mean, not to sound too conspiratorial, but it's a good way to get a president shot in the head. Yeah, it very well could be. Right? Like, we don't know. Like, that's that's the, that's one of those things that we will never know. Hasn't the Biden administration released some of those things, some of the old files on uh, the JFK? Look, you can release not, it. I'm not trying yeah. to give, like, I, Again, to you, can, you can release as many files as you want. Like, that thing's sketchy. It's sketchy. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm not saying, like, the Biden administration did good. I was saying yeah, for general knowledge. Know. Did anybody look it up? I don't oh, know. Okay. Somebody in chat yeah. could fucking follow through on that. 
But like, yeah. I mean, I've, not, I've seen the, I've yeah. seen the shot. Like I've seen the shot. Like it's fucking. There's a there's kind of a reason, dude. Bill Hicks even did back in the day a routine on this. Like they've mm-hmm. they've walled. Like they they've barricaded around the window so you can't lean out the window and see the shot itself because it's I, such a fucked up shot. There was one that I think through ballistics and aim actually talked about. It could have possibly been a secret servant service agent that accidentally fired after um the first shot was fired and actually that was the one that hit jfk from behind him whether or not again accidentally I, I, or again not. like i you know it's just one just i'm just you know asterisk asterisk try and try and fuck with the cia and see what that gets you yeah right? well i mean nixon kind of learned about that one Right. Pretty well they, too. Nixon wasn't too big of a fan until he could learn how to control it. They they absolutely are like you know yeah these are these are systems that are bigger than I mean you what's an what's an aircraft carrier fleet look like right That's forty ships strong, fifteen thousand people eat minimum on a fucking carrier only. There's fuck it like dude this is these these are we're talking trillions of dollars this machine is right dis destabilizing and rocking the boat on a mm-hmm. multi-trillion dollar globe spanning empire yeah fuck around <sighs> and find out fuck I around and find out it seems like and this is probably more opinion i don't know what your thoughts on the, uh, the u.s support of ukraine but it looks like He's at least a globalist on that ideal, uh, American hegemony in the in the world, trying to kind of create some semblance of order. Um, any thoughts? I mean, <sighs> it would be irrespective of the uh, Russian aggression. Of course, I don't. I don't think we're going to. The Western too much powers on. waited a beat mm-hmm. to see what would happen. And then as soon as the military industrial complex saw that they could make a buck, tanks go burr. It's that Not simple. sending that many. No, but everything we're sending is like mm-hmm. that mid to b- a low tier of gear, right? Yeah, like 20 and, years old, like uh-huh. high Mars. And the yeah. stuff that we want to replace. We're, yeah, we're, we're, that we were going to send a demolition anyway. We're, we're getting so, rid yeah. of old stock to buy new. Yeah. The machine goes burr, man. Like, that's that's what it's about. They all waited a beat. They all just sat back and went, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, I don't think that institution has certainly changed from, like, the banana anima. Uh, excuse me, the banana republic or the banana wars that uh, Smedley Butler wrote about in War as a Racket, right? That mm-hmm. little 30 page pamphlet. I don't think it's necessarily changed that much. Certainly, corporate interests are always abound. There is a fair interest in the idea of like you, both Ukraine and Russia being some of the largest suppliers of wheat in a global famine, certainly, if that does happen, uh, is going to increase. For instance, like Egypt is a huge importer from both of those countries, and Egypt is already having domestic problems, um, let alone it's... no longer being able to feed their people. There's an argument and discussion to be had, which I would probably fall on the favoritism side of like, there's probably going to need some semblance of order to stop something like that from happening. I... Um, sure. But again, it's all just a racket. Like, mm-hmm. as long as it was Eisenhower's warning, man. Like, yeah. Eisenhower's warning up fucking stands to this day. It is a machine that will find a reason because it's profitable. We built yeah. a machine that does war for profit. I guess you and I are probably in agreement on the idea of, like, it doesn't seem like millennials are going to be very war-hungry sorts of folks as they get older and i think in part because of the iraq war um possibly the afghanistan some segments of the afghanistan war as well are we in alignment with that idea i don't know why i think probably Mm -hmm. proliferation of information in the internet age is probably a larger reason why 
because the the majority of millennials, like you know, it was a subset of a subset, right? Of millennials actually went served and went to war. Oh yeah, of course. Right. So the the experiential data is minimal, but the exposure to the data yeah. is maxim uh, maximized through the information age. And so, like, we just, you know, sort of, but that's, again, they're phasing out soldiers. Like. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you can do it, it just makes sense. We're automating it. Like, mm -hmm. we fucking, the global war on terror is from my fucking town. Like, absolutely. The drone, the center for drone piloting is Las Vegas, Nevada. It's Nellis. Mm -hmm. And, oh, okay. Yeah, Nellis Air Force Base here in Las Vegas, Nevada, is the the hub of the global uh, drone war, and so they absolutely they they run. They're fucking three hundred and sixty controllers, man. They're Xbox yeah, controllers, yeah. and they um, use a global satellite communication system, and they just run them from here. And then at night, you can catch those fucking uh, drone off uh, drone pilots down at a casino buffet. Yeah, we've got off at Air Force Base here in Nebraska. It's right below Omaha. It's in Bellevue. So um, that's kind of where that's where the president comes. If shit happened like Bush came here in, during 9-11, um, I think they do operate some drone strikes out of here. We're going to we're going to automate as much of it as possible. Get the human element out so they can minimize yeah. that. Plus, it's a cost saving feature for them. And right. uh, like, yeah, but that, dude, this that machine is that machine. And the Democrats are firmly fucking on team military industrial. Oh, well, complex. yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with this idea. You can look at the war in Yemen and the political support. Somehow this doesn't get fucking brought up either mm -hmm. i mean i think there have been plenty of media outlets that do talk about this but again it doesn't look like it's reaching people that feel worried that they're gonna like lose their fucking position if they do or do not take a stance yep. that's kind of the most concerning thing for me is we figured out a way to have our longest fucking war in american history within our generation's lifetime and the history span of the United States for 20 fucking years. And we figured out a way to do it without having civil backlash. It's fucking concerning. This, this, is, this is why most of us in here are mm -hmm. not optimistic. Like, if you tried that shit in France, they'd burn you to the ground. Yeah, well, that's why we have American freedom fries now, right? Yeah. And that worked out. So, like, this is this is why we're not optimistic, which is why anarchists work on a, uh, a microcosmic level at a local level. We understand that there is no reform happening at that level. There's, mm -hmm. there's, that's not. You can't reform a Nazi. They're a fucking yeah. Nazi. Like, and so you're not going to reform the orphan crushing machine. <laughs> it's it's an orphan crushing machine. Right. Yeah. Like that's sort of like the position we take generally is like, look, we'll do harm reduction. We're yeah. open to it these days. It's not the days of Emma anymore as modern anarchists, unless you're dealing with Twitter LARPers, modern anarchists have an element of pragmatism under their belt. Like we'll mm -hmm. do harm reduction, but if you want a real conversation with us, no, no, we don't th No, we don't think that voting will save us. We don't think that it's going to stop stem the tide of the Christo fascist uprising that we're witnessing now. No, we don't think that the federal and state police systems are going to do anything about right-wing terrorism or white nationalism or white supremacy rising up because, frankly, they support it. Um, they're a part of it. They were born of it. Um, and, and so, like, at the end of the day, we're very pessimistic about those sorts of endeavors. Hence why we're like, dude, if you want somebody we can support, you need a, like an equivalent of Bernie. And like, frankly, these days, I want Bernie back in this. I want 60s and 70s Bernie. I want Bernie who was on the congressional floor calling for the dissolution of the CIA. Right. I want that guy back. Well, I mean, strange bedfellows again, but you might be able to get an alliance with Marjorie Taylor Greene on that one. Yeah. Or is she more FBI. She's, she's, I, she's, I'm pretty sure FBI. She's FBI. But, she's, I guarantee yeah. she's pro well, she's whatever fucking her idiots tell her to say this week. Yeah. Um, right. she's dumb as fuck. Um, but 
Like, yeah. Like that's, I mean, it, it, there is, there's way too much to it than just like, because the piecemeal you're going to do again, the immortal technique, it's not going to be you who changes the system. You can't do that kind of large scale, like, mm-hmm. like you change, how many politicians can you change simultaneously across the mm-hmm. board to be, who are on board with radical change of that degree? Right. Because if you can't hit that, that like that sort of waterline number, then the system will do what the system does and engage. And it's not even it's going to happen long before then capital. The capital class is going to ensure that the majority of those people are never even going to make it in there. Right. Like, Um, let me let me hit you with a little data point. I don't know. You may like this, you may not. Um, The capitalist class is going to be shrinking here in the next couple of years. And that kind of my idea and information comes out of this is like boomers are now getting older. Oh, they're retiring. So they're going to be holding the the class, the 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 tier of the capital Mm -hmm. class that actually perpetrates those crimes is not Mm -hmm. that that chunk. Oh, okay. When you're okay, so you're talking about I'm talking about the owners owners of the okay yeah i'm, yeah. T- I'm talking hundreds of millions or up okay yeah like the boomers they're just i could uh, see i could f- see why you're not gonna buy yeah. that idea of it shrinking because for you it's far more individualistic than they're than not yeah the, the cap- generational class yeah, yeah. that's not it, it, the capital class isn't shrinking it's fucking functionally it's expanding it, they're re, they're claiming more ground it's just being consolidated that's all yeah sure um I can see that. And so, like, yeah, it, um, fucking, oh, Jesus, GL. Um, yeah, it, so, like, yeah, that's not, that's not going to be, like, pff, is DuPont going away anytime soon? Is Dow Chemical going away anytime soon? Is you Alphabet? Go away after they fucking poison everybody. Right, like, these, these companies actively engage in, g- g- Facebook has committed two genocides. You know that, right? Like they've they've actually facilitated two genocides. Is this the actively allowing or working with the Chinese government? No, no, no. Or? This is the the like Rohingya fucking people. Like this is. Oh, I'm not too oh, familiar. With yeah, that, Facebook has facilitated multiple genocides now, like mm. actively, knowingly. Like not, oopsie, it happened on our platform. Oh, it's happening on our platform. Let's look the other way. Mm. Right, like. And they're still allowed to exist, right? Bayer Pharmaceutical is nothing more than IG Farben. They made fucking, they made Zyklon B, man. Like, Union Banking funded the fucking Nazis and the fucking president, two, we had two presidents are from the, one of the seven that basically were on the board of directors. Prescott Bush, old grandpappy Bush was on the board of directors of a banking corporation that helped fund the Nazis and we elected two of his fucking progeny, (laughs) right? Like, this is, it's, it's way beyond that. Like that's, that's why like we like leftist vote hard, like vote harder is sort of just our chuckle line. Yeah. It's because it's like, look, I don't know how much that's going to do. Feels a little depressing. It is. It's, it's sincerely depressing and like I guess it, genocide I guess- is depressing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's got to feel good for that actual seeing your activism and working within your own community that it does seem like, at least if I'm to take your your word, and I see no reason not to, that uh, you claim that um, anarchists are actively doing as far as like soup kitchens, yeah. actual direct action on the ground. I got yeah, I, I, I got a guy I who comes like, through occasionally, fucking, like, I, I, I look, it's, it's difficult for me to say this, um, but... I've inspired a couple people um, over over the years. I've done this. I think there's a few people in chat would say I've I've changed their position in their lives in some way, shape, yeah, or form. Yeah, your writing's fantastic. It's incredibly um, logical. So yeah, I think and I see no reason why it wouldn't be. A fucking uh, <laughs> Viva, who's German, said that's not entirely right. Ig Farben was split up into more companies in Bayer. It's also BASF. Um, but like, yeah, we got a um, Aspen. Oh, just a little. Um, 
Yeah, we had a guy just come by the other night. It was like, yeah, we um, like just wanted to update you. We've got the the community gardens we've set up. We've got the soup kitchen set up. Right. Like he's 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 actively providing like he is organized using anarchistic modalities. Um, and I helped teach him um, that. I mean, look, I can teacher can only do so much. Right. Like I can. Yeah, well, like, of course. But like I, I pointed him in the direction and he learned and did and he fucking got his community members and they're producing. They're securing their own food supply and feeding the hungry. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, Yeah. Like anarchistic action works. Food not bombs is feeding people in like a hundred plus countries. And there's nobody at the head of that organization. There's no like anarchists feed people, man. And every single fucking positive thing that's ever happened in like modern era, you look at fucking the suffrage movement, you look at the civil rights movement, you look at indigenous rights movements, you look at the uh, like the LGBT rights movement, every single one of those times, there's fucking anarchists present. Look in the photo. There's an anarchist in the photo. Right? Like, we've, we've been on the right side of history for all of this shit. Like, and so, like, labor, getting kids out of the fucking mines, fucking, like, we've been on the right side of history. So, I won't get to see the the ideal outcome. It's not going to happen in my lifetime. But, like, I get to die knowing I'm on the right side of history. Right? Like, that's that's fine with me. Like, I... I feel like I, I delivered this line to you last time, and it was the idea that communists and anarchists seem to be just out of place in time where like the type of people Mm -hmm. that need to yeah that could actually achieve this aren't here yet right like we're still dealing with racism as of right now there's no way you can uh, yeah no we're not to say that you're like it's it's my torchbearer fucking comment that fucking tech support is going bingo for on this one um it's i'm a torchbearer and like humanity's not ready. Humanity's not ready. They're not ready. But these ideas predate all of modernity. They're not a creation of the modern era. These ideas exist have existed with human beings since time immemorial. Like mm-hmm. this is this is older than us. And so I I I can trust that. That they'll they will outlive any of these these growing pains that yeah. we as a species are having now. Growing pains is a good use of reference, especially when you talk about the species. I do appreciate that. <laughs> um, tech support tent poles got me. There you go. Um, the dude tent poles is probably one of my best pieces of insightful work. It's as yeah. far as essays go. Yeah, like it's it's a solid piece of analysis. Uh, not that long, frankly, but it, uh, the writing was not the difficult part. Was this kind of a thing that you established like logically and then through yes. your heart? Like this is kind of yeah. principles that you would already live by and then it's just pen to paper? Or exactly. Paper. Or, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah that would make a lot of sense. Writing yeah. was not the complicated part of it. It was <laughs> coming to a position where you actually have the insight Mm. to be able to do that level of analysis to to sit down and develop a turn of phrase such as to borrow a turn of phrase because it is a borrowed turn of phrase but know to where where to borrow and where to to create and where to steal right right? yeah to be able to put together that like poverty philosophy is where it starts and the financial hamster wheel is where it's maintained and the police state is where it's it's uh referentially enforced right Mm -hmm. to to string these together and know the points of reference and know how it's used and that sort of stuff yeah that's a lifetime of knowledge right but you know it took me probably two days to write it Mm. no big deal that's a pretty that's a pretty short i mean it's not exactly a long speech i don't think it was aimed to be long but like two days seems like a short time period in order to fully construct that in the manner in which just the parts that you read to me seem very logical well thought out it's just my writing style i don't know it flows when it flows. I haven't written. I haven't written recently because I haven't felt the need to write anything. I think I've I've like put down what I needed to put down, mm-hmm. and like it's like look, I I'm not going to give you dust capital. 
the fact yeah. the fact the matter is is like you know i'm i'm an anarchist activist and organizer uh Lar- lardy um like i've been doing it more often um and so like yeah um come back like come back by and like just ask if i'm not like if the stream title isn't saying open call ask i take calls I take calls from people who are a good faith, bad faith. I take calls to just, yeah, swing on by and ask. No big deal. Um, yeah, like, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it, like, yeah. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm an incredibly emotional person. I guess that, that statement in the eloquence parts of that you're writing, especially the part about, uh, what was it? dominism or uh, dominionism dominionism thank yes. you uh well researched well spoken well you know very spoon fed i appreciate that kind of bar- barney style right i guess those parts it hurts my heart in a lot of different ways that you feel like you're kind of done because i do appreciate that sort of activism like i said like politically I can't be starved of conversations with I, people. I don't feel I've changed sort of like, okay. So like I've written what I think needs writing because I sure. think the fundamental issues are the fundamental issues. I don't yeah. think they're going to be shifting much. Um, okay. And so the wars that are being waged are the wars that are being waged. And I've written the pieces that I need to write about those pieces mm-hmm. and everything else is a conversation. Mm-hmm. So the conversation has not stopped. The, the 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 conversation is very much the new the next frontier of that yeah right i could i could wholly agree with that sure and so like what i do now is on a good day on my best day right <laughs> um what i do we have more ahead of you my health is degrading man um on my best day i sit down with somebody like yourself and i show to them i show i hold up a mirror to the world and I try and demonstrate using as much of my knowledge base of like what's fucked up, right? Yeah. This is what's wrong with the world. And here, like, basically, the one of the best things that you can like realize is an anarchist, right? Mm-hmm. Is that we have a lens of analysis that is different from basically everybody. And that lens of analysis is one of a many multitude of uh, tools in our tool belt. But we get to hold it up and mm-hmm. basically like look at society, look at individuals, look at processes, organizational methodologies, um, like structures, like everything. We get to basically yeah. just hold this lens up and look at the world. And it's like a HUD. It basically just gives us a readout mm-hmm. on what's wrong. And as a result, I am a huge advocate for these anarchistic tools, whether you choose to end up uh, like advocating for or identifying as an anarchist, that's Mm -hmm. up to the individual as it should be under any anarchist modality. But when you understand anarchism and you understand the positions, philosophies, methodologies, and these sorts of analyses that we have historically and contemporarily, it aids you in any pursuit, including the dialectical exercise, to be able to sit down with somebody and be like, all right, so tell me what you, you, you think, tell me what you think you know, tell me how you think you can fix the world, and now let me tell you what an anarchist thinks about that. I feel like, hold on, I had a thought that just kind of trailed off to me. Um, Well, there were a couple different. Obviously, the first one is pretty laissez-faire or like a pretty throwaway thought of like, um, how would you go about politically marketing these ideals, obviously? And again, I feel like this is a lame question. I, I had a good one. But as you're answering this, I'll try and think about the other one is like the word anarchy definitely in the common person's mind. Poison. Well poisoned. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, um, Okay. So there's two different positions on this and Mm -hmm. I fully accept like this is somebody else's fight. I'm, Mm. I'm going down with the ship. Sure. Um, I, I refuse 
on like on principle alone. Mm -hmm. Right. As much as I am a propagandist, as much as I, I, <laughs> I, I am an organizer and an activist, I refuse. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but there are certainly methodologies and I have implemented them from time to time of avoiding and tap dancing the word anarchist or anarchism mm -hmm. or anarchy. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, you absolutely can do that. I do. I've done it with, and people do it with fucking rightly, uh, right, right wingers and stuff like that and community organizing and that sort of thing. Like, Oh, Hey, you know, it's just, Oh, it's like a farm co-op. It's like, you know, it, we just, we grow stuff and we share stuff back and forth and that sort of thing. Right. Like, yeah, I refuse to concede this ground. Um, yeah. but like if you wanted to, yeah, it's no big deal. It's no big deal to like distance yourself from the word. Yeah. Um, sorry. I'm on a blank on the actual fucking second question. The, <clears throat> for me, there's a separation. And again, I think this goes back to the weird start of like what a politician ought to be doing. And it feels like almost apropos or that might not be the word, the right word, but it feels contrary to what a politician ought to be doing as an anarchist. Maybe um, because the goals is kind of like an, an elimination of government on the whole and a, a liberation towards self-government. Is that a fair summation? Yeah, there's a lot more than that. And we would, there's okay. a lot of anarchists that would just fucking, there's too many asterisks to address sort okay. of situation. Mm -hmm. Um and so uh, let me really quickly, Wolada, is that one so unique? Because every kid in school knows that uh, having to ask whether you can eat or drink or piss has an opinion about unjust power structures. Wolada, that's why I'm a post-anarchist. This is see this is this is it. I'm a, technically I'm a I'm a post left post anarchist, and one of the philosophical positions of post anarchism is that fundamentally everyone is stru uh, structurally starts as an anarchist, and that you have been poisoned by other things. So what I would do, Wilada, is state that those kids who um, uh, who have been taught that they have to ask to drink or piss, and that all of a sudden they've recognized those un uh, those unjust power structures, are inherently taking an anarchistic position, whether they have been instructed on that or not, and thus post anarchism is born. Post-leftism, by the way, for those that are, dude, Twitter has attempted to poison post-leftism. There's fucking, dude, there's jackasses. Not Twitter. Yeah, I know, right? What? I know, right? Post-left anarchism is not a leaving of leftism. It is a critical analysis of leftist structures, organizing, and methods from the position of an anarchist, recognizing that leftism is more than just anarchism. I swear to God. <laughs> Shit I've heard about post-leftism. It's fucking Nazism. It's fascism. It's fucking right-leaning. It's fucking... It's just like, oh, for fuck's sake. It's a. It's critical support, tankies. It's fucking... It's... Fuck. Is this the concept of, like, the horseshoe politics? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fuck gotcha. it. Yeah, it's like, it's not leaving leftism. It's just saying, hey, as an anarchist, I've got some critiques of leftism. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some shit we could punch up. Let's make it better. Welcome to it, right? Mm -hmm. um, do I believe in the intolerance, par uh, the intolerance paradox? Absolutely. Punch a Nazi. I mean, I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> dude, you, can't, girls. you, can't, girls. you, can't, you can't tolerate intolerance. That's, that's Yeah. You can't. It's just how, that's how you get Nazis on the streets. Like it's it's just that simple. This has been a weird part because I feel like functionally, by the by, on the whole, and again, this is going to be different because I'm looking at this from like a politician aspect, perhaps. But like, it seems like we've been able to work this out fairly well in the United States and making some progress. Again, we're going to disagree on whether this is a just progress or not. But it does seem like. We're allowing people with extreme views, as long as that 
doesn't like violate somebody else's views seems to work out here in the states fairly well um I believe in near absolute freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. That makes it easier for me to identify a Nazi. The problem is, is that people need to occupy an anti-fascist mindset in order for that absolute freedom of speech to be functional. If people understood the tolerance paradox, mm -hmm then we could have that absolute freedom of speech. And to reference a Bill, old Bill Burr routine about how he was out with his friend who was a, a bouncer at a local bar who knew all sorts of scumbags, his word. Um, they were at Target one day and he saw one of, his, uh, one of the people from the bar and he just gave him the like, you know, sup. I recognize you, yeah, kind of not. Yeah. yeah, and he's he's like, he's like, how you doing, man? He's like, how am I doing? How am I doing? He's standing in line at a Target. How am I doing? Fucking Mexicans, man. These fucking Mexicans are, and he's like, he's like, here's the problem. Everybody else is just like all of a sudden reading the back of a Kit Kat bar, right? Like everybody is like, uh, uncomfortable. He's like, if you don't shut that down now, some dude in the back pokes his head out and goes, you know, this guy's making a lot of sense, man. And he waits and he, he walks up to that dude and now he gets off work and there's two of them riding around in his El Camino, <laughs> right? Like that's yep. the problem mm -hmm. is if you don't, that's why I don't mind Joe Rogan platforms the most irrespo uh, irresponsibly platforms the worst people, right? Yeah. And I will critique him for that. Here's the difference. I will mm -hmm. talk to actual white supremacists and Nazis on my air. Do I let them get away with a modicum of their bullshit? No. Mm -hmm. I will shut them down. I will call them what they are. I will call them out for their shitty ideas and I will resist till my last breath. Joe Rogan sits there and goes, oh, that's good. I never really thought about it that way. Jamie, look that up. Won't you? Right? So that's yeah. the difference. I believe mm -hmm. in absolute freedom of speech, but only with an educated, resistant populace. And Americans are not educated and they are not resistant. And so ultimately it becomes highly problematic. Mm -hmm. And it is allowed to spread and propagate and profligate across the landscape. And then you have tiki torch Nazis running cars into counter protesters. And so, yeah, that's sort of my deal with that. Okay. Do you think... I mean, undoubtedly, this is kind of true, so it's a lame question. But, like, do you think people are either not predisposed as in, like, genetically, but, like, obviously kind of raised in a hierarchical sense, dis predisposed towards fascism? Like, somebody's like, hey, just these are fucking problems. I just want one person to fucking, like, handle it. We all just need to get on board. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. They've been, they've been, uh, they've been groomed. Mm -hmm. They have. They've been groomed. I, I don't I can't tell you how many countless it's countless man it's countless how many people have fucking come in uh, washed up on my shores over the years now that like hierarchies are natural mm. human beings aren't meant to fly we did it anyway motherfucker mm -hmm. right just because you feel it's natural which by the way human society doesn't naturally trend towards hierarchies arguably here's our problem we have a subset of our population that is um, malignant. <clears throat> Socio, psycho, antisocial personality disorder territory. Okay. Who are lacking, who do not feel things the same way you and I feel things. Yeah. Right? They don't. They do not experience human interaction and the world the same way we do. 
and yeah. they are manipulative and they are fucking Machiavellian in their goals. Just sad because Machiavelli actually, either way, um, they are Machiavellian in, in, in their pursuit of their goals, right? Mm-hmm. And so ultimately, they hijack systems. Look at the preponderance, the disproportionate preponderance of psych, uh, psychopathy or at least psychopathic traits amongst CEOs and politicians. Sure. Right? Like this is, this is the problem. And so ultimately, this is where I advocate for like anarchism. Why not work a system that takes that into account? That actually takes into account human nature rather than build, than a system that functionally fuels itself with that malignant personality trait. And I point to the 1980s greed is good mentality for an example of such. Yeah. Right. Why don't we actually like address it and be like, hey, we need minority representation. We need to ensure that no one person can completely hijack the system. How do we do that? Consensus decision making. Not complicated. It's been done for ages. We know how to do this. Direct democracy and consensus decision making. Um, if you want to read, um, somebody put the uh, Anson um, link in chat, please, and thank you. Um, if anybody remembers the command, it's just Anson. Um, grab the uh, grab the link in chat if you want to like because immediately people start thinking about um, like the scope and scale problem of what I just okay. said, right? It's like how yeah. how do I even grab grab the uh, the anarcho syndicalism one hundred and one link um, okay, out yeah. of chat. And that will, I address not only like syndicalistic sort of like, this is the first stop for like, if you wanted to reform our society, but also the anarchistic organizing principles behind anarcho-syndicalism. And part part of that subsection is scope and scale problems and how it is addressed within it. Yeah. Um, But like, yeah, like anarchists already have tools for this. And like Puerto Real in uh, Spain is an uh, anarcho syndicalist controlled uh, industrial port. It's a major port in Spain. It's controlled by the Ansens. The environmental policy, the educational policy, the healthcare policy, the labor policy, it's all controlled by Ansens. Like, it's absolutely a doable thing. Um, I don't know how much of a prolific reader you are. Like if you like if you put down pages, I got a book for you. If you don't put down pages, then I got another book for you. But <laughs> well, you can shoot them both. I really don't mind. Um, I, uh, so the government of no one by Ru- by Ruth Kinna K I N N A. Um, and by the way, the Anarchist Library always has all of this stuff. Ah, um, theory and practice of anarchism. Okay, she will. She'll. She'll. She'll handhold you. She'll handhold you. I like handholding. That's um, pretty much. So, um, if you if you want if you want like if you want it dropped on you though, uh, demanding the impossible by Marshall. I think I've actually heard about that one. It's eight hundred plus pages. Maybe I heard it because of its length. Yeah. Um, demanding the impossible is it is eurocentric it has some global south in it um, but if i were to do the proper telling of it including the sort of like you know argentinian chilean south american um, also some of the koreans though i have major different disagreements with the korean anarchists japanese anarchists chinese yeah, anarchists the archipelago so philippines stuff like that if i included all of those you'd probably be looking at about 2500 pages worth um but like demanding the impossible will take you to proto-anarchists who are counted amongst the anarchist sort of milieu uh historically and that sort of stuff but again as i said it's north of 800 pages um it was by peter marshall correct correct. yes okay i thought i heard you um verification that's nice but ruth ruth will she'll give you like the highlights She'll she'll yeah. she'll walk you through some like organizational modalities, who's important, and some of the philosophies and belief systems that run run amongst anarchists. Some of the important anarchists, um, intersectional analysis, this sort of stuff. Like Ruth, for me, that's typically where I like to. St- 
start. Yeah. You try and do the best 300 mile up overview of that you can and then yeah. zoom in the best you can. Yeah. You Peter, should. Peter Marshall, uh, demanding the impossible is it's very satirically named, right? It's demanding the impossible and it's an 800 page book about the impossible that's already been done. Yeah. None of it's, th- none of it's theory. It's all, it's all, this has already been done. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like the anarchist Republic of Cuspaya. It lasted for 375 years. Like what? Yes. Not to do the very cynical part of like, well, it's not around because, you know, capitalism overtook it or anything like that. Yeah, it, ex- it, ex- it continues to exist in all sorts of microcosms across the globe. Uh, Trumbleplex outside of Detroit is one of my favorite examples. It's been it, 28, 29 years. I mean, maybe 30 years now. Um, Trump- Trumbleplex. They've uh, they've got their own uh, housing cooperative. They've got their own library, art space, event space. They I think they ran their own internet connections the other uh, a few years back. They've got food production on site, and they're uh, an anarchistic collective that uh, uh, successfully interacts with a neoliberal hyper capitalist society and uh, readily survived the collapse of Detroit. Founded in 1993. Okay. So, like, there's all sorts of these iterations of anarchistic modality and anarchist, uh, anarchistic operation on a global scale, right? Like, it's, it exists all over the place because anarchists figured out a while ago that trying to, uh, trying to maintain a, a space that would be readily recognized as a nation state makes mm-hmm. you a target. Yeah. And so dispersion uh, throughout the, the, the various uh, diasporas of the world was the best uh, operating technique. And so anarchism became, rather than a sort of singular location idea of can we do this, it became a method of direct action. It became a method of organizing. It became a method of structural organizing. It became a method of achieving dual power structures and separating ones from the nation state and the capitalist operations uh, where you can. It, yeah, we basically, we atomized um, anarchism. (laughs) pretty interesting i mean they've got their own fucking instagram page so you know they're legitimate yeah yeah they've been around uh, for ages. this is more of a uh, a content creator question have you ever interacted with a fella named wicked supreme mm, chat can tell me if i have but i don't think i have okay um i think him and destiny were friends a little bit uh he's like an ex um i think he worked for the cia he's pretty um uh He's a very intelligent man from what I can gather. I don't watch a lot of his content. It would be very interesting to um, obviously hear the conversation that you two would have. I don't think it would end up being a debate format because I think he's a former CIA a intelligence or he's a former intelligence officer that has a pretty jaded look but vast understanding of how things kind of function within that space that you might uh, appreciate. I mean, insight. if you know him. Like I don't know him, but I, I couldn't know. see why he wouldn't want to like have a conversation with you like this. I don't but, yeah. see. This is this is how I've sort of like main how I've managed to do what I do. Yeah, is I don't reach out to people. Oh, it, it's well, that's the re- kind of a it's, it's the reason. Also, I'm not as big as some people would like. I don't play. I don't do debate panels. I don't do yeah, fucking yeah. that sort of stuff. Like I don't reach out to people. Like if you wash up on my shores, mm-hmm. that's fine. That's fine. You reach out to me. That's fine. But yeah, I don't, I don't reach out. Yeah. I guess that's kind of an interesting way in which you do things. I can't remember how I ended up finding your tra- channel. I yeah. probably typed in like political into Twitch one time and so, saw that. Yeah. That's like, just, hey, that's a radical. I'm all about. Um, so I just kind of crossed my mind. You have, it feels like kind of the same intelligence level um, and the same pattern of speaking and knowledge about things that you handle so it was an idea but obviously and and one of the people i trust to keep track of stuff like this for me says they don't recognize the name so no oh okay yeah um yeah again it might be an interesting thing i'm not trying to set up a debate or anything but i think that may be somebody but if you don't reach out obviously you run your shit how you want yeah yeah that's that's just how i i maintain is i don't no that's good yeah um, but either way, it's been a long run. So I'm going to, I'm going to call it here. I hope it was yeah, productive well, in some fashion. I hope I didn't leave you with too much doom. Um, but like, no. like, like I, I read Ruth Kenna 
right? When you're, when you're like, uh, not to give like somebody homework or be presumptive like that, but when, <laughs> but when you're, when you're done with her, come back. Yeah. Like when you're b- done with her, come back and have a conversation with me. And mm-hmm. w- I'd love to like then see w- what questions you have, what, what maybe different positions you may have at that point. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'd love to, to love to talk to you post Ruth. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely have to fucking check that out. I already got a big enough problem on trying to figure out how I can not be a sellout piece of shit and get Republicans to vote for a Democrat. But good luck. I, yeah, I deeply, deeply do appreciate the conversation yet again. I appreciate your, uh, calmness and candor with me hmm? in regards to like, this motherfucker doesn't know shit about fuck. I, I mean, look, it, you're not, like I said, you're not screaming about castrating children. I like, I don't need to like <laughs> for most conversations, I'm pretty fucking chill. It's just when people are going to be on that side, I'm going to like, I will match you. Right. If yeah. you're, if you're going to be chill, I'm going to be chill. If you're going to raise the bar, I'm going to raise the bar. Right. That's how I just feel like that's something that ought to be said every time just for civility's sake. I do deeply appreciate it. And uh, anytime anybody can teach me anything and they don't have to like pawn off, oh, go read this and then I'll talk with you. Yeah. I appreciate it because, again, from a politician's standpoint, I do feel an obligation to talk to any and all groups. Um, whether or not I act upon those actions is completely different, but I do feel that there's an obligation that must be met. And that's one of them. Fair enough. Yeah. I, you know, like I said, I, I, I like to send people away with homework, um, <laughs> but there's not usually a prereq on the course, right? Mm-hmm. It's like that. Yeah. Like I'll, 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 we can do the class. It's just, you know, you may come away with homework. That's fair warning. I, I definitely probably will end up reading the or listening to the alphabet boys podcast that i could assure you uh, the reading aspect um don't forget like this is that this is required reading for just literally everybody don't skip rules for radicals it's super important for anybody yeah saul linsky rules for radicals is it's super important if you want to understand activists from that from that side community organizers activists this is our fucking bible yeah this was the one that got thrown into my cart yeah yeah So, and again, uh, yeah, look up the anarchist library. You'd be surprised what's at your disposal. But dude, thanks again. I fucking took up a lot of your time and I do appreciate it. I hope it was worth it on your end as well. I think it was probably edifying for uh, the the class as well. Um, (laughs) That's, that's a large part of what I do actually is demonstrative, right? Like Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, I, I don't have high hopes for the person I did not, nothing against you. It's just, I don't have high hopes for the person I'm usually conversing with. But what, yeah. it, what it can do is demonstrate to others how to engage. Well, I certainly hope that you'll, from a political aspect, obviously I don't want to tell you how to run your life, but I certainly hope with such a belief and such an eloquent way of speaking, informing people, I hope that you'll eventually kind of get more out there to cranking some of that information out. But you're a grown-ass man, so do what I, you like. You know, I'm going to move to a small fucking town in Vermont and just do me, man. <laughs> Like I'm, uh, I'm gonna try and insulate myself as much as possible from this shit. Oh, uh, it hurts my heart. I can't stand it. Uh, so, uh. Yeah, sorry, man. All right. Fuck it. <laughs> All right, man. You take care of yourself. <laughs> and I mean, if you want to jump into VC, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of people in there, like at, after stream, who are talking as well. And you can get like a variety of opinions from people who maybe harder core or more or a little, you know, for than me. Um, yeah, I'll give, I don't think I'll give that a go. I ain't got shit else to do. So, all right, guys, chew my ass. So. Guys, uh, hit, hit up VC. Karina's in there right now. Karina's a, a trans, oh. a trans woman from Canada. Um, so hey. yeah, and Caboose is just dumped in there too. So like, yeah, like, yeah, you can jump into VC and start having a conversation. <laughs> Fuck it, Libra Thunderdome. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> so either way man it's it's yeah. it's been a a lovely conversation thanks again man i i again truly appreciate it i'm still gonna harp on the fact that like i worry about your isolation i worry about the idea of like you not interacting and getting out there but i can't tell you how much i appreciate it all right man so thank you i'll catch you Have later yeah later